We made it to Sunday in the CDL, and we're capping off the first week of Major 3 qualifiers with a banger. That's right. It's the grand finals rematch between Optic Texas and Atlanta FaZe. Will FaZe continue their reign, or can the Green Wall get revenge? Plus, we'll see two new squads in action today. Surge and the LA Thieves debut the changes they made during roster meet. It's all coming up right now on the Call of Duty League. They're trying to make it happen. Oh, they're making it happen. Fellow 1v1 for the ace. Oh, Felony, are you kidding? Nice shot. Big Kenny. Kenny in a grand final. He won't slow down. Keeps going. Another 13. These guys are going to war. Can you close this out if you're heretics? You've been vulnerable at times in these 4v3s. It might be happening again. Beans almost snaps. Snoopy gets caught. I don't know if he was trying to throw something. He's going prone. He's going to get dropped. Priest now last alive. All the hopes for Boston Breach on him. No time to work with. Heretics close it out. Get the CDL points. Get a much needed victory in Real. Looking like the Real deal here, Jeff, <laughs> for this Heretics team. The Real deal. <laughs> Maybe killed it there. Welcome back to the league, Real, and welcome to the Miami Heretics. Real leads the team as they get the job done in search and destroys. Boston still sitting on just five wins with their current lineup a little bit different than what we saw in stage two. A little bit different, but I don't know if it was the way that we or Boston Breach would have hoped. Well, nameless, last night we saw some incredible games. We saw maybe the greatest fight of all time. Shout out Max Holloway, Call of Duty gamer out there. Uh, today, we have another banger, and it's going to be coming up at 6 o'clock. It's the rematch of our grand finals between Optic and Face. So I know that's what everyone else is talking about in the chat right now. But what are you looking forward to here on the final day of qualifier number three? Listen, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't the most excited for that match. I mean, it's an absolute banger. We got some new maps. I hope it makes it through the map pool. But also, Seattle Surge's new pickup, 04, which we will talk about, is the most exciting pickup to me during this off two weeks that we just had. This kid is a monster and his come up has been so fast. Can't wait to watch this. Let's match. jump right into it. If you missed Roster Mania, well, Seattle has made some moves. They brought on Brezzy last stage. Now, it's our city's off the starting lineup. Illy no longer part of the organization and 04 is into to the starting lineup for the surge, a player with what two lands Literally, under his yeah. belt? Yeah. Yeah, maybe one of the fastest come ups that we've seen. Most recently, coming off of a win at the Miami Open, it was a reverse sweep versus Phase Black, and it was all about 04. This guy was taking over when it comes to the challenger scene, and he's kind of being put in a tough spot. He's replacing a world champion on Seattle Surge, who are two and eight in their last 10 series, so they have certainly been on the struggle bus. Yeah, but he's replacing a struggling world champion. Our cities, you know, mentally, he hasn't been there all the way for the team. You've seen him in the in the listenings that we've had. Sometimes they just get a little bit quiet. 04 is getting that opportunity, so he's very much happy to be here playing around these guys. He's also very early in his career, so the hunger is definitely there, and the individual talent is there alongside it. So it's a perfect storm in terms of a pickup. It's just obviously you worry about young amateur players coming into the league for the first time, how long it takes to get them going, but definitely a lot of excitement in the surge. Game. What's kind of crazy for me is watching these highlights there's no long-range battles. He's reminding me more of like a Draza-style player, a guy who's going to get those short-range to medium-range engagements. Let's take a look, though, at the opposition on the other side of this fight. We got the birds in flight for Carolina. Royal Ravens now officially have a center for the players to participate yes. in. They are on land. At least half the squad is there today. Yes, at least half the squad is in their same facility. They'll be able to dab each other up. And this is a team that we have traditionally seen do well when it comes to lands, right? They've done just enough in the points section to put themselves still in the running to go towards champs. So for Carolina Royal Ravens, not only is this a great first matchup for them to get the vibes high against a struggle, struggling Seattle surge, but they're coming off a pretty strong showing at Major 2. And anyways, I felt like the crowd really showed that they still love Clayster. They yeah. love this Carolina squad, and they will have a fan base as 
they continue on to Major 3 up in Toronto. But can you start to put together online wins if you're Carolina? Currently, you're outside of the top eight, and if champs was tomorrow, you're not playing for that big money. Listen, the chem is there. They know exactly what they need to work on. We talked about the map pool and how the maps that got taken out was Carolina's worst maps. They now have facility. It is a perfect storm, and I totally agree with you. The fans seem to root for them because their matches are just so exciting. It's something about Carolina when you watch them play their level of play. It's awesome. It comes down to that final hill quite a bit. It does, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other roster changes that went down. Allie, you have been asking for this one for a minute. Here you have it. Afro moved off the starting lineup in exchange for Joe Deceives, and you always like Joey D. What do you think he brings to the current lineup alongside Nasty, Ghosty, and Krem? I think Joe Deceives is an incredible player. It's just about finding that consistency, and I'm hoping that when he got sent down to challengers with FaZe Black and was just taking over the amateur scene, he gained a little bit more confidence yeah. to come back into the league and do what he needs to do. Nameless, I remember last year we were looking at the stats. He was officially the youngest player in the league. What maturation are you looking forward to from Joe Deceives in a second year? That confidence. Ali just talked about it. In challengers, he plays with that swagger. Like, yeah. he goes out there, he's finding two pieces, he's going to keep on going, and he's confident that the play that he's making is the right play. We've seen him play hesitant at times, and now that he's went back down there, he comes back into the league with an LA Thieves team who the surrounding players are more confident. They played great throughout the last stage. They could have beat FaZe, the winners, in round one of the last tournament. So I think this is the perfect storm for them. You I mean, you look at Afro and his stats, he was 53rd of players in and out of the league in terms of damage rating. So there's a lot of things that Afro wasn't doing right that Joe Deceives can fix for this team. A lot of inconsistencies there. They're looking for consistent play out of Joey D, the mini Joey D, we call him around this house. Let's take a look at their opponents on the day because it's not a good fight on paper. LA Thieves lost to LA Gorillas on land and LA Gorillas got smoked 3-0 by Legion yesterday. Yeah, I mean these are the gatekeepers of the top four right now. Sitting at the fifth seed overall, they have jumped about two teams to get here and they are looking absolutely incredible. Their respawn has not missed a step since that major two, but now even their search and destroy is looking better. We do have to take it with a grain of salt because they went up against LAG who, yeah, first in s and in the league, but when it comes to online, it's a completely different story. So for Vegas, I'm interested to see how those game two and fives go up against the LA Thieves today. What is the strongest part of this Legion squad right now, Nameless? Uh, I would say their respawn game. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. Across control and hardpoint, they play extremely disciplined, and you got players like Attach and Geo who are going to ensure that consistency throughout uh, their respawn. So I think for Vegas, they're just a tough team. Like Ali said, that's a really good way to describe them. They are the gatekeepers. I, You're going to break into top five, you got to go through them. I see the chat talking about Geo today. Do we like Geo or Attach for overs? Geo, I'm Geo. taking his overs, man. I'm telling Attach has oh, been great. Geo. Geo is getting so much better, though. Yeah. Every Geo single Monty match. Webster, keep your eye on a guy who is now nearing the top of the list for Rookie of the Year. He wasn't even on my radar to start 2024. Some great games coming our way, and of course, we're closing out the night with the big one. It's going to be Optic Texas taking on Atlanta Phase. The rematch from our grand finals that we had just three weeks ago. Last time, we had to wait for the final qualifier. Now we get the rematch in the opening week. What does this mean for Atlanta and Optic and knowing that this time around you could be playing on new maps? I just think it's hilarious that this is going to be the sixth time we've seen these two teams match up and we've lost Terminal s and and we've also lost Skid Row Hardpoint, so that's hurting both sides of this coin, but for Atlanta phase, I mean, they are just looking completely dominant. We got to see them against Minnesota. It was a hot 3-0, and not only that, they put the new maps in the rotation. We got to see the Vista, and it was an absolute slammage. All of the hard points within about 26 points. The search and destroys within two rounds. You saw control go yeah. to that round five, but Draza said this was easy peasy. <laughs> Here he was on the mic after their win. I mean, like I said before too, I run that org. Uh, they haven't beat me in forever. And I, where's that <laughs> scrap yet? Is he already going home? Like, I don't know what's going on here, but I love my teammates. These guys are insane, and I cannot wait until Major 3. All right. In two sentences, he tells us he's excited for Toronto, calls out Scrappy, saying, where are you? You're not in the building. And lets Optic know he runs there, or you look at his numbers. Draza could definitely be that missing piece Atlanta's been looking for for two seasons now. He had a hell of a performance in Miami, and he keeps it going online. Disgusting. And what's funny is, like, Atlanta didn't even need the slaying. Like, that's just a plus when it comes to having drama, Draza on this squad. And I think they finally maybe found a fourth that fit that slot that Atlanta fans have been trying to shuffle for so long.
On the other side of this fight is Optic Texas. The fan favorites in the chat already cheering on their team that won't play for another three hours. But Optic, no matter where they go, they give themselves opportunities. And if you watched yeah. them in stage two, Nameless, this was the most clutched lineup. Whenever they had a pressure moment in game, this was the team that came through on top. Yeah, they have those types of players, right? Except when they go up against Atlanta phase. I think, you know, with the map change we had last split, adding in Rio, another dynamic to their game, right? Like they could play but that in both game modes and uh, they became one of the best teams in the world. Now we're adding Vista to the map pool, six star. It should be just like Rio in terms of the yeah. SMG gameplay, right? The biggest thing that people need to look out for when Texas is going up against Atlanta is Dashi and Shotzi. They literally get smoked in this title versus them. 0.8 and a 0.77 respectively. The superstars go dormant. You can see 0-5 against Atlanta face. It just hasn't been a good time. And it's crazy because historically, technically, Optic has been on the winning side of this, but for this game, it has been all Atlanta fate. And that's credit to Draza, right? Yeah. Because he said his record against Optic is just so good. So Atlanta go and grab him. They say, all right, y'all ain't never beaten us. That is crazy. A point two KD difference. 0 and five versus Faze. 17 and two. Only two match losses to everyone else in the league. Some ridiculous nice. numbers and an awesome rivalry we have brewing here in MW3. As we take a look at the schedule today, remember we're closing out week one with three matches. It all starts with Seattle versus Carolina Royal Ravens, and that is coming up on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. This is the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty store. Never miss a match of your favorite teams with the Call of Duty League Calendar Sync. Here is the fun part. When you add a calendar, you'll also receive a squad up calling card you can use in-game.
for the first fight of the night. Welcome in, everybody. We have Carolina Royal Ravens taking on a new look from Seattle Surge, and there is a lot of excitement from the challenger scene. 04 with his debut appearance. On the other side, you got some veterans for the Carolina Royal Ravens, and they will be playing on some brand new maps, it looks like, Allie. Heck yeah, we got six star, not only at the beginning, but the end of the series as well. And historically, these teams are one and one in this matchup, where Seattle has been undefeated in the search and destroy, and Carolina being undefeated in control, so I'm excited to see what versions of these teams we get. Nameless, the players are ready to launch, so let's get right into our scuff pickums. You are our pickum leader. I don't know how you stay perfect, but you are there <laughs> right now. Who do you got winning today? I'm going to go with Carolina. I'm taking TJ Halley's over. I think he's going bonkers today. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. Well, TJ Halley over. That's aggressive. That is very aggressive. I'm going to go with Carolina Royal Ravens as well, but I'm going to go with a Gwyn over. Gwyn over. Smart move that Bob's here. going crazy. Well, I woke up to a cardinal on my window. I had to move geese out of the highway today. <laughs> it's all about birds in my life. Carolina Royal Ravens are a clean sweep across the desk, and the fans, they're going to join us. We got your match ready. Welcome back for a Challengers player. Why not bring in some of the best Challengers casters in the CDL? We got study and shift. Shift, how good is this guy? He's nasty, dude. I mean, the, like you guys touched on the desk, this is one of the fastest come-ups to the CDL that we've ever seen in Challengers. And, you know, initially when we saw the squad that he was playing on in Elite One, Jay, we were like, eh, you know, maybe yeah. <laughs> there's possibilities, there's flashes, but I'll tell you, on land, this kid woke up and took over. Oh, this guy's just a different beast, man. I really love the we saw from him at that Miami Open because obviously to be down 0-3, to be only at probably your first handful of events and you reverse sweep FaZe Black, who were the top dog at that event and you get it done four maps straight with him going off every single map i'm really excited to see him 04 what he can bring to the seattle roster because they need some life man they need some rejuvenation in their gameplay and hopefully he's the guy to bring it to him in particular the respawn has been abysmal I mean, yeah. flat out terrible two and 12 in the hard point and then out of the last 16 controls they've won one so Damn. no better time for the respawn reset to come through overall and who knows because we start off things with the six star and we kind of were looking back and forth between both seattle and carolina like what were they doing on the maps that were out of the pool now and well for carolina this is like the biggest blessing to the reset of the season they could possibly have they oh, were yeah. three and eleven on the maps that are now out of the pool at hard point so that's going to be good for the news for them just getting that invasion out of the picture in particular oh yeah you see the stats right there old maps at least the ones that we're out three and 11 on those we're talking about the scary on the invasion they were old in the invasion i don't know why they played it so many damn times but finally that got removed for them so if you're carolina you're feeling great when you talk about the hps the remaining ones that you have you have an overall 10 and 7 record now you're going to start off with a six star you're feeling great you have the smg players and then you also have a couple players who moved into the same facility now carolina yep. they know exactly what it's like to be good on land but now they're putting their focus online to make up more of those points and they need it badly. This is a bubble yeah. matchup right here. Two teams that are fighting to get into the top eight. And like you mentioned, you can kind of already see over on the right-hand side, both Fellow and Gwyn have moved to Charlotte. Clayster trying to get on the way. TJ apparently is supposed to be moving on Monday. So Carolina, it feels like the season's almost just starting for them. Oh, yeah. through land, it just comes down to can they find a way to perform online and keep the consistency that we've seen in person from them. And I think if you're Carolina, starting off with a map like Six Star, this is where you have to make it known that we are really enjoying these news maps. I actually got a chance to watch them scrimming a little bit. They played every single thing. They played really, really tight. And TJ, for some reason, has got to read on these maps. So you heard Nameless touch it under the desk. TJ over. It might be in fruition. Yep, here we go. Let's see what happens. Also, lots of eyes on the 4 This is a lot of pressure on the new guy. You want to talk about challengers players that get thrown on to teams that are struggling. Often, they don't do all that well. So, lots of pressure to see if 4 can handle the quick rise of the CDL and also try to save his squad, possibly to get to the top eight. Yeah, I'm excited to see what 4 can bring. I actually had the opportunity to text my good friend, Rambo Ray, the coach of Seattle Surge this morning, and he said the pickup from 4 has done wonders for this roster. Finally, they're feeling like a complete team, so hopefully they're able to show it early on. But you can see Carolina, they find a clean four dead. They're soaking up the majority of this P1 time. And with only 20 seconds left, it's all about those spawns over towards P2. It's going to be Carolina preferred side with the break coming in for Seattle.
yeah this is all about what can you lock down here with spawns like you mentioned for carolina being so darn close to the backside of this upcoming second hard point right inside this giant palm tree room brezzy little water route on the outside no one's really looking for this we talked about this jay often it feels like people just ignore the water because of how difficult it can be to manage brezzy finds two and seattle find the quick breakthrough that's perfect right there from seattle to know where the pressure's coming in from and withstand that first push coming in so now Carolina have to rally the stuns and nays to try to find an opening on the map, but they can't get past Prezi, who's been holding down this over extension through the bridge side, and Carolina have not been able to sniff even close towards this hard point. You have a couple players going on a pinch, so a potential break going to come in now. Yeah, a little split spawn situation, but Brezzy picks it up nicely. Gwyn, though, pistol out for a double. Now it's just down to what he could do versus 04, and... Oh, Hello! <laughs> both players running out of ammunition, Ooh. but 04 is able to get the better of one. Enough time delayed for Hook to try to give one more go at the hard point, but they do get bounced back. So Carolina looking at the last scrap time here pretty successfully, all things told. Abu's the last one left, and, well, he will be flushed out in the 1v1, so this battle for scrap, not really where the focus goes, as you've got Gwyn on rotation early, winning a key one over towards P. Three. Oh yeah, but you would take that if you are Seattle. You apply pressure early on towards P2. You know that you were the team at least controlling the spawns early on for this P3, but with Gwyn winning that one-on-one -on -one through the back end, now you have to put your focus towards the back side, and that's an early two kills coming in for Carolina. The trades are going to be there for Seattle. So it's an all-out mix fest in towards the P3, but you see Carolina, they're starting to set up the pitch. They're finding the kill. They should be able to find the break. Yeah, looking pretty likely for it, although... Hook put a lot of damage in with Abuza. Isn't quite able to finish off any eliminations. That could have made life a little bit easier on this second attempt. Brezzi timing around the back gets caught. And that is a clean feed here for Carolina. Still 30 seconds to fight for, but Brezzi does spawn behind. Ooh. And the Ravens are not expecting this. Yeah, there's no way in hell they're going to be able to read this spawn. Brezzi's going to be able to at least get one for his endeavors. But the trade is instantly going to be there. Now it's on Gwyn. Can he hold on for the rest? No, he cannot. So with only 15 seconds left, that's going to go in favor of Seattle. But now we're going to a P4, where I feel like on 6-star, this is the hill where you can potentially set up for a full 60. So let's see how Carolina set up. Opening shots will happen down towards this bottom side. Over the top of the headies, most of these gunfights will persist. Fellow trying to make his way forward and finding a double. Really well done. Quinn also setting a front line just in front of the U-turn. Good read on 04, who can't quite finish off the kill. 30 HP remaining. Just another bullet was needed, but not going to come through. And the last couple of Seattle players are going to get picked apart right in front of the hard point. Oh, but see the spawns, they're not going to flip. And I don't know if Clayce is going to get a read on it. You know that the pressure's still coming in from the front, but at least you win that one-on-one. -on -one. The rest of Seattle spawn behind you. So they're going to be able to get the break for at least 30 seconds if they can hold on. Carolina trying to set it up with the stuns and nades over the top. You have 0 for a one shot. Let's try to send it. But so far, this has been a good setup from Seattle. Great reach yep. out right there from 04 to walk away with this potential remaining 20. Yeah, I, you know, looking at the respawn tendencies for Seattle, they've always been really good at rotating early yep. towards hard points, but they've never really been successful in holding any significant time. Where on the flip side, Carolina has been kind of forced to have to break a bunch, but they are one of the top teams in the league at doing so. So it's interesting because the patterns to this point have kind of been opposite. Carolina's rotated great, just haven't been able to hold for more than about 20 seconds, it feels like, per rotation. Yeah, and there was also a big issue with Seattle Search finding Grace as well. They just couldn't find any success in HPs if it wasn't rotations. But so far, the new roster is changing that story as they're currently up by 25. But now we're going into the pool hill where it's very, very difficult. You have to make sure your Michael Phelps, your pistol is hitting from long distance. The route right there from Clayster just swimming around, finessing with his life, staying contested as long as his teammates can help. I mean, this is unreal. <laughs> oh, my God. Just using the water as like a bulletproof vest at the moment, even getting the regen off. Him and 04 looking for the pistol battle. And it's actually a team name that eventually takes him out of commission. I mean, this is this is worse than Hydra. <laughs> the amount of water gunfights we've had to this point. Oh, man, that's insane. I wonder if like, do these guys have a perk or something where they're able to hold their breath for that long? Because these guys are not even taking an ounce of air. Come on out through the top, but... As we're coming to the end of this P5, it's all set up around that P1. It's going to be Seattle Surge currently up by five, but they're the team now set up early on towards P1. Really tight battle. But like you mentioned, this P1, especially the second time around, could definitely lead to some significant time, largely due to the bar headies. But wow, clean. All of it from the front staircase for Carolina. Nade gets one out of the point, and then the follow-up gunfight's absolutely perfect as the Ravens get the early break. And now Seattle has to find a way on in. Texas is going to be these players going for the overextend, but you get shut down through water side. Now Carolina has a read where the final players are coming from. VIP desk area and also from mid U. They're still combining for all the kills in the feed. This is where you have to start applying that pressure, though. And Clayster's trying to at least do so. He does get cut down, but it's still his teammates holding on for this time. 
good help from TJ and Fellow on the back side of this, but now it's just down to Fellow. A little bit of a sloppy gunfight over the top of the railings, and that leads to Seattle once again confirming some very important scrap time. Keeps us right about an even game. This has been a thriller to this point. Really big 50-50 tug-of-war game, and now we look over towards rotation, and Seattle will own this opening palm tree to start. Yeah, this is what you expect, though. When a map is freshly into the rotation, teams only had, like, probably a couple days to scrim it, so everyone knows at least one way to play it. So every game basically is going to go down to the wire, but with TJ finding three through the front, Seattle was not expecting that. That early break is going to come right on in as TJ finds all four. Can he find the fifth? No, he cannot, but now his teammates are here to contest it. 50-50 battle, 2v2. Clayster sneaks up through the poolside. That's enough to break the hard point open. Brezzi down low in the pit. Not going to be able to find the successful re-engagement. So with the proximal spawn, Seattle looking to find a way to break and have to rotate. Prime time to see how the surge are coming. Let's go me down the left, guys. Okay? He's okay. Dead. Yeah. Yes, I'm gone, I'm gone. We are the first kill, guys. I'm pushing from us. I'm pushing mid, sorry. Hey, go I'm, here, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. One's gonna be on my right, bro. One HP, one HP. He's not pushing. He's gonna be on the right. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Take your time, guys. Take your time again. Nice. He's on the left, on the left. Nice, 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 nice. He's weak, he's weak on time, guys. I'm getting front, I'm getting front. I'm getting front, I'm getting mid. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nice, 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 nice. Come away, come away still. He's there, he's there. Watch him, he's stuck me, bro. He's two on time, two on time. He's watching the hop up, he's watching the hop up. On right, on right, under death. One, two, they're both weak. Canada, Charlie, you win. He's weak, he's weak, long. Chown up front, chown up front, chown up front. Nice, nice. One's gonna hit mid, P1, I think. Just one more time, one more hit. I'm here, I'm here, I'm waiting for you. One is building with them. I got netted. I'm on HP. I think I can give him that. Don't mid. cut me. Don't cut me. I'm killing mid. I'm killing mid, guys. I was one shot. I'm here. Hit the shit. Hit the shit. One is 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 on the left one HP fellow guys. I'm not touching. That's perfect, that's perfect. Keep pushing for the next one. He's on that, on that, 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 Tell you what, Jay, they sound rejuvenated. I mean, we've had Seattle listen-ins over the course of the last month and a half where it's just like, yeah, one here, okay, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> and these guys are fuego right now. They are really getting energized. It's that new vibe, that new team feeling, that honeymoon stage is starting to hit different. I thought Carolina at the end of that P3 were going to start to pull away with the game, but Seattle Surge respond with a great full 60 hold at P4 to put this basically down to the wire again. All tied up at 195. They're in full control of the pool hill. And Carolina cannot find a way on in. Keep in mind, you got to win gunfights outside and also work on your swimming skills because they're working to wait for the break now. That hook gets an important two front side of the hard point, but the hill does go neutral for a time. Brezzi last one up, and they know exactly where he is. But Brezzi, okay, smokes him now on four in a row. And his ability to possibly stay in this position with a trophy and possibly earn a cruise missile could just blow this ending wide open. Carolina need to find a break. Yeah, they need to find a break here. You need to take care of Brezzi. They do just that. To at least eliminate Brezzi for now, but they cannot find the player in the water. So Seattle Surge, two hills in a row, have blown this game wide open. Almost going to be up by 40 points. Woo! Carolina had to find a couple gunfights off the rotation, and it's Clayster with a double to set his team up. Huge moment from Clay. An important three kills come out. Carolina now in firm control of our first hard point back here at the front bar. 
Pook trying to play from the staircase Wayne. side, and TJ able to match him. Over the backside of U-Haul, though, the new guy up. 04 finds it important first. That's enough for him to jump in and contest. Gwyn trying to find the pitch, but shut down by Prezi. Kills looking good for Seattle. They've got the break and a chance to win. Yeah, Carolina have to find a way on in. You have to wait for your teammates. You can't go one by one because it's only 10 seconds to Seattle able to take map number one. Crossfires galore through the middle of you, Carolina, at least coming on top for now, but you have to get in the HP. Ah, uh, Gwyn gets caught, though. It's all on to Clayster. Has to find an entry. Gets the first down. Oh, oh, Clay. Does he get enough time for his teammates to pull? Oh, maybe not. It's Hook for the double. Septex over the top. Gets him out of the hard point, but the rest of Seattle are there. And oh, boy. The rejuvenated Seattle Surge come up with some heroics through P4, P5, and then survive the onslaught over the top of our first hill to take map one. And that's how you turn the page on the first two stages for Seattle Surge. You're coming with the rejuvenated new roster you're coming in on a new map and you get it done flawlessly towards the closing moments of that game we're talking about a p3 where they were at least contested from carolina but the p4 to p5 and then even the p1 chain was flawless seattle surge did not miss up right there they found brace when they needed to they were rotating early when they needed to and then every single time someone needed to come up with a clutch double it was 04 and brezzy getting it done 250 to 211 is our first score line and seattle surge take map one and I love to see the assist column lighted up really for both of these two teams, not to take anything away from Carolina. The teamwork definitely starting to come up because we've seen some scoreboards in the past where it's just like single digit assists in long respawns. It's like, boys, yeah. are we helping each other or what? But it looks like both teams are starting to find a little bit of flavor here on our first new map of this series potential for another if we get to map number five but like we talked about kind of midway through this map seattle had notoriously been good at rotating to hard points early but their efficiency numbers across the board have largely been at the bottom of the league we saw oh, yeah. their two of what the last 12 in hard point their respawn has been pretty pitiful but a lot of good moments to take away there for the surge yeah couldn't get any worse man first two stages of seattle they simply could not win anything if it wasn't search and destroy when you come out on a new map, though, and you do the dirty work correctly, we're talking about the fundamental plays, early rotations, making up for a 60 hole that you could not receive at that P3. That's where they were perfectly set up. We're talking about trading efficiently, setting up properly where you have perfect crossfire set up to so Carolina cannot find an opening. And then every time Carolina started off with a couple of kills, they were basically getting tunnel vision. Like, you need to yeah. be able to break that P4 a little bit different. You can't just keep on flooding through top tree, potentially trying to work your way through low secret because those close ones for Seattle are going to just con continuously allow them to funnel their way into the HP. If you're Carolina, you probably got to send someone on a pitch or something like that, but... Funneling is exactly what Seattle Surge wanted you to do as they are able to take the map number one and now you're feeling confident because you're going into a search destroy where even it's a new roster, you still know this is our bread and butter game mode. Oh, and on top of that, if you're Seattle, you're also, you know, looking at a new challengers player into the yep. CDL that has been grinding search and destroy. Unreal, and man. Talking about, again, the reverse sweep in that challengers grand finals, 04 was crazy in the SD. So, yeah, okay, it feels like it's all good news across the board. Uh, to speak to the other side of the story here, though, Carolina is no slouch on the evasion search and destroy. No. Four and two on it. And that almost feels kind of like a miracle considering that they're one of the worst teams in overall opening duels on this map in particular so you got to think for carolina in terms of polishing up your search it all starts in the first 30 seconds of each round oh yeah and if you remember the last time we casted them i don't know who they were playing against but carolina basically threw this entire map away multiple man advantages every time a post plan situation they had the mana they lost it they were just yeah. letting it go but at least recently for them at the major you won it all the way in around 11 versus las vegas to knock them out the tournament so you're feeling good on invasion it's just you have to play faster at certain moments because like you said we watch 04 all throughout challengers the way he's able to dominate that mid tank area either with a yeah. rival nine or an mcw that's a guy that's going to be able to make plays happen been on the defensive end where seattle are literally the best team on that side so you're just fitting in the player who's great at search and destroy who knows situational plays so carolina you need to be able to play a lot quicker on your attacks and i like the point that you point out it's the rival nine or the mcw he can run either, and that yeah. changes the look up of what that defense sets up completely. So, yeah, lots of things to look forward to here. If you're Seattle going into one of your, well, your best mode <laughs> on the year at this point, it's hard to say it otherwise, I mean, especially considering how the respawn has looked. But I think for Carolina, you know, looking at kind of their run that they put together throughout not just this most recent major, but also what they did in Boston in Major 1, hey, you clean up the search and destroy a little bit, you start to think that there is a lot of longevity built in. You know, 
they lose that round 11 versus New York. Otherwise, you know, there's an opportunity to extend that series when they're playing in Miami. You know, that seems to be kind of their weakest point and definitely seems to be kind of controlling a lot of their focus over the course of at least the last major. And it finds it, it's hard for me to believe that because these guys have been playing for a really long time. Like, Clay's their fellow. We all came from the SD scene, including TJ. So these guys need to figure out Search and Destroy. And hopefully, with them, you know, all going to the same facility in their apartment complex, you get those better team comps. So they need to turn around and Search and Destroy. And already, TJ finding the first blood. Yeah, aggressive setup for Carolina, really setting the tone right through mid cafe. Hook with an AR in hand really can't do much besides just watch this and hope that no one pushes through it because honestly speaking from the offensive lens you're really only left to be uh, there's just no way you're able to clear this not with at least some sort of a cost involved yeah because it's going to waste at least another 20 to 35 seconds to even work your way up through cafe and now you're forced to make a decision on where you want to apply this pressure Hook does get some info on at least one player in towards Gwyn but the nade is not going to connect with only 45 seconds left they know we do not have enough time to go yeah. cafe we have to go B and Clay's just going to play contact here and he sees two players on the cross now it's just back up see if you can challenge somebody with these team shots over towards the bomb Brezzi fighting back though creates a little bit of time and space for 04 to get over toward the site but he drops the bomb he's looking to get aggressive into ice cream here and carolina have no idea on this play what a giga brain moment from 04 he gets two and now all of a sudden seattle can plan yeah he makes this much more manageable win for seattle surge now in the 2v2 scenario bomb does get planted at b Brezzi is able to get away with his life but now you know the setup if you are Carolina. Do you have any tax? No. So this is going to be all gunny in this 2v2. And Fellow has to take the long sprint through dark. This is going to take so much time, and he has to hope and pray he can catch someone off guard. And I think Hook may have seen him. Brezzi turns his head over from this dock backside tractor. Focus from the front. Starting to get pulled. Hook shows just enough for Fellow. Shots towards Brezzi. Decent. Off the reach and takes care of the first, but not the second. Plenty of time for the defuse, and Carolina save the round. Oh, that was on Fellow, just re-wrapping his way right through the middle of the map. He's able to at least have the angle onto Hook to open up at the first blood. Then once it turns to a one-on-one, -on -one, Gwen at least has Brezzi a little bit weak. So Fellow is able to commit on the gunfight, but he's able to find three on the round. That, almost, that round almost gets away from them, though, with 0-4's 3,000 IQ play to drop the bomb yeah. and push through ice cream. But it's still Carolina on top, finding the first blood, finding success early on in the defense. Well, good moment from Fellow. And on top of that, you have to give a lot of credit to Gwyn for pulling the focus of Seattle away from that push through dark. Yeah. With a couple of stray shots here and there. So little micro things turning into some major moments early. And already, hey, other good news. Carolina showing a little bit of aggression, setting the tempo, setting the tone, and collecting a first blood, which is pretty rare for them in this map. Already changing the story, man. Starting up 1-0. Now you're on the attacking side. And you get first blood all the way across the map. That's not what you want to do yeah. in that situation. Seattle now in a 4v3. And that's the biggest thing, you know, looking back, and we talked about this. You actually brought this up. It was versus Miami, that, that match that we casted, where it's like, guys, just stop challenging silly yeah. things. This one in particular is just kind of a forced play through smoke, seeing if you can get away with something after the first blood was tallied. Not going to happen. Clay able to isolate on one, but he is about to be completely overwhelmed here at Broken, and no chance for him to find any space to work with. Yeah, right there. Carolina's like, all right, we got first blooded, so let's just try to take mid-map. And TJ tried to make an individual play walking through the smoke, but Abuza was perfectly set up to locate where he was. And that just definitely, you could just tell, it threw Carolina off guard. First blooded in the first 10 seconds. That's not the way our attacking round was supposed to at least develop. And Seattle Surge, they take a full advantage of that. Tied up at one. Yep, good stuff. And look, just stop peeking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the frustrating part about this Carolina team at times. It's just, you know, I get it. You want to play for info, but you don't have to force any gunfights. Not across the map like that. The risk versus the ward often doesn't come through as much as you'd like. Another aggressive play. Quinn going to step immediately over towards the glass here at this front cafe building. And he's going to see a couple of players. Alarm bell starting to ring, but the team shot's better. First blood again for Seattle. That's good stuff from Seattle. Great teamwork on full display and towards the cafe. And now you can slowly work your way up through mid tank because you know that Gwen loves to be the player, at least covering over towards that A site. As everyone is just trying to use their attacks to isolate this player towards the middle of the tank, at least blow up that trophy system. You set up Brezzi for the kill. Instant 4v2. Yeah, great isolation. TJ trying to step forward to create something on the backside of this flank, but he's going to have to rely on Clayster finding some good timing, and he will not be able to. So 
TJ, collect what you can at this point. 1v4 plus the defuse required. Oh. And wait a second. Couple of overchals. A little bit of overheating here from Seattle. Gives TJ a chance. He's still got smoke to play with. Yeah, he's got a lot to work with. The nade, the smoke, <laughs> but not the gunny. As Seattle surged with the numbers. Even though TJ hit some great shots onto 044 double. Just too strong on the post plant setup. You get the first blood, you take full control of Cafe. You're able to find the second as well. And then read the player going on the deep pinch as well as the guy going through midcourt. Seattle Surge not making any mistakes so far in the final two in the last two rounds. Yep. All of it coming with good numbers. Yeah. And that was, you know, again, when we talked about any iteration of the Seattle team, especially at the beginning of the year, they looked like they were going to be the search and destroy demons of the league. And a lot of it came down to not throwing away good numbers. So good discipline still coming through here for Seattle two rounds in a row. Abuza sees, I think, a couple of the players aggressively pushing through A Street. Hoop trying to find the best corner he can. But the back door pops, and he needs to watch a couple of things at once here. And he very wisely finds himself in position just to mostly read this play through back freezer. Yeah, I swear that door was just open, right, Alan? Am I tripping? I, I, it was open. I swear I to God. I thought it was open. But all right, I guess it ended up closed. But unfortunately, it opens at the wrong time. Hoop gets taken down by Gwen. That's an AR up close and personal. Able to find that first blood. But now if you are Seattle Surge, you know where the pressure's coming in. 4 able to find the kill onto Fellow to at least even up the numbers. Yep. Bomb, though, being planted. 4 gets a look at TJ, but not in time to stop the plant nor find the kill. So the post plant for Carolina all played over towards Cafe. And Gwyn just kind of gives away a freebie here. Decent read from 04, but the shots aren't clean enough. Fabuza in trouble. Has the pistol out working with Brezzi, and they do collect the kills pretty darn cleanly. So now you're at a 3 1 tally. Cruise missile earned, and Seattle seem to be all steam ahead. Yeah, and if you're Carolina right there, I know you get the bomb down, but if you're the island player and fellow, you cannot lose that one on one gunfight to 04. At least get bad timing in that situation. Because you could potentially catch him on a deep pinch, but once you give him that free kill, he turns it into a 3v3. He's able to get the info that the bomb is also going down at A. Everyone backs yeah. up into Cafe. We can push right up the courtyard. We can take mid tank control. And Seattle Search did not miss a beat in that situation. Super aggressive up through the middle of the map. Abuza finds a couple of kills. Like you said, earns himself a cruise missile. And now that's three rounds in a row where Seattle Search are just making up for it, even when they don't have the numbers advantage, playing great. It's just good proactivity, and that's kind of always been the staple of the Seattle Search and Destroy is that, hey, you know, they may lose one in the process, but it's in the midst of making a play happen. In this particular case, it's all about trying to control the middle of the map, and in particular, really focusing a lot of attention towards that front cafe building. And it's worked out really nicely for them on the ability to kind of, even in 3v4 situations early, still hold great power positions. And I think on the other side, if we were to really be critical here, Hey, I mean, if you're Carolina, you've overchelled a couple of times where you just yeah. don't need to, right? And, and you could just slow things down a touch off these first bloods and, you know, just try to make a little bit more of a heads up play around where your post plant setup is supposed to be. There's just also different scenarios on your attacking rounds where you're not going to really find a lot of success planting that bomb at A if you don't have mid tank control. When sure. you're giving that completely up to Seattle and you're only putting pressure around A site and in towards Cafe, you give them a free avenue to put themselves at an angle to watch you at least walk away from the site or p know what your post plan setup is. So that's one thing that if you're Carolina, you have to be able to take mid tank control, even if you find the first blood, to properly set up for that post plan. Yeah. And. Hey, just kind of looking at it overall, for Carolina, they are the second best team at planting on this map, but the seventh in post-plant win percentage. Yeah. So it really just goes to echo the point they're off the numbers. But as we kind of keep framing it up, you guys might be thinking we're getting a little too twisted here for a Seattle versus Carolina game. But <laughs> friends, believe me you, this is a critical matchup oh, for yeah. both of these two teams, not only because of the recent roster changes for Seattle, but they find themselves separated by five points. And not only that, you look up to the team above you in Miami, hey, you're only 10 points behind if you're Seattle. So you have a chance to put yourself in an immediate tie for top eight and uh, that's the big you know towards we get to the end of the season that's the big focus area i mean you've got the, all those teams on the right side of the leaderboard within the possibility of at least finishing top eight if not better and whenever you play someone between seven to twelve you best come out ready to win so oh, yeah. pivotal bubble matchup here yeah, the bubble matchups are always the best, especially at this point in the year. We're already past that halfway mark. Every single team knows we are doing our best to walk away with a lot of CDL points. That's why Carolina, after Major 2, they're all going into facility because they know we need to get some online wins. We can't just rely on our Lance performances yeah. going out there and get multiple top sixes, top sixes for us to make it in towards champs towards the end of the year. So like you said, everybody on the right column, it's it's 
bite down and grind right now. You have to be able to grind through these online matches, and hopefully LAG can figure something out because those guys suck online. I don't know what the hell's <laughs> going on with that. I mean, it's really it's been kind of the cataclysm statement of the entirety of this season, especially for the bottom four squads. And if you're wondering why we're on camera, not the game, we are dealing with a bit of a player issue, a little disconnect at the end of that round. So we'll get everything reset and put back together here for you guys. But hey, I mean, I think this is probably one of the first times that we've seen in the CDL this many amount of changes to the map pool at the exact halfway point and it comes with a lot of the teams at the bottom of the leaderboard making pretty significant roster changes maybe not just one player but some relatively unknown players are making their first debut other long-standing players that have kind of dominated their challengers finally getting their chance kind of looking at players like pentagram in particular for that storyline yep. it feels like a reset of the season though because of the new maps that are now in the mix where it almost like, hey, throw away everything from happening in December. Let's just reset, play against the other six teams that are on the bottom of the leaderboard, make it to playoffs, and find a chance to hopefully improve upon what have largely been for these teams not a very successful CDL uh, career to this point. Yeah, I feel like for every single stage, the game has changed. Stage one, we're going into stage two. We got all new hills, a couple new maps. Like, everything was changing so far every single stage in the CDL. But back into yeah. the game, we go. I'm really hoping that Abuza still has that cruise missile to work with, but I'm looking at the numbers. Yeah. Everyone's sitting at 0 and 0. So he might not have that cruise missile to work with. But it's 3 1 currently for Seattle Surge. The reset comes in, and that, that means that there's no trophy systems over towards this B point. But 0 4 gets some early info. Someone has to be close. All oh, shots are decent. Good help coming through. But the same can be said for Carolina, who's actually getting a little bit aggressive towards DVD at the same time, trying to pinch up this play. Hook will be stunned, but he's able to create enough space and distance to stay safe from it. Aggressive hit, though, around the pinch for Carolina, and it doesn't amount to too much. So Clayster has to back off. He has to value his life and hope that fellow's gone arm guarded to this point as he tries to make his play forward. Yeah, that's one of those situations where if you're Gwyn, you have to just play off the info that Clay's is able to give you. If they're not aggressive up through Broken already, you can't give them a free first blood. Even though Clay's able to find the second kill and at least turn it into a 2v2, you are forced to break in towards the same exact setup, and you have two nades and a stun to work with. Well, this feels a bit familiar. Fellow from one side. It's Clay, though, on the other side instead of Gwyn from before. Nade being cooked. It looks like it's going to be pretty darn good, and yep, it's a Semtex that takes care of 04. Brezzy, same spot. Front side tractor getting pinched up, finds the first pistol. Oh, oh, he knew he had clay weak, but the shots from Clay are too good. And the defuse will come through, getting Carolina their second round. Oh, good stuff right there to Carolina to clutch up in the 2v3. Clayster gets it done through the back end, or at least even up the numbers in the 2v2. And then the team Nate to take down old four. And then the difference right there from Clayster can play it to Funley. His fellow just instantly ran at the tractor in a one-on-one -on -one versus Brezzy, but Clayster plays his life in towards ice cream, waits for Brezzy to go for the chow, and reads it to perfection. As Carolina able to stand strong on the defense again, now down 3-2. The retakes have looked really clean, honestly. And it feels like for the two that we've really had over towards this B site, they've been pretty desperate <laughs> in nature. Yeah. So good stuff for Carolina, defensively speaking. Clayster also with the ace. We'll start building towards a potential cruise missile. Again, you got to keep in mind that Abuza is no longer in possession of one since the reset. So how quickly things change as Clay Tow is number five. The old man is taking over so far in the search to destroy. Can he find one more kill to earn himself a cruise missile? Seattle Surge again trying to clutch up in the man disadvantage. And Brezzy too wide of a shoulder right there. Gives a free one to Gwyn. So now it's a 4v2 for Carolina. This is where you just stack up, push out one way together, play your numbers. Yeah, 04, lots of damage towards Fellow. Is trying to red dot chase just to touch him. Oh, he actually does catch Fellow before the regen comes out. So as the bomb swings over towards A, 04 has a chance to put himself in the spotlight. But as he tries to cross, he will be dealt with. Abuza, last one standing, and he could only find one of the needed three. So Carolina, a couple rounds in a row here since the reset, looking pretty good. Yeah, that's good stuff from Clay to finally open the first blood onto Hook, and then Brezzy tries to make up for it with a kill through Dark, but he gets taken down. I just think if it ain't broke, don't fix it if you are Seattle yeah. Surge. There's no reason to get aggressive up through Mannequin, give him a free first skill, try to be the island hero player. Just simply is not going to work out because you know Clayster's always going to be able to watch that overextension. But Carolina now with two rounds in a row, able to tie the game up at three. Curious to see if Clayster was able to earn him his sixth kill off the map. Essentially find himself the cruise missile. Yes, he does. So yep. this game is completely changed now. 
Wildstein's trophy down aggressively. Carolina looking to maybe get it again a bit forward here. We saw the same idea, but over towards the A side of the map in round number one. Now it's all about can they get isolation over towards Hook? And all four players here for the Ravens defense are here, but none can tally the kills. And all of a sudden, everything kind of puts a bit of a reset into play. And Seattle has an advantage here over towards A if they can find it. Yeah, you just got to take the space. Because you gained a lot of info that there was early pressure, a lot of pressure over towards the broken side. So finally, 0-4 in Abuza. Going to be the dynamic duo to try to work their way up through A Street. But you have to get past Clayster, who's at least putting down a couple shots to make his positioning known. But it's already 45 seconds knocked off the game clock. Hoops able to find the first blood on to TJ. Oh, and 0-4 follows up through Pillars. Good prediction on fellow. So 4 opens up the middle of the map and with shots coming out of Clay, no problem to follow up. And wow, that is an amazing amount of restraint from Seattle for their ability to stay alive. And what was supposed to be a B hit in the face of four aggressive Raven defenders and then to be able to reset, stretch the defense and find an opening through mid, that's chef's kiss. Yeah, that's good stuff. And keep in mind, this is a new team. You know what I'm saying? So not only getting a couple ga couple days of practice in search and destroy, but 4 with the perfect read for the double. Just shuts down that setup for Carolina. Early aggressive up through broken. They got nothing for it. So Seattle surge back on top, up 4-3. But now on the defensive side, you have to switch up your defensive look because you got to keep in mind, Clayster has that cruise missile. And if they decide yeah. to invest it, that B-bomb is going to get planted. Gwyn seen on the cross, 0-4 with an MCW this time. Again, we talked about his flexibility in particular playing this position. We saw it a lot through challengers. And Seattle says, we're not going to try to fix anything that worked out well for you so keep running it a little stun check does connect so a little bit of info here follow up from brezzy a little bit deeper just to make sure that this b defense stays pretty formidable and stalwart as ever carolina having a tough time breaking past this connection they have to use the cruise missile yeah the cruise missile is going to get invested clays is able to get all the info on where the setup is going to be do they decide to isolate brezzy he's just going to walk away with his life the bomb mm -hmm. is now going to get planted so hopefully seattle surge got a couple techs trying to break their way back on in well, the thing about this for Carolina, it is a 2-2 split on this post-plant setup. A couple of players very far deep. Seattle not interested in the flank. Just trying to break this through from the front. There's the retake smoke. Going able to collect the first and second. How does he get that done from an isolated corner? Unbelievable stuff from Gwyn. Everything coming in his direction takes care of two. And then TJ right through that smoke, pushes out, finds the final. And Carolina get us back to level. Yeah, that's insane stuff right there out of Gwyn more specifically. Because like you said, it turned into a 2v2. I mean, a 2v4 because the split setup right there for Carolina was not going to be ready for everyone to be bombarding their way through back ice cream, especially with that smoke grenade getting invested. But Gwyn was ready for it. He finds a double, and then TJ closes it out with a double of his own. Carolina tie the game at four. Back and forth we go. And that's going to be a moment Seattle looks back on, and I'm sure Ray has probably already highlighted it. Like, guys, if we're smoking tank, we have to check our left. Yes, yes. Why, why are we looking into the smoke? So... Tough moment there. Carolina, once again, setting up a little bit of aggression here towards B. Ultimately, doesn't come away with too much of anything. Seattle still interested in the site, and more so than that, Hook will slide over towards Broken. Trophy system in place. It sounded like at the same time, so it looks like Seattle want to give this B hit a go. Yeah, they're taking a lot of ground up through Broken, but it's way different where you try to pass that 50-yard line through Dark and work your way up through the B tank because right now Carolina's setup is a beautiful crossfire from TJ and Clay. The other two guys are working through mid-courtyard and up the A street, but Seattle Surge, they have rallied the troops all out pressure up through the B street. Yeah, there's that late attacking smoke, and yeah, Clay just gets caught looking the long way. TJ also falls, so 4v2. Definitely the more hard-pressed of the retakes we've seen so far for Carolina, but they do find an opening pretty quickly. 4 on an aggressive angle. Shot at Padabuza, and Hook will save the day because, boy, I'll tell you for a moment there, started to look like Carolina were gaining some momentum, but it does get shut down. And Seattle right back in the driver's seat. And they just read the setup for Carolina on that defensive end to perfection. They said, as no one contesting us for mid-dark, we at least watch two players cross over to the, towards the tank. So let's invest our smoke grenade, at least isolate the player over towards boxes, and then find that kill on towards the tank. Get the bomb down. You play your numbers. You stand strong on the attacking round. Seattle Surge, now at game point. What's the call here if you're the Ravens? A couple of shots deep from Glacier, just trying to check the cross. Hook 
inside the front desk. Not really able to see too much through the window, so a bit of concealment here. Carolina taking a slow pause over towards the B site. Will not really be read by any early information gathering from Seattle. I mean, this is where it scares me a little bit because whenever Carolina play these slow and steady when the race kind of rounds, they wait to about the final 25 to 30 seconds to make a play. But on a map like Invasion, you're going to get an early read on where that pressure is coming in so you can set up properly on the defensive end to try to withstand that pressure. Mm. But it's a double stack over towards both sides. Already 45 seconds knocked off the game clock in Carolina. This time, they're rallying the troops to go to B. And it did sound like 04 had a trophy system behind him that has been deleted. So he's in a little bit of trouble. Does slip away. How important is that for the Seattle defense? TJ Pistol out, finds the first. Back to the MCW, but Abuza slides forward, finds the kill, and there's no trade. So now 3v3, less than 30 on the clock. And 04 is still in position to try to watch this from inside the site. Hook off the cross. Oh, he's going to find two. And Seattle continue to look real good on Invasion Search and Destroy. Last two rounds go their way, and they take a 2-0 edge of the series. And then that final round right there was 04 simply just playing his life. He played his life so well that he sets up a boozer for the freebie to turn it into a 3v3. But the player he took down was the bomb carrier. So Carolina only had one game plan, and we have to commit towards breaking away in towards this B site. Unfortunately, no one watches dark. Hook is able to find a double. And when it turns to a 3v1, Seattle search too strong on the setup. Oh, man, this is a new team, Alan. This is a new team. They're looking good. A very close hard point in map number one. Very tight search to destroy, even with the adversity that they had to face with yeah. Abuza losing his cruise missile. They still walk out on top 6-4 and now are up 2-0 in the series. A gritty series at that, though, through these first two maps, and there's no signs of that changing anytime soon. And the real question starts to get posed here to Seattle. Can you win a freaking control? Because it's been <laughs> Please. an eternity since they've been able to find a W, and they are going to one of Carolina's better overall control maps with Karachi coming up. Backside of the break, we have at least that with potential of a sub base. Map number four, and of course, six star for maybe the first time so far on the search and destroy docket. We'll see what we got there, brothers. We'll yes, be back brother. after the break. Upgrade your game with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Welcome back there, friends, family, all you crazy COD fanatics. We have got woo, a barn burner right now. Surprisingly so, Seattle, Carolina providing some immense entertainment in what has been a very gritty series. 250, 211, the first on six star, and then a six four after the reset. Both favoring Seattle, but now the big question, can they win a control? We got Karachi <laughs> coming up here, Jay. What are they like? One in 15 of the last 16 controls? Yes, sir. They cannot win this mode, but I don't know what to expect today because Seattle shows they're winning HPs. Obviously, they stay strong in search and destroy, but this new roster is looking great so far. As we take a look at the control metrics, it's not good for Seattle Surge. Everything is awful. Three and 16, shout out Stone Cold Steve Austin. One and six in round fives. <laughs> Attacking rounds, not the best. Defensive rounds, not the best. And even on the opposing side for Carolina, their stats don't really stick out to you either, but they're a lot better than the way that Seattle Surge are looking. I did not have you giving me a Stone Cold reference on my bingo card today, Jay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, WWE guy. just happened, bro. Wow. Biggest WrestleMania ever. <laughs> You're twisted for that one. <laughs> but no, I think here's the other part of it, and I think the community overall is probably going to agree with this. Hey, you know, our city's out of the picture has kind of provided Abuza a chance to play a more aggressive kind of mainstay AR. 04 brings a lot of speed and tempo to the mix, and that's been where I think the attacking side has really suffered for Seattle. I mean, they just get put into trouble just largely off of the life count. I mean, they are on average losing by about seven lives per offense which is not good to put it plainly <laughs> so if they can find a way to kind of keep the tempo up find a way to keep the slaying up there is an opportunity to find success on offense but we'll wait to talk about that when they get there because first and foremost it's carolina starting on their attack yeah carolina early on already on to the a point you have a couple players from Seattle, though, already putting themselves in great positions. You have junk control, so you're forcing all of Carolina to try to work their way up to the map and overextend. But Seattle Surge, they're able to eliminate that player before he completes that first segment, and now you're basically put into a trap. Carolina have to fight out of their base. Yeah, really tough position to be in, Gwyn. Takes care of at least one member over towards the high ground, but again, the SMG aggression from 04 steps in, tries to set the line of scrimmage a bit further forward. Denied, but still lots of time off the clock. First tick still empty for being completed, but Carolina now with a couple of kills and a lot of focus will make their move, and there should be an opportunity for them to stack here and get the extra 60. Yeah, they also found that kill onto Abuza in towards Junkyard, so you can already see TJ taking a lot of ground over towards that B point. You're forcing Seattle Surge to basically chalk off the A point and rotate their way over towards B, but you have to take care of mm. TJ, Brezzy, great team shots to at least eliminate him from that cafe, and now that's three dead in the feed. You can still apply pressure over towards A. You still have Hook over towards top three as well. And Carolina, you have to make a decision because Glacier's is probably going to die here on an A. And if we don't sign success at B and lose these junk spawns, we're going to get put in a trap again. Yeah, it's a really good creative idea for Carolina, kind of getting around the back of the map while also getting TJ forward. But you're absolutely right. Player sneaks through and kind of causes a bit of delay. But off the respawn, Carolina right back in the mix. TJ really lighting it up. Lots of clean shots on the Cirque, but this time getting surprised from behind. Help from his teammates is there as the extra 60 gets tallied in the same Ooh. breath. And Glaster's double keeps this mixy as Seattle still struggles to get over the jump wall. Yeah, Seattle is struggling to get over this damn jump wall. And all the Carolina spawns are really close up and personal at red. So they're able to reinforce with the numbers. Just got to keep on trading efficiently. TJ with the double, Clayson with the third. Oh, four, you have to try to get something done. You fall, but at least you do have one teammate over the hop wall. No, he drops as well. Well, so here comes the sack for Carolina. This is looking like their round. Yeah, very well should be. Time stops at 122. Two players still on. Fellow and Clayster just absolutely turning Seattle into mincemeat over the top of this dumpster. And there will not be enough time for Seattle to continue forward. Uh, definitely a call saying, let's not give away any more potential streaks. And laughter and giggles are to be had for the Ravens as they take their opening offense. Yeah, that was just good stuff right there from Carolina. It all started off by taking down a boozer from junk. Once you open up that avenue of attack to apply pressure over towards B, they did not turn away from it. Consistently spawning over towards close red, trading officially in towards bottom ticket, and then coming out on top with a clean two to three dead. Allows them to stack that point, walk away with the first attack. Clean stuff. Moment of hesitation, a little bit of a hiccup there, but largely speaking, like you said, pretty fluid, pretty, pretty solid. And now the question that we've been talking about comes to the forefront of the conversation. Can Seattle start to find some success offensively? That is not well, how you want to start. <laughs> it's a big nade over the top from Clayson. Now that puts him on five in a row. One off of earning himself a cruise missile. 
you can already see the setup for Carolina. Early pushed out towards Junk. You have been map control. Now all of Seattle Surge are forced to fight their way out through bottom chicken coop side. Hoop finds one through the map. So at least you're able to put the game clock at a pause. But where the hell is the rest of Carolina? Because you know they're setting up for some pitches. Clean kill from Clay. That gets him number six. Cruise missile now earned. First tick of progress locked, but here comes the retake attempt from the Ravens. Really well done. I mean, the timing is so darn good. Clay from one side, Fellow from red, and then eventually TJ from behind. Completely clears off the zone, and now a couple of the power positions starting to be earned by Carolina as they step through junk and force the Seattle spawns to have to go in. Yeah, they're going to force themselves to overextend a little bit, but now if you are Seattle Surge, you have to worry about your front, your side, and now the cruise missile getting invested. Carolina trying to get this one done early. They do not want to give up a lot of segments, even give Seattle Surge an opportunity to potentially fight their way back into this game. They're making sure that they are maintaining map control majority of the time. You yep. see the sponsor of Seattle Surge all over towards that chicken coop side with only 30 seconds left. You have to try to complete A. Ooh, little juggling of utility right there for TJ. Finds himself another key elimination. Top side castle. Good read on the hook. And wow, I mean, we talked about it on an average of seven lives is what Seattle loses their offense by this one way worse. Three and 14 from 04, just really not able to get anything going. And to be fair, not to really discredit ooh, ooh, him ooh. individually, what do you do? I mean, Carolina's literally in your face from when you spawn up. Man, this is impossible if you are Seattle, more specifically 04, the ARs from Carolina holding on every single lane. Your ARs aren't winning any of those gunfights. So you're trying to challenge with that rival down across the map. And Carolina are not giving you any breathing room to even work your way out of the spawn. As they dominate on the defensive end, only allow two segments to get away from them. And you have set yourself up basically to call a game if you are Carolina. You just got to do the same exact thing you did in round number one. Early pressure over towards A, but make sure you're trading officially over towards Ticket to stack that point again. And it's one of those things like we got to give some credit here to Carolina. I mean, over the course of this season... The progress has been slow, maybe in certain regards, but steady. I think generally speaking, you know, we saw their success kind of with the immediate change starting to kind of lead itself towards hard point wins. Control started to kind of come around. Search and Destroy has about a, probably been the, the least or the last thing rather to kind of be, you know, finding the success train. Yeah. But this has been really, really well constructed by Carolina. Everyone's helping each other. You've got players building streaks for one another. There's really no non-traded kills coming out. I mean, this has been near perfection for Carolina from start to finish. All right, Clay's just turning back for all the time. 17 and four, already earned himself yeah. a cruise missile. The second segment is complete. They're working on the third and you can already see Seattle. They have waved the white flag over at that A point. They're setting up properly, at least for a two minute and 17 hole over towards that B segment. You're already pushed out towards Junk, but here comes Gwen on the repinch, and Carolina simply not making any mistakes. They're trying to close this one out in three. Yeah, and again, it's not out of hand. Everything feels like, hey, let's just teamwork something. Let's not force individual engagement, which is sometimes kind of a staple of what they've done in the past. Even here, we're trying to teamwork this backdoor position. Nate helps out just a touch. Clayster trying to hold on towards the jump wall, but now has to take his attention forward. Tough gunfight versus Hoop, but doesn't miss. Forehead shots all the way through, and now Clayster's got himself on another five spree. And a rival nine in hand has the prediction on the player in the corner, but the teammates are here to try to assist. Not fully enough to get the engagement, but does it make a difference? Clay's 20 and four, another cruise missile tallied. Yeah, and they found a double at the point as well. If TJ can find that second onto old 4 you can make this round already Sheesh. be done. But Clayser is getting it done now with the rival nine. He's not going to invest his cruise missile. He's, he's a sole man currently trying to complete this first segment. But he's getting a read on where everyone is coming in. Another great shot for the Yave. Trying to make it nine in a row. Okay, old man. I see you. Wow. I mean, that is blinding from Clayster. TJ, a little bit of trouble. Tries to sneak away towards the back alley. Not going to work out. Life difference of five. Clock at 125. And finally, Seattle starting to get some some motion defensively over towards B. They've got 0-4 who snuck behind this play. Very unexpected from Carolina. And now all of a sudden, Fellow's got the shoe on the opposite foot as he kind of gets behind oh. but doesn't make a difference. 0-4 is now on four. And Seattle control the map. Oh, that's good stuff right there from Seattle. To locate every single player from Carolina, reinforce her numbers back over towards Ticket. Now only be down by one life. But you're going to address that cruise missile. Carolina trying to close out the game now. They should get girly information on where they're set up, but nothing is going to be able to connect. So now you have to work your way up to the map with the gunny. Yeah, this is all about making a statement, it feels like right now for Carolina. 
Seattle getting picked apart just a touch over towards red. Still plenty of time on the clock here for Carolina to make a move with a three life difference. Abuza right through Soda Alley. Able to help get this defense a little bit more dynamic as everyone was playing from the front and Gwyn nearly transfers for the double but comes up short. So Seattle clock their biggest ally. Start to back away and set up their defense a little bit more neutral. And it's just one more push. All you have to do is withstand one more push because the close pawns come in for Carolina. Fellow with the first kill onto 4 all able to put the game out of pause. But a 2-2 trade. Oh. Back and forth between both of the teams. Fellow's able to find another. Now Seattle serves. They have to just make their way on in. Ball! And the help from Fellow extends the double onto 4 TJ definitely in trouble. Second tick of progress. Still being contested. Seattle will get over the jump wall. Tough gunfights coming through, and Hook just holds down the trigger and sprays for a double. Gwyn, possibly the last hope left. Not sure what to shoot that is. His body's all over the point. Down to the pistol. This is essentially a 1v4 for him. Oh, the prediction oh. is beautiful. Over the top box, gets caught. Seven seconds on the clock. TJ next one up. Tries to play through the back. Finds Abuza. 5v1. Clock stops at 2.8, and Hook will be melted through the door as Carolina take a 3-0 in the control. Oh, that's good stuff right there from Carolina to respond their way back into this series. They were the better control team on paper before we got into the map number three, and they get that one done with ease. Two attacking rounds, one dominant defensive round, and a great performance out of the old man Clay. This absolutely takes over, earns himself two cruise missiles, and in those final moments, it was Fellow and TJ. The fact that Fellow was able to maneuver his way around Cafe with that MCW, with the Renetti, he was keeping his teammates alive. Hmm. And they do just enough to close it out in three. Now we are forced to go to a map number four, which is going to be sub base. But if Carolina were looking for some life, you definitely got it after that control. Oh, big time. And I, I think a lot of it comes from Clay. If there was ever a player you Perfect want guy. roaring on the side of your squad. Yep. I think most would put Clay in the forefront of the conversation. 3,900 damage, 21 of 25 non-traded. Call that the good old fashioned cod hat trick right there. All over the board and a chance for Carolina to not just, you know, find a little bit of momentum here in this map number three. Sub base is not a bad map for them by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I'm excited to see them on sub base. I remember in the beginning of the season, they were one of the teams who always played all the top teams really tight. Their numbers might not be the best. Fifth in rotation, seventh in holds, and seventh in breaks, but they have a four and two overall record on the map with every single game basically going down to the wire. And then the opposing side for Seattle Surge, just another struggle one for them with the old roster, though. Like, we saw a completely different team in Seattle Surge in HP and map number one. So you find yourself up 2-1 in this series. Obviously, you do not want to lose the control the way that you just did. But you're going into a sub-base HP where you have to be feeling good with the, at least the way you played in map number one. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like we talked about, really map one and map two, both winnable from either team's perspective. Very gritty series up until this point in map number three where it's very one-sided. And... You know, again, the conversation point here for Seattle, you give them a little bit of forgiveness with the, not just one player recent change, but it does put a lot of pressure on the roles to also move around just a touch for Seattle. Yeah. You know, Booza kind of stepping more into that main AR spot that Arceus was holding previously. So lots of question marks around the control for Seattle, but those aren't going to be individually looked at for this control because sub base hard point, this is going to put a lot of focus and spotlight on 04, who we talked oh, about yeah. can flex, but he's going to have to here and really show up with an AR in hand. You really are, because with the way that Clayson just played in that Karachi, you best believe he's going to try yeah. to chain it into this sub base. And on a map like sub base, where top three is very valuable, top slow is very valuable, those MCWs need to be felt. You cannot allow fellow and Clayser to take over the game with Gwyn at certain moments also pulling out that third MCW. So I just think if you are Seattle Surge, you have to do it with the teamwork. Same way you got it done in map number one to try to get it done in this map number four. Yeah, and again, looking at this reset through the halfway point of the year, there are going to be teams that look at this and say, well, thank goodness. And Carolina is, I think, probably at the top of the list because oh, yeah. <laughs> the maps that have been pulled out of the pool have been miserable for them. Three and 11, as you see on the hard point, but also the one and eight record on the two search and destroy maps that have been replaced. So you get a little bit of love here, I think, in terms of being able to go to maps that you have found success on. Really, the only maps in the pools for both hardpoint and search that you'd found success on come by the ones that are still standing. But this isn't just like a those inactive maps are gone. You've got, you know, a chance to possibly pull for the playoffs and top six. You still have to put the work in to oh, learn yeah. six star and Vista to the highest of levels.
Yeah, you have to play it every single day. We're talking about two new maps that got invested. You want to be the best as you possibly can be so you can be prepared versus every single team that you can go against. And the good thing for Carolina, like you said, is that they got all the bad maps out. The invasion is gone when they were sitting out 0-8. The skid row is gone when they were sitting at 2-3. and three. So now you got a whole bunch of new maps and uh, the maps that you were actually good at and performing well. As you took a look at the records right there, 4-2 for Carolina, 1-4 for Seattle Surge. But the biggest thing that's a difference is that hold percentage. On a map Always. like Subbase, it has to be better holds because all of these hills can potentially be full 60s. Seattle Surge have to have better setups in those situations. Yeah, flat out, I mean, Seattle across the board, not only are their points per hold really bad, but they also allow the most opponent, opponent per, uh, points per break that comes through. So... It's not even like they're able to contest. They're just getting absolutely smoked across the board, even when they do well in rotation. So those are the focus points in terms of trying to improve this squad, get him into playoff form. Opening first kills, good. Quinn still holding on to a little bit of room towards bottom glass, but does get shut down and Seattle come away three for one. Yeah, okay, they start off on the preferred side, so they already have a lot of the power positions. And you find those initial couple of fights, but Brezzy falling through top snow now gives an avenue of attack for Carolina to rake their way up through P5 to try to take the map control to eventually leads to the break but it's still seattle search currently with the time in their favor they have full water control but here comes fellow with that mcw up close and personal able to find a triple could potentially lead to the cattle out of break yeah prezi last one left and does well to finesse for an extra elimination that will slow down the carolina rotation pretty current convincingly fellow though does take down hook who was trying to gatekeep over towards the warehouse side so there's an opportunity as the hard point opens up here at P2 for Carolina to flood from the front. Brezzy playing really far back, but uh, does pretty well. And not fully stereo glitch, but pretty close. <laughs> and there's a chance there for Seattle to try to reinforce. And now you set up 0-4, who was a player who did fall to potentially find a couple kills on the pitch, but he drops perfect read coming in on a Carolina. So know where the pressure's coming in. Now the rest of Seattle surge spawn all the way across the map, but Abuza is still here contesting with that MCW. He's able to find two, but it still leads to Carolina walking away with this remaining time. As now Seattle surge with only 30 seconds left, you can try to be aggressive up through the front, but you're more focused on maintaining those back spawns for the next hill. And that's the thing, again, you, we want to talk about our words and statistics coming into a live example. It's right there. Seattle, yep. perfect rotation over. You even get a couple of exit kills to make Carolina have to hit you from the front, and you still get broken? It, it just, you don't often see it happen. It's like a solar eclipse. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, it at least Pretty captivates cool. the attention of the public. Yeah. But now off to the rotation at P3. Seattle surge at least... Won a couple cup fights through the back end to secure those back spawns. Now they're going to be able to take the lead right on back for a little bit, but TJ and Gwyn combined for three. Now you have top snow control. A couple players from Seattle spawning all the way across the map. It turns into Hook versus Fellow in the 1v1, but here comes the reinforcement. Seattle trying to break in through the middle of the tunnel. Problem is, as much as Hook is trying to wait for help, TJ on the split off spawns is also kind of creating issues for Seattle trying to support. So now it's just down to who gets the favorite spawns and eventually Seattle will. So the reinforcements will eventually get here. It does take a lot of time off the hill though, if you're Carolina, which, you know, you don't win the rotation, but you kind of take the status overall. But all of a sudden, Seattle's starting to find a little bit of favor here in front of the hard point as they try to exit over towards Warehouse. Place are still trying to stay in front of their way. Septex in front of Abuza does not find damage, but again, Carolina fully combating against the exits, even though Seattle will get the majority of the scrap time. Yeah, and I love the way that Carolina were playing super aggressive up through warehouse, super aggressive up through the middle of the map because that new hill has yet to pop. So you know there's not a single player from Seattle Surge potentially going to spawn behind us. And you were able to create those layers to so at least keep your player on the point safe for a little bit. But now Seattle Surge have an avenue of attack. They're trying to work their way up the water side, but you can already see Clayster from top snow. TJ's set up on the top of the catwalk for a crossfire. This is perfect, perfect setup for Carolina to take the lead. A forced team kill does come through, so give TJ the credit for the assist there again. Win up front can be the next one challenged through the waterside ramp, and that's enough actually for Seattle to say, whoa, whoa, hold on a second, we can't go this direction, even though it's just a single elimination. The hit was red. Nice shots from Booza, topside maze, picked up beautifully by Fellow, and for Carolina, this has been absolutely perfect through P4. Yeah, this is a beautiful response. To take the lead right on back, give yourself a 30-point cushion. And now off the rotation towards P5, you just have to eliminate these players from Seattle Surge already pushed out on the backside of the propane tanks. They're able to at least eliminate 0-4, but now you got to get past Hook and Abuza who are holding down the hill and also getting aggressive, trying to flip those spawns right on back. Yeah, good move here from Hook once again. 
the buffer around the hard point. Significant. The only hit from Carolina could really come through the middle of the map, but that told, it is still finding a couple of eliminations. That until Brezzy gets topside snow on a nasty heady. Gwyn down low doing what he can, but there's really not much you can create from this position. Just try to hold your life, brother, because there's not any angles that look all that great. And, ooh, nice little slide through for TJ. Eliminates Brezzy, and now all of a sudden, this Carolina hit is starting to grow some legs. Yeah, they have an opportunity to break going in. I thought Bryson was going to have a freebie. When you find yourself in that situation with the MCW to just simply hold down one doorway. But TJ is able to win an insane gunfight, which eventually leads to the break for Carolina. Only a couple seconds remaining on this P5, but it's all about the spawns, all about the fights. And Fellow with the movement is able to come out on top in that one. Back over towards P1 when we go. Fellow's trying to flip those spawns over Carolina to put themselves yeah. on a preferred side. Yeah, and the two kills that come through over towards the water side allow at least a split spawn moment. Seattle holding their breath, seeing if they can find a little bit of support here from these players spawning out. Gwyn in trouble through staircase side. Fellow quickly trying to get here to give him some support, and he will at least confirm one trade. TJ another, and they get a read on towards Abuza. Top side glass, but it's Hook who surprises. Rapidly making his way into the point, forcing now a 1v1. Still the pistol out, but it's 0-4. Right in the nick of time to save a life, and Seattle still a chance to contest. Yeah, still a chance to contest and still holding on to the preferred side for P2. So if you can walk away with this final 20, win all these gunfights to the middle of the map, you are setting yourself up for a nice little lead change. Coming in from Seattle as they find three in the feed. Now you have to locate the last player in Grin. 0-4, it's your turn to shine. He's able to find that kill. So it should be Seattle Surge winning a rotation over towards next, but with Fellow finding that double, Carolina are already going to be here. Fellow's been incredible this map. He has yes, won he has. a number of unbelievably key eliminations. Unfortunately, we say that, and he nades Clayster <laughs> towards the hard point. So Seattle will win this rotation over towards new TJ. Playing on the back side, though, can make a mess of spawns. 04 not really in a position to chow this. And yeah, that's Seattle spawning out. Now the hit from Carolina. Initial trade's looking pretty good. Hook last one standing over towards Secret. He's forced to take the engagement, and with that, Carolina will confirm a break, but they don't spawn in. A chance for Seattle to bounce right back. Yeah, they got a chance to fight their way back on in, in the game. And if you don't find success here, this is where Carolina can start to pull away with it. Because it's only 25 remaining, 25 seconds remaining on this P2 with Brezzy with that double. At least secures the final 24 Seattle surge. So they will be able to take the lead right on back. But Carolina have to have a response here at P3. You can already see a couple players through the middle of the map creating those layers to make it easier for his teammates to soak up some much needed hill time. But a big one on one gunfight through the back end. 0 4 and Gwyn for the spawns. Yeah, 0-4 found the opener, but can't do anything more beyond that. And, ooh, Carolina are setting a very aggressive zone around this hard point. I mean, Clay and TJ are so far forward. Where does Seattle spawn here? Do they spawn in? Not fully. We've got ourselves a little foot race over towards the hard point. Every engagement, a critical one, and Carolina coming out largely on top of it, but Seattle will spawn in. No one was in the hard point, and TJ off the angle will get overwhelmed. So Seattle find a way to spawn in, largely thanks to Carolina playing so far forward, and a chance for Seattle to grow their lead. Oh, that's a big play from Seattle. Sure, it's to play that one patient off of the kill cams. Simply hold down your cam and wait for Carolina to make a mistake so you can still hold down those back spawns and potentially walk away with this final 30. But those spawns now flip. This is not what you want if you are the Carolina Ravens because you got a full 60 at this P4 last time around. But it's going to be Seattle Surge now fully set up. And this is where they have to make up for it. It cannot be an early break. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Gwyn, good opener. Creates an opportunity for them to work around the back side of the Seattle will not spawn over towards the sub. So this is all about who wins these engagements at mid map. Old chow from Hook, but team shots are good. Two for one goes the exchange. Seattle will spawn in, but Carolina has a threat. Building over towards the top side at maze. Plus support coming over towards the water side. And kills are coming, and they're coming quickly. Three players will drop. Seattle have to leave the hard point. One player will spawn here in the form of 04. Abuza doing what he can to keep his life, but this is really where the hard point will be won. This potential 1v1 between Gwyn and 04, and it's Gwyn on seven in a row, winning it with the Renetti, and Carolina reclaim the lead. And that's the rookie just making some of the best plays I've ever seen. We're talking about on a five spree, playing it super slow over towards P2. He knew he needed one kill to earn himself a cruise missile, but the one kill that he got was able to flip the spawns for Seattle, and then he wins the one-on-one -on -one onto 04 to secure the spawns for his team. The rookie time and time again is just making plays for this Raven squad as they're going to find themselves up by 20. And now if you need to break in towards this P5, you got a cruise missile. It's definitely going to play a big part. Could be a photo finish here. 
Seattle currently in the hard point. Quinn says this is the time for us to pull out the cruise. Shouldn't deal with at least one, but no, everyone's Whoa. back in the cover cleanly, and Seattle will take down three eliminations on the backside of the cruise missile. An absolute folly as Seattle continues to win the eliminations, and with that, now they get back into the lead. And now Carolina have to fight their way out of the spawn. They are not on the preferred side to try to break their way in towards P5. They know they can't apply pressure up the warehouse. We have to try to attack through the middle of the map. Quinn with the beat down at least starts off the engagements, but the crossfires of Seattle are ready for the push to come in. Two for one goes the exchange again. This could be the potential last hit for Carolina on this hard point. And it's a pinstripe kill feed. Abuza off the regen. Big he win. Finds the win versus TJ. Still 12 seconds to fight for. No chance to win here, clearly. But this is all about who can control the high ground surrounding the first hard point. And Carolina are starting to find some motion on the map. They have top snow. They currently have top three. They have the preferred side of the spawns as well. Just got to win a couple gunfights over towards the water side. Seattle able to at least trade a little bit better on that side. So they're able to at least maintain a little bit of the map control, but oh. 224 to 204. TJ is able to win a one-on-one -on -one big gunfight versus Abuza as they're trying to take all of Water Street side. TJ starting to find himself in final form, 31 and 21, and a hell of a second set of hills for him. Taken by surprise, though, 04 from bottom glass does well. Fellow trying to just kind of find pot shots into the hard point, keep it neutral at worst. Quinn from the interior overwhelmed. Seattle trying to make their motion across the map. Where does the Carolina spawn happen? And it's right on top of P2. Once again, we're going to see another hill here. It just comes down to what Carolina can do on rotation. And Felony helps it out with a couple of wins over towards P1. Yeah, Carolina got to make it happen right here off this rotation. You win this rotation, you're basically going to force the game five. But you can already see Seattle Surge taking a lot of ground up to the propane side. As they're applying pressure through the back end, TJ just got to play your life, at least set up Clayster for the double. He's able to hit the stun, which makes the second kill a lot easier. But do you read the third player going on the pinch? No, you get some team fire assists out of TJ. So Carolina able to hold. They're able to take the lead. And it's only 15 points until they force game five. Oh, and Fellows just making this so difficult for Seattle. Five seconds remain. Is anyone really even get here in time? Hook would have to smoke one and then get into the hard point. Can he mantle and jump in in time? Doesn't matter. TJ caps off a great map four with the final kill. And Carolina will send us into a map five after a great sub base hard point. Woo. A nail by the hard points between both of these two teams so far. Map number one was really close. And map number four even closer. But Carolina in the final moments just get it done off the rotation. It was felony again with the double from comm side. He relieves some of that pressure through the middle of the map. And then all you have to do is trade efficiently. But off the spawn, even with Seattle Search taking a lot of map control up to the left side. Clayster was able to hit that attack, find a double through the back end, get a little bit of assistance from TJ, who, like you said, had himself one hell of a map. 34 and 22, 27 non-traded kills, puts up less damage than Gwyn, but those two young men got it done for Carolina now to force the game five. Huge. What a thriller of hardpoint maps we've had in this series. Holy cow, like we talked about, first two maps was really anyone's game. You can say the same thing here about map number four, and now we start to look into the unknown. Six, star, search, and destroy. And I think just to kind of marinate before we had to break here, Jay, you got to talk about the fact that Seattle have been great in search and destroy. It doesn't really matter yeah. what the venue is, but this is brand new. Uh, now it's just down to who's prepped better. Hopefully they figure it out early on for the six star in game number five because for a new squad, it does wonders to come out here and win your first match because then it tells you like, well, we made this roster change for a reason and it showed right off the rip. But if you come back and get reverse swept here, it's probably going to demoralize the hell off Seattle Surge yeah. and definitely boost up Carolina. But this has been one hell of a match so far and it couldn't end any better than other than a map five on six star, baby. It's going to be a good one. Critical series again, points matter big time as we start to get past the halfway point in the overall season. So this map five has a lot riding on it for these two bubble teams. We'll be back on the backside of the break to figure out who surpasses the other when we come back after this. Upgrade your game with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
Sunday ride. The map five potential reverse sweep. Two teams literally sitting just underneath the top eight mark. Still plenty of season to play. It feels like a fresh season, I'm sure, for both of these two squads with the new maps, new roster for one of the two. But it comes down to the first ever six star search and destroy that we've seen so far in broadcast. Jay, give me your thoughts. Just hit me with it. Uh, I'm excited to get into one. Obviously, six star, you so many different things you have to be accounted for. Water routes, low secret, over towards that eight bomb site. You have to be prepared for a lot of aggression up the middle map as well, because this map can tend to play really, really fast at some times or really slow, depending on what squad of what kind of strategies they're going to come out with. But I'm excited to get into this one, man. New search and destroy map, new bomb sites, new strategies. We get to see it all for the first <laughs> time here in this game five. And again, just looking at the, how the history has gone over the course of this season for both these two teams, Seattle still finds themselves kind of the top half of overall search and destroy squads on the year. It's, it's hard to put a really, you know, a finger on what we're going to expect here. But, you know, you take in mind kind of where the success has come from. It's been in good control in the first 30, 45 seconds, finding first bloods, or at least minimizing it if it does happen against you. So that may be one of the big difference makers in this one as both these two teams square off on our first ever look at six star search here in the broadcast. And I love the way that Carolina playing this right off the rip. You just spread Matt penalty for the early setup on where the pressure is coming in and they get a good read on Seattle surge, basically stacking over towards this eight bomb site. So it's on the other two players across the map, trying to work their way up through water side, just still holding down their positions to wait to see if Seattle surge is trying to get aggressive up through the map. This is all about contact here. Bressy, nice clean shot sports fellow. First blood tally hoop follows up. And they get the read that, yep, there's still still one more player here. So now you look to Gwyn. Can he create something through the middle of the map? No, snapped on by Abuza just before things started to get messy. Ooh. But the damage tally gets collected. And all of a sudden, TJ working on a 1v3 has plenty of time for what is now just an instant 1v1. Yeah, and that's one of those situations where you're in a 3v1 if you're Seattle. The only way you lose a damn round is if he plants the bomb and kills all three of you. There's no reason why we should try to get aggressive up through the spawn and play the buddy system. Walk right into the frame of TJ, and he finds the timing to close out the round. Carolina losing the first two kills, put themselves in a 4v2, but that's why you got Haley. The guy's been getting it done in search and destroy for a really long time, and already on the first round on six star, finds himself in a 1v3. Yeah, and, you know, again, it's one of those situations that you could obviously kind of criticize Seattle to stay back, play your numbers, but at the same rate, they know they've got TJ completely isolated over towards security. That smoke that he puts down, though, creates maybe just a moment of doubt. And then the rewrap back right to Gwyn, who is trying to create an opportunity at mid. Works out perfectly with the damage he was able to tally. So small miscue, small punish for the mistake. Leads to a 1-0 count for Carolina. And TJ, not just the 1v3, also had the ace. As Seattle looked to get very aggressive. Lots of utility and nades over towards U-Haul. But Carolina has the response, and they collect first blood. And I love that setup right there from Carolina. You saw Seattle. They were all out aggressive up to that eight point. Carolina, their difference on the, the defensive round was all out pressure up through mid U. Use your tax to find the opening first kill. And you take mid map control. Now you're able to rotate towards both sides for free. And with Seattle surge now in the man disadvantage, are slowly working their way up the water side. And this is going to be completely open. You just got to work yeah. the objective. Does who get the commitment to call for the plan? He does. Carolina just looking to play retake. Very passive, to say the least. How do they set up this retake attempt, though? Three players at mid-map. They have the opportunity of tracking back, pushing through, or going deep. As Abuza is the one watching the flank here, and he is going to be tested, Jay. I mean, he's going to have a 1v3 of his own. Gets surprised through the vents. And now this rest of the post plant has, has to bunker down and see if they can find the kills. Just got to trade officially if you are Carolina. Try to set up TJ also for a free kill to earn himself a cruise. He's able to find his six in a row. Now it's Hoop left in the 1v3. He does take down Gwyn. He also what? does take down Clayster. And now it's ring around the Rosie. I don't know if TJ has enough time. Oh, no. He's got to make the commitment right here, right now. Here's Hoop for the check. The shots are through. Wow. Not the 1v3 on the other side. Whoa. I mean, we've had ourselves a barn burner here. But two back-to-back -back 1v3s. Mercy. That's who just making next level plays, man. We're talking about around the, the half wall, around the canopy, just works his way with that rival nine, finds the initial two fights, and then gains the information that TJ is definitely behind me. Let me just keep on circling. And he wastes enough of that game clock to secure the round. Two back-to-back -back 1v3s to tie us up at one. Unreal. I mean, again, it's for some people just Seattle versus Carolina, but... 
This is not a series to be slept on by any form and for good reason. It has been exciting to say the least and it's not gonna stop here. Quick aggression over the top at this mid planner. Prezi double, good response. Hook fobbles up for three and the opening engagement pretty darn perfect for Seattle as they find the final, no worries. Yeah, that's good stuff right there from Seattle. Just staying strong on that defensive setup, but you can already see Carolina. They were trying to go back to what didn't work in first round with trophy system and still did not work. Seattle surge more specifically. Brezzi, he's able to find three on the round. A little bit of assistance right there from Hook, but they shut down that early A pressure. Very, very quick defensive setup right there from Seattle to put them back in the advantage. Oh, boy. And hey, I, I don't think we're going to be uh, surprised to see more interactions like that <laughs> over the top of the A site. It almost feels like Mercado-esque in a way. Throw your nades, jump forward, see if you win your gunfights. This time, Brezzi playing a little bit more passive initially. Cooking up a frag that's intended towards TJ's direction, and it will hit. Plus, oh, oh clean shots as TJ gets caught peeking through mid. I thought TJ must have thought he was Iron Man or something. Like he was just going to eat that nade, still square up, but at least the first blood for Seattle. And now you have full A side control. You're trying to push out towards the deep lanes, but Clayster makes you pay for it through mid connector to even up the numbers at a 3v3. But the bomb should get planted. 04 in a crucial position to at least yeah. put himself back in the advantage. There's a little pixel peek through the dry bar. Leaves enough time for Brezzy to plant and reposition. Clayster through mid. Win at the moment. Still at the deep side towards the sky bridge. Abuza all the way towards top security window. And as soon as Clay gets a look saying no one's really all that nearby, it has to be up close and personal. Wait, Gwyn able to find one down low. A little wrap from Brezzi kind of leads us to a nice, nice little 1v1. Abuza playing forward. Now backs down over towards the back staircase. Gwyn, a lot of work to be done here. Moving quickly. Does he get a full read on this? Yeah, sees him. Has to force the gunfight though. And oh, it's just another one of those moments where you just create time and space. Abuza still wins the 1v1, but even if he doesn't, he positions himself into a spot where there's no way Gwyn was getting back to that bomb in time. That's just perfect plays right there out of Abuza. Good shoulders work. The dance moves were on point. And just like you said, not enough time for Gwyn to get the kill and eventually stick that defuse. As Seattle Surge walk away with the attacking ground. Now starting to pull away in this search and destroy a little bit more. If you are Carolina... Try to make a play through the middle of the map. Try to take mid-map control again. Because as I'm looking at this mini-map, it really does remind me of Raid. We're talking yeah. about B-bomb all the way puts out towards Tiki. A on the opposite side, which is the closer bomb to go. When you're trying to attack over towards P, it's probably very difficult because it's basically in the opposing team's base. Yeah, it's very true. And there's also just so many weird angles as the defense seems to have a lot of just easy control at mid-map. And how about this? Hook is going to step forward. Wait, this is going to be a crew missile called in, but TJ gets taken down. Good trade from Fellow. And the follow-up also perfect from Carolina. So value out of the cruise missile, even though it got a little sloppy on the initial engagement, looks to have 04 and another 1v3 opportunity. And yeah, that could have got scary, man, because yeah. once you take down TJ, he's no longer able to control that cruise missile. So all you can do is just simply call out for information, but at least his teammates are able to find all the kills. Now you're forcing 04 into 1v3. Just was not ready for the repositioning out of Carolina as Clayster finds the final. But at least the cruise missile didn't lose you around. At least you yeah. walk away with the W even though it doesn't find a kill. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, you're maybe not looking for kill potential on this map with the cruise, but it does force the hand of Seattle to have to play forward or take yeah. a very, very passive retreat. So ultimately, the creation comes through fine for the, what is a needed round here for Carolina. You did not want to drop down early 4-1. So back to more level terms. And I think the question was going to be like, is there ever going to be major set plays to try to win out mid map? Because it just feels like it's just so free for the defense. And once again, Seattle just kind of avoids it. Not going to bother spending utility to try to win out mid. And instead, they're going to play on the outside of the map. Carolina make them pay for it. So now it's 3-2. Carolina back on the defense. They're able to isolate Clayster. Clay knows all the information is coming over towards his B point. But... Is that TJ investing the cruise missile again? Was he able to save it in his back pocket? Because I hear one coming down, and he's able to find the first blood onto 04. Big plays out of Carolina. Yeah, don't know how that just happened. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I mean, he was definitely in the tablet. Okay. Uh, oh, fine. Gwyn, nice double. Leaves everything back to Hook again, but this one a little bit more dire of a situation. 1v4 instead of the 1v3. Finds Fellow cleanly. Decent read towards Gwyn. Shots also there, but support nearby allows Clayster to come in and make sure nothing crazy happens. 
Yeah, the fact that TJ was able to keep the F cruise missile, it definitely yeah. catches Seattle off guard. They were not expecting that. When you're going over towards the B-bomb, you're thinking the, the skies are going to be clear. We don't have to worry about any streaks coming in because that's when you're going to find the most success over towards B. But once you get that first one with the cruise missile, you get the, all the info to your teammates. Gwyn is able to find a double through the curve wall, but we're taking a look at the replay. He pulls out the tablet, even with the quick hands. He dies early enough to huh? where it doesn't even blow up out of the missile. So he's able to receive and retrieve that cruise missile for the next round. I'm sure Seattle's not going to be happy about that. I'm sure many people in chat are spamming question marks right now. <laughs> Lots of engagement ceremoniously so over the top at A. Trophy system only denies a handful of the utility being thrown. And how about this? Carolina, they must have gotten at least some sort of information that, hey, Seattle stacked the box here over at A. And so now they've got mid-map for free. Abuz is on an island towards B, and he realizes, I got to pick and choose my battles wisely here because you're under threat of being overwhelmed from multiple angles if you step too far forward. Yeah, Seattle Stars, they do exactly what they've done on the previous defensive rounds. All lot pressure over towards the A-bomb, but this time, Carolina, they try to retake through the middle of the map. Abuse is able to find the first blood onto Clayson, but that bomb is now going to get planted. You're forced to retake down to 4v3. I just don't know how you make this happen. TJ, after the plant, just slips backwards, and he does at least catch somebody over the top, surely. But Gwyn waiting for the delayed pinch, denied, and now it's just down to Fellow. Wow, clean on this retake of Seattle. Taking advantage of the numbers to be sure. Fellow hoping and praying, taking orders at the bar, and there is more capacity than he was ready to handle. So Seattle's retake clean and kind of comes in surprising form. First time we've really seen the middle of the map stay that far open for the defense. Yeah. They were able to execute that retake to perfection. When you find the first blood onto Clayster, and then you're able to isolate these players, working your way through the middle of the steps, working your way through back P3 and also P2. They were able to attack that B site from multiple different angles, find all the kills, and then fellow left in the 1v4. Because he must have not been the best of a bartender because everyone's still waiting for a drink. Seattle Surge got a little bit mad. They take care of him, and now they take back the advantage in the search and destroy. Good stuff to this point. Again, back and forth we go. First bloods. Really not amounting to as much as we would have figured. Lots of clutches already coming through here. But a great map from Hook at 8 and 5. Same can be said for TJ as once again, trophy systems down. Both teams stacking over towards this A site. 3v4 situations underway, but the delayed nades do tag up Clay. He's trying to get back towards safety, but just not a lot of opportunity to do so. Good follow up from the SMGs of Seattle, and they're not done yet. They even get the read on to Gwen. It's a flawless round for Seattle and a hell of a statement to make late in this map five. That's beautiful plays right there out of the surge. They were just like, they cannot mess with us over towards this A bomb site. So the maximum they can have in trophy systems is going to be two, but we're going to throw all eight tacks. If something connects, we're just going to full on send it up through the A site and they find all four kills right at the moment to secure the attacking round. And Seattle Surge so far staying strong and search and destroy, man. These guys are using teamwork to perfection to not put themselves at game point. What do you call here for Carolina? Let's go ahead and flood to A. <laughs> Hope and pray the nades land. Oh, Ford playing kind of a counter spot here at U-Haul with an SMG, but it doesn't make a difference. Opening nades for Seattle once again, finding success. And look at this. Oh, uh, you think Seattle's feeling it? Aggression right through Aqua. And a chance to possibly isolate towards Fell. A lot for him to do here. Hello. It's all about running away. And that delays the gunfights a little while longer, but the bomb doesn't get planted, and Seattle will catch the bomb carrier out. The alarm bells didn't ring soon enough, and Seattle will take map five in a critical series. Wow, new roster looking just as strong on the search as any other previous one had. They're feeling good, man. Seattle Surge, they complete this series and not allow them to be the first team reverse swept so far in stage three. They close it out in the game five, the first time we were able to see six star search destroy. And they play that great. It was non-stop aggression every single round over towards that A-bomb. And they were usually the team to come out on top. But when you're finding multiple first bloods, then you're allowed to hit a couple routes. You have players working on the deep pinch. And then you saw a felony in through the top of that room with those double doors closed. Believe it or not, Alan, those are bulletproof. So yep. fellow was getting all the info that there's multiple players on the back end. I cannot fight all these guys by my damn self. And unfortunately, he wasn't ready for everyone from Seattle Surge to bombard that side of the map. They find all the kills in the final round. They walk away with the search and destroy 6-3.
And that honeymoon stage is hitting different. Even with 04 going 375 and then 33 damage, teamwork was on point today for Seattle to secure their first win of stage three. Wow. I mean, no shortage of electricity in this series. Maybe save just map number three, which was pretty one sided. Everything else really tight, really gritty. And for two teams that absolutely need wins. A pivotal opener there for Seattle, like you mentioned, with the new roster. New maps looking pretty solid, winning both the six stars. Lots of things starting to spin pretty positively for Seattle, where for Carolina, the online woes continue to harp against them. Still a couple of days before all of them get to Charlotte, but hard to find things to really praise on in that last search and destroy as we send things back over to the desk to complete our first series of the day. Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations to Seattle Surge, a squad that no one believed in. None of us picked them here on the desk. The fans even chose their opposition, but Surge gets it done in Hook the hero of game five. I mean, it was a proper upset. I think when you look inside Carolina Royal Ravens, the biggest misstep in this series is losing that map number one hard point. They have not beaten Seattle Surge when it comes to search destroy. That now holds true in this series and gives them the win. Nameless, how big of a loss is this for Royal Ravens fans? Uh, I mean, it's pretty big, right? You're going up against Seattle, who's towards the bottom of the standings. You're just coming off of a great performance on land, and you got some players in the facility now. You're expecting to make strides forward, but in this series, I mean, you lose two search and destroys, right? You got a new map like six-star in. You got maps that you were bad at removed from the pool. You're thinking that they're going to come competent and ready on a map like this. Well, it just doesn't happen, man. It's some big clutches. Who gets a... He had no business winning that 1v3. We're talking about he wins two 1v1 gunfights and does a loop-de-loop -loop to win the round at the very end. Right. Just some bad rounds from the Carolina Royal Ravens, but let's spend this time to show love to Seattle Surge. I like 04. I love what I saw. Oh, yeah. He plays consistent regardless of his stats. You kind of expect that same play out of him, and there's no lack of confidence. His first match in the CDL, the man was challenging everything. Oh, yeah, he was challenging everything. I think that was the first thing I noticed about O4's gameplay, and it didn't stop even when he wasn't doing well. And then map number four, he was behind a lot of his fellow teammates in Seattle Surge. He was double neg at one point, but he's able to end 27 and 30. Even though they lost the map, it was enough to still push them and their confidence into this map number five. Yeah, I mean, I think for 04, like you said, like he'll just keep at it, right? Yeah. Plays with that confidence. Uh, you know, through four maps, he had the most damage on the team. That game five, obviously not too great for him, but his teammates picked him up. Abuza went crazy, and I love the way that they played Search and Destroy today. Some aggressive rounds all together, like the, the tricky round where they pushed all the way up B Street on Invasion. We saw them giving up Tiki on this map. Yeah. Like, great plays as a team, and I think a lot of that's behind 04. Seattle Surge getting the job done with a game five, something they weren't able to do all of stage number two but let's take a look at your scuff play of the game which comes from game number one they steal the first respawn the final hill is locked in with a 10 point difference it was seattle coming out on top yeah and it was a hook master class uh, this is one of those very rare hook takeover performances that we saw in map number one and map number five but also as well brezzy seems to be getting more comfortable i feel like he may have slid under the radar a bit in this series but he had an incredibly solid performance in this map number one. Yeah, they did a good job on Vent. They got a decent amount of time there. And then we get over towards P1, and it was just back and forth the entire time. But every single time you need a Seattle player to get a big kill, they got it. I mean, Clay got through. He finds two. Immediately, the trade comes in from Hook, just playing their life perfectly, the anticipation to find that second. And then just bleeding Carolina dry, man. Just not enough time. They couldn't find the right multi kills at the end there, and Seattle pull away with the dub. Royal Ravens got to go back and watch the footage because you had Clay having some excellent games. You had yeah. Gwyn playing some stellar Call of Duty, too, but man. it didn't convert to wins, and no one was doing it all at the same time. Royal Ravens remain outside of the top eight for now, and you're going to see the surge pressuring their way into the top eight potentially later next week. For now, though, we got our monster winner spotlight, the man all the way from Belgium joining us live. How are you doing, Abuza? Good, and you? Excellent, my friend. Okay, let's talk about Surge's struggles in stage two. And how did you guys decide to make this team change for 04? Um, basically, we struggled with some, some stuff, like with the team, of course. And I needed to get like my main role, you know? So we needed like someone like more faster. So right now I can play my role and that's it. For sure, Booza, did you feel the difference in scrims right away when plugging in 04 to Seattle Surge? Because your respawn today looks night and day compared to stage one and two. Oh, of course, like uh, the, the scrims like goes crazy for us, honestly. Play pretty good in scrims. Uh, so yeah, we have some good practice. For sure. 
Uh, Abusa, you know, in search and short today, I love what you guys did. You got really, really creative. Some aggressive rounds, giving up sights, wrapping back and forth. Seems like that got away from you guys a little bit throughout stage two. Uh, was there a discussion around your search and destroy and, you know, getting more creative and unique ways to win rounds? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we tried to do some different stuff. And basically, we just play together, like yeah. every time, no matter what. Abuza, I know you guys had to have a lot of conversations with your general managers, with your head coaches. What's the goal? We're now at the halfway point in the season. What are you guys working forward to, I guess, to end this 2024 year? Uh, um, I mean, basically, like, win, like, every match if it's possible and go to the champs and yeah, that's it. Making the champs, that's it. I like that answer. Yep. Well, best of luck. We like to see 04 on the new lineup and congrats on seeing you back in a winner circle. Yeah, these guys is gross. Love it. You. It's a booze you in our monster winner spotlight, the first of three, because when we come back, we're jumping into match number two. And if you look at these standings, Nameless, We've got a very strong number five now officially on the leaderboard. Vegas Legion took that position away from Minnesota Rocker and can now gain even more ground on the top four. Yeah, it's massive, and this is going to be another banger. Thieves need points. You've seen Seattle climb. They just booted Royal Ravens out of the top eight and took their spot. So we're getting a shift right now. All right, things are mixing up. Remember, it's only the top eight that play at champs at the end of the year. When we come back, you'll see a world champion in action. It's attached in Vegas Legion. Taking the stage next. <laughs> Upgrade your game with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. It's going on CDL TV, baby. <laughs> plays a little different. It's nice to have like a, a map you love back in it, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same as draws a nice little angle through the statue. Rips yeah, that one wasn't for the thing. opening kill. Yeah. Standy will get free info here onto Assault. Quickly finds the kill. Oh, no. oh, oh, no. He's going for the assassination. Didn't hold the button down long enough. And Assault says that's so fast. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> These guys play every day. You should know you cannot assassinate someone uh, when they are a little bit taller than you on the map. And unfortunately, <laughs> the one beat down doesn't work, but we know them hands from assault. They are definitely warm. Two punches right to the chest to take down Sandy. But early in our seventh circle here, there's still 30 teams left. You don't have any resources. Get to the zone if you can. Win your gunfight. Maze somehow sneaks through. You see a lone noob Spartan running around like a chicken with his head cut off. There were so many squads. This is unprecedented. Being able to see this from the Codcaster is so special. There's our first moving zone. I have no aim assist on this kid. Finish the only you remain. Finish. 
Oh, snapped. What is he doing? Get him oh off of me! God. Get him off you of me! Yo! Get him off of me! Oh my God. Who are you? What do you think of my shirt today? Uh, it, it is a choice. It's a choice. Listen, guys, I put this shirt on. I felt pretty, I felt pretty sexy, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and thought, God, God, God damn. And then I got into the green room and everyone said, your shirt's too tight, you look like an idiot. And I was it's like, just a little too small, but it, it works. I mean, we're dealing with just God mode attach right now. Attach right over the top of the car. Oh, it's clean. Down by the third of the mat, naked fool. Let this young man get hot. It's gonna be hard to stop him. Finds an ace on the round through the middle of the mat. Heard gets the double kill as well. Geo pops off. Oh, okay, Geo, I see you, baby. Nero is all across the map. Seven in a row for him. Vegas Legion clutch up. Three to zero. It's time to party. Las Vegas Legion taking on LA Thieves, and this is going to be another important fight for points. If you're LA Thieves, you're trying to keep up with the rest of the teams that are fighting for that top eight. Currently, though, Vegas is in our number five spot. They've broken the 100-point mark. I mean, I never thought we'd talk about the Vegas Legion franchise in this way. They're literally the gatekeepers of the top four, and they are looking insane in this split. All right, let's break down our squad, starting with the Vegas Legion, a team that had a lot of hype after their stage two online performance. People expected them to maybe run to the top four. Didn't get the job done on land. Where do they fall short? Listen, uh, this team needs work in search and destroy. Now, I want to give these guys all the credit in the world. They've made fantastic moves. Kept purged through all the people talking about it on social media. They pick up Geo. He's been one of the best acquisitions all year long. And they're looking like a top five team in terms of hard point and control. Search and destroy, though, they need work. 11th in retake throughout stage two. And second to last in terms of opening duels. You expect them to be better at that when they have a guy like Nero. Look to get him going in the search and destroy stage throughout this split. I think Las Vegas are one of the better teams in the world. When it comes to Monster Energy pregame, I mean, same old story, right? Their hard point has been insane, and that's the reason they've been a top team. They are 13-5 and five with a plus 30-point average. They're the best team in the league in holding and in breaking. So screw the fundamentals. They've got the gunny to get them through. Again, like Ann said, Vegas Legion just need to focus on that search and destroy a little bit more because their control has been all right. 21-4 and four round count. They have been incredible on the defense, but they are going to play Invasion 12-0 first in the league when it comes to that game mode. Number one in the league. Let's see what maps they're going to get today as Vegas are the favorites in this fight. On the other side of the battle, we have LA Thieves who have made a number of roster changes in their own right. They brought in Nasty and Kremp. They put Joe Deceives and Cammy down in challengers. Well, now Joe Deceives is back in that starting lineup, but it's Afro right in the bench. Yeah, uh, for Afro, unfortunately, it was just he couldn't find his way during this game. We know what he's capable of. He had his moments, but it just wasn't enough. So they take out Afro, they plug back in Joe Deceives, but he kind of has the same problem, right? So for him, we're looking for that explosivity, but we're mostly just looking for that consistency for the LA Thieves because that's all they need. They have talented players able to do their roles properly, but they're not all doing it at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Hardpoint has been pretty good for these guys. Search and Destroy sitting around 50% and where it matters most in Game 5s, they were 3-1 and one in their last four, so it's been impressive on that front. The control, though, is where they have really struggled. I mean, 11th in attacking there, 3-6 and six in control. And Joe Deceives is a guy who can come in and really help them in that aspect. Get in their base, get lost, find some kills, right? That added confidence from challengers, that should uh, bode very well now in the league. And then for the Monster Energy pregame, convert better. Second opening dual win percentage, eighth in converting it. So that's a quick, easy fix. Just communicate better in, in the round. And worst in the league on those attacks. Let's take a look at the best of five this time around. Just like in the previous series, we're going to see Six Star twice, and Rio sneaks in for Search and Destroy Game 2. As well as Vista, map number four. So this is a slew of the new maps. We've seen Vegas Legion already, so they're being comfortable. But for LA Thieves, a lot of question marks raised at how they're going to play on new maps. Nameless, is this a battle of the better SMGs, ARs? More important, how do you see these maps breaking down? 
down. Yeah, I mean, I do think SMGs are going to reign supreme throughout this series. I mean, we just saw some big performances out of guys like Hook and TJ Halley, respectfully, win on the other side. So I think in this one, this is perfectly laid out for Joe Deceives, man. Go yep. knock him out the park. Good luck, Joe. That is your best of five maps. Now it's time to lock in our scuff pickums and name us as the leader. I'm going to make you continue to go first. Sure. Where are you going? I'm going to go with Vegas in this one. I Allie, think they just look great. That's fair. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to follow with Vegas Legion simply because, I mean, they're sitting at fifth right now. They're you, one of the best teams. You asked for Joe DeSeeves to be in a starting line. I know, they put I'm Joe DeSeeves in the starting line, but I'm you still convinced. pick Vegas? You know what? That's fair. That's my bad. I'm sticking with Vegas as well. Smart That's girl, so smart guy. Fair. We're all going Vegas, says the fans. Let's find out if we're all right or if we're all dumb again. Back-to-back -back <laughs> matches. We got Miles and Chance on the mic. Chance, how you feeling about this battle? I feel in the same way I do if I were to square up against you and rank play Pocket. Absolutely fantastic. I know <laughs> it's going to be godlike because we've had some great series. Like, I know people talk about, like, the sort of Burger Bowl sort of vibes. It creates exciting Call of Duty. We get double six-star in the mix. We get a Vista. It's all the new beautiful maps. I'm very excited, Miles. How are you? I, I'm absolutely spellbound <laughs> by that intro. That yeah. took me by surprise in nearly every single way. Wow, boy, howdy. What a start to, uh, to the day, folks. But, yeah, real excited. To, uh, to get this one going. But first and foremost, the hardpoint KD leaders. This is what we're looking at this season so far. And the reason why we're looking at this is because three out of the four members of Vegas Legion are in this one. Nero, Attach, and Geo all sitting up there within that top eight. Brilliant stuff, Chance. Yeah, that's over the course of the entire season as well. So that means that level of production has been very consistent for this squad. And Nero being up there is a dangerous man. Obviously, his kills per 10 minutes are pretty high up there, as well as Geo. So with some of the younger players on this squad that are absolutely bringing the slang power, the question is, can they bring this into the new maps that we have? I know we saw Vegas briefly on Six Star before, at least a, a few days ago. And like they had some of the best P3 holds that we have seen making it a full 60 so high expectations for the squad looking good on in the new maps but really is obviously new man or maybe old face back on the new squad see if they can keep those hard point improvements rolling in the stage three because they could turn into a pretty lethal threat we can indeed. Well, to echo the sentiments of the previous series, again, LA Thieves all playing from the Cash App compound in Los Angeles. The Vegas Legion players scattered across the United States. We'll see if that comes into play again online here in the Call of Duty League. you got to get them wins, folks. Not an easy thing to do if you're not in the same location, but we'll see if it pays off for Vegas Legion because the hot streak they're on right now, Chance, nothing to be sneezed at whatsoever. LA Thieves, though, we'll see if this new roster can find some uh, some groove, let's say. It was nice to hear some love from Nameless there on the desk. Of course, a lot of objective prowess from them. Can they turn it into a win? It's going to be a fun series again. Very high expectations for both of those squads. And I know you're talking about one team sneezing everything away. Well, maybe Ghosty trying to cough up a lung and get ready for the first map as well. So struggle bus for maybe a few of these players, but fist bumps out and bound means the map is loading up and I can never get over how big Nero's water bottle is. That thing is insane. I am the man is hydrated and you'll certainly need it on a map like this. We're out in the sunshine here on Six Star. Sunscreen applied. Hats at the ready. We're going to be going for a quick dip if the temperatures get a little bit too hot, aka when it comes time to get in that hard point. Quick look at the overall season record so far. LA Thieves 8 and 21 in hard point. Not ideal. We're no, in map mode right now. Look though, A, there's new maps in the mix. Maybe that could help them out a little bit, but also stage one versus stage two. Stage one, they were horrible. It was like a one and 11 record. The desk touched on it. It was seven and nine in stage two. So about 50-50, a perfectly like, maybe not strong team, but they can get the job done. And if they've made improvements or like the new maps, hey, the sky is blue. The only way they can go is up. <laughs> well, here we go. Clear skies over six star and a clear hard point after the LA Thieves get absolutely wiped out by a nine. Nice opening salvo of grenades there from the members of Vegas. Good shots out of Ghosty. Looking for his third here as he starts to find that time. A lovely spot to be in, but Geo just too hot to handle. Once again, he's been an absolute terror for Vegas League. Yeah, well, speaking of the terror, Nasty on the flank is going to be maybe devastating for the squad to deal with. There's number two. There's number three. The perfectly timed flank and the break. Well, also to perfection. 
Nasty wants to get aggro as well with the beatdown. That's a force spring. He's got the intel, but unfortunate for him, no reinforcements. Joe Seeds gets caught on the flank, so Nasty, well, the work has to continue. And Nasty, the work is continuing. Five spree from him there. It will come to an end, but what a bit of damage he's managed to do. Gets boys a little bit closer to the hard point. There's a single avenue of attack right now for the thieves. In they go. Krem's going to be the tip of the spear. Gets nothing out of it. Joe Seeds trying to stay alive. Does better than that. Gets two. Magnificent work to keep the play going. On the back stairs again. Another. There's Nasty over his shoulder. Into the point. Joe Seeds cooking with gas. As that is your hard point, thieves. Oh, this is what it takes to break the hill. Maybe just blender him for a bit. Man died three times in a row and makes a play like that. And well, now you already see players from Vegas purge. Well, he can't do anything through the vents. He can't go through the back blind. This is the impenetrable setup because Joe Deceives is the man that can hold the iron. This is a already gargantuan lead we have on P2. And we talked about how P3 is the money hill. Well, we've seen Vegas on these rotations locked down for a full 60, but this is a break situation. It's going to be LA is with the hold and frankly a full 60 on a p3 could be devastating for this game an explosive start here for the thieves streaks as well to be played with new hard points up p3 at the ready we're on the outside bar this is the money hill can the thieves cash in vegas though looking to change the odds a 2-2 split Ghosty and Kremp find theirs in the feed. Joe Deceives not looking the right way, but he does have the coverage. Here's the shots. Joe goes in, gets himself one. Looking for the in and out, keeping the time going. Uh, that's a, a dropped moment there as well for Vegas. Ghosty actually gave up this sort of like back alley push to help out the players in mid, but Vegas were not coordinated. Two players on, or two like sets of players on two different pages. And well, if you're trying to split the war like that, you're just going to have absolutely no success. So that was the devastating opportunity for LA Thieves used to really run the score up and well they execute perfectly it is now a massive lead going towards new and well we already know how chaotic this pool hill can be la thieves they get all the time in the world to set up the break and they have three players right now going on a, a world tour geo though distant in the corner at least able to pick up the first one before he gets traded so they've got the intel he's not going to get enough out of it but the information will pay off in a moment Skybridge service is now open for business. Attach, watching it from the top platform side. It's an all angles attack from the thieves. In they go from upstairs. You've got a couple of places to work from here. Nasty with a suppression, keeps Nero down. Purge right into the point, gets taken care of his Kremp and Joe in the feed. Geo tries to answer back and the thieves get the break. They are in and it's a five spree again from Kremp. We could be looking at another cruise here. Yeah, these guys are just taking turns. Joe to see for the moment earlier on. Well, now it's his opportunity to get the cruise in. Well, I'm faded. Kremp and the LA Thieves certainly are not. Jump up, finish the one-shot kill on Attach. is going to get it done. And while well, for his teammates, all guns forward. They took so much time to go on that pinch and set up the break. And again, for LA Thieves, it was done absolutely perfectly. This is without question the best hard point these guys have played all year. All year without a doubt, and it's not done yet. 11-6 for the young Joe Deceives, a team that has a very, very young average age. But they are looking like vets out there now on six star. Over to the pool we now go. A quick dip is all they're going to get, though, because Vegas, they managed to get in there first. The cruise, though, is going to cause quite the splash. Here we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, that's the dumbest thing I've seen all day. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's a first. Uh, yeah, we'll need another one of those cruise missiles, boys. Uh, yeah, no good. Oh, dear. Well, in the meantime, Vegas have maintained full control. Kremp finally gets involved. And it's the rival nine from the back side of the pool to try to hold the point. Hey, you call him the cruise missile. You just make the other team tweak, forces him inside. They have no idea that it exploded maybe a half a second in. And this is still just continued absolute destruction by the Thieves. 140 point lead. And it looks like they're going to get the final 15 seconds on all time as well. I don't know what it's going to take for a comeback for Vegas, but I just don't think they have a choice in the matter. Thieves right now, they can simply do no wrong. Uh, no wrong whatsoever. The feet are certainly up. The drinks are still cool as we get back over towards the bar in our second set of hard points. We've gone around the world and nasty at 17 and 6. Joe deceives 14 and 9. It's tremendous work from the Los Angeles team here. Can Nasty keep this going? Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Purge the man in the point. Not having a fantastic time here on six star. I think nobody is, especially Attach. He has 6 and 11. Attach has barely been taking gunfights, 17 engagements, and you don't even have 50 points as a team yet. 
Talk about a team that cannot find their footing, getting anything going, and Kremp is just calling out. There are three players in this little room. Joe DeSeves gets to catch them on the cross, and this is just continued time collection. Right now for LA Thieves, and on the rotation again, Joe DeSeves popped off going towards P2 last time around. Finally, he's going to get shut down, but Vegas, they just have nothing going for them. A superb blowout so far, 210 to 48 over towards the lounges. We now roll top right-hand side of the minimap, and that's going to be all Thieves on the approach. Far right-hand side, the spawns are not good for Vegas as well, so the reinforcements will be late to the fight. Here we go. Joe's in, immediate break. This could be game right here and now. And he's going to clear out the back spawns as well. Make sure no funny business. Checks that. Now it's all guns forward. Kremp loses his one by Vance. And well, Vegas winning a few gun fights for the opportunity to get nearby. Joe to see though, waiting in the wings. I'll trigger up. Nades out and about and just waiting for the moment to strike. And well, finds it on Geo. Trades are there. There's the two piece and might be the moment where Joe to see calls game. I mean, it just looked like they had such a tremendous disadvantage. Turn it into a win. Five seconds for it. And with that, a last ditch attempt. Joe deceives once again in the feed. 21 and 11, closing it out big. An absolute slaughter to start the series off. Oh, and that 8 in 21 record they have overall in hardpoint. Look at them now. One of the most dominant victories, if not the most dominant victory we have seen in this game all year. And that's against the Vegas squad, who again, they've been sort of that almost like solidified fifth best team in the game. We've seen them on six star. They look good. Not right there. LA Thieves, that is a different beast of a performance. And that is all four players felt like they were in their bag. Uh, complete clockwork, every rotation on point. When they had to break the hills, they're able to do it. The rotation of P3 to P4, absolutely perfect. Sending three players to go hunt down Geo in the back. I mean, that is just a flawless performance through and through and really just poor Vegas. Not even really opportunities to shoot their guns, Persian attach, really not able to cook anything up. Not, not cooking whatsoever those boys were ordering out and the calories they pounded on were not ideal. 250 to 49 in a swift six minutes and 50 seconds. You'll take that. LA Thieves, turn that ship right around. Hardpoint was not necessarily their best game mode right now, looking like a very fine squad. But look at the highlights. It's all gonna be the boys in red. I, I just got nothing other than well done lads. That was disgusting. Whether it was these vent plays, Chance, the, the bait and switch we saw here, it was a masterful display of pace that Vegas Legion simply could not keep up with, especially in that second P2. Absolutely not. I mean, these were the two individual plays as well that really set them apart, right? Joe is making that highlight reel over towards P2. Nasi having that flank on P1 to set his team up for success. So they took advantage of every situation. And again, once they were able to play ahead of the game and go on those distant rotations, I mean, they just made it look so easy. Oh, no. When Kremp initially called this in, I was trying to think, like, we've seen a few players. It's like kind of off to the right, it seems like, where the spot normally comes in. I don't know if it's like the direction you face or your location on the map when you call it of what decides the sort of cruise location, but whatever Kremp just found, that would be the worst one. Yeah, that's going to be something we'll go over. Uh, I'm sure the, the various, you know, CDL chat shows will be talking about it. You know, we'll re break that one down, but we'll see if we can avoid that situation again. I mean, the Super Destroyer's position typically does affect the angle at which your, uh, your goodies come in. But in this case, the boys were pumped. I mean, you'd think they just won the series the way they smoked him in that hard point. Whoa, what did Kremp say? Lip reading, please. Purge, not impressed. I mean, you know, and something you mentioned, Miles, is like how the uh, average age of this LA Thieves team very much on the younger side. I don't have the data to know if they are literally the youngest squad, but young players bring the passion, bring the energy online land doesn't matter. They're going to come out with some fierceness. And again, right from the opening break, that is the smallest graph we have ever had for the game flow, <laughs> only making it to like the P2 of the second set of rotations. And yeah, I mean, Vegas, they got flatlined. No signs of life. A doctor would check the pulse and just immediately establish death. So I don't know if they can get revived or not going into map two, but that is a painful graphic to look at. Uh, a tough one. Well, they've got another newish map in this map pool to deal with. Rio, search and destroy for map number two. Invasion control. Good old faithful there. We'll see if they can keep it going. And then we get back to Vista and Six Star for games four and five. We'll see if we have to get that distance because right now, LA Thieves playing with tremendous purpose, looking very strong as well. We'll find out if they have, we have to go there, Chance, because right now I don't think it's necessarily on the menu. 
I, well, it'll be interesting to find out because I know for LA Thieves as well, like they actually put together a very strong stage two, had a four and three record over all started in winner's bracket. And they just happened to go against Atlanta Faze, who they actually play pretty well against all of those good signs. And then boom, top 12, they got beat by the Los Angeles Gorillas. So like it was a big missed opportunity. And for the team that is currently in the 11th seed overall in the CDL standings, they need to start getting more wins or at least continue that in the online stages. And they do not have any time to waste 11th is pretty far down there it's going to be a handful of series you need to win just to crack that top eight margin and we have a lot of teams in the league that have been making adjustments so you got to make sure you stay on point the overall records for both these teams slightly under the 500 margin like they are solid they have threats but in their last five maps neither team has had that much success and I certainly know for s and for Vegas what Nameless is talking about. Bottom of the barrel in terms of like those opening dual win percentage. Certainly on the first blood front, you're going to be looking for someone maybe like Geo to pop off and get his team that extra advantage early on in the round. We'll find out if Geo can do it for him. He's been a brilliant addition to the squad. So far, I mean, neither of the team's tremendously impressive search and destroy statistics. I mean, those... Opening round duels for the LA Thieves. Again, that's the initial gunfights. Do they get the first? Can they get away with their lives? We'll find out. A lot of pressure here towards the middle of the map from Vegas with that bomb. The Thieves looking towards the A side of the map. Well, Geo's time to shine. Two players going to be running straight into the irons and just gets traded. Nice double child coming through. Already the first blood. Vegas in response, though, trying to make a play. They're going to be running straight towards Nasty. And he just gets caught trying to open a door, but the trades are quick. Advantage still there for Thieves, and they are just swarming around this fi final player. Attached in a 1v3, but he is trapped in a corner. Going to need some magic. Oh, there's the magic. You died to a nade. 1v1. Whoop. No, Joe deceives from behind. He Doesn't is matter. moving and <laughs> nearly went awry. But Attache would isolate the fight against Ghosty. And a little bit of discourse now between the thieves. Hey, whose nade was that? What was going on? Either way, Joe deceives in position for that final kill. The search and destroy comes to a close there. Two to nothing for him on the round. We've had quite a few 1v3s today already. I thought Attach was going to get another to the pile once the team kill came through. But uh, either way, very efficient work there out of the Thieves. You saw the game plan. Run it down straight towards A. Get the double child out on Geo. They got the first blood and the repositioning was quick to get back and really help Nasty out. Make sure the trades are there. And again, Joe to see his bomb in hand. I know they took him away from the roster after stage one, but he has some of the best objective stats in the league. Man loves to find the bomb, and you at least get a first blood, but Krem's there for the double trade. The double child, not enough for Vegas. And LA Thieves, opportunity. Get the bomb down, clutch the 3v2. Reposition towards the backside. I don't know if the stun was good. Joe deceives waiting on the inside of Garage. He might be the problem now. Bomb not going down just yet. Krem. In a corner, Geo sniffs him out. Big win. 2v2. Joe deceives going hunting. Trapped in the corner. Geo makes the read, though, and drops him. Maybe a, a choke potential here. The three versus two. Now all up to Nasty. And that bomb is indeed down. Geo staring directly at it. The young Englishman now in the 1v2. He is shot his shot as shooters do. 30 seconds on the clock. He will be able to recover the bomb, but the members of Vegas Legion now, hand in hand. They're going to have that perfect coverage of one another. When they take the challenge against him towards this bomb site, it is going to be a 2v1 no matter how you look at it. Good luck. Have fun. And he hasn't read this at all. Might get some interesting timing, but 12 seconds on the clock. He's going to need to find the double kill. Doesn't even check it. Or They've Vegas. Gone. They've gone. They left it. Nasty, though, in a bit of trouble now. He's been damaged. Oh, he's taken a couple more hits. Pressure on Geo finishes it as Nasty was hoping to catch him on the transition. A spicy round nonetheless, Ian, but there you go. Vegas, find the equalizer. Yeah, Vegas catching me out a little bit. I mean, keep in mind, that is also a two versus three clutch, so that is good work out of the Vegas boys, but not actually checking the bomb when there's 10 seconds left. Uh, scared me for a moment, but they at least trapped Nasty in quick enough, but... Uh, either way, it just seemed like a, a bit of a disconnect. Kremp is like waiting for the back alley chow. I think he had a teammate like to sort of look over him, but the challenge coming in from Geo, two on point, and then Joe deceives instead of going for the bomb plant, ends up chowing and just gets caught. So a moment of disconnect and well, even up odds, Vegas, maybe Geo doesn't want to be double doors by himself. He's going to pick a new angle. Is they're just running it down. 
You at least trade out the first blood, but you got LA Thieves. They are playing with aggression. This is one thing you can guarantee is the LA Thieves will meet you in the middle of the map and throw hands. And right now, the 3v3, Jonas Eve spotted out Purge with a lot of information here, but no real movement out of the members of Vegas Legion. Just making sure that top mid is clear. He checks his corners diligently now to get the bomb down. Will they opt to do it though? They don't know. The Thieves have gone to the roundabout tour. And once again, it is a 3v3, all the Thieves shoulder to shoulder. And I mean, Purge saw like two different players just completely run away. They have to be prepared for some funny business. And here's the funny business. More trades rolling through. Everybody grouped up together. And the Wolf Pack of the LA Thieves trying to take advantage, attach another clutch opportunity, 1v2. And it does not last. LA Thieves, this might just be their Rio game plan. Just fly at them, get the first blood. If you trade it out, that's great. We will just regroup, get back together, and fly around the map like some absolute maniacs. Yep. Trusting the trading ability pays dividends there. I was going to say, man, I mean, we're playing to the strengths right now. You've got these young players who are very aggressive, who are very, very strong on the reaction time. You're going to be just holding hands and flying around. Don't overthink things. Don't take gunfights you can't win and just get each other's trades. Brilliant work from the Thieves in that round, roaming the halls of Rio. I think you're going to have to Vegas. Someone's got to make the adjustment, like get the intel on where the players for Thieves are going to be pushing from and make sure you're challenging with the teammate or else you are going to be traded. Nero playing a sneaky spot. He's got Purge watching over him, but it looks like this bomb going straight towards the A site. Not a ton of time wasted. Geo gets back down as well, and Joda sees and Cramp, they're straight in. I don't hate this. They might be able to get the bomb down, or they can cut through boxes and try to get those players out of the middle of the map. Either way, Vegas... Resolute in the defense, have not moved just yet. Waiting for shenanigans. Now they know the play is on. Bomb planted, 40 to go. Well, Joe to see is that's the same corner Kremp played a few rounds before. Geo might make make those reads, but that's long-term, short-term, working the flank. Nasty spots out a few. A delicate moment. And for Vegas, they got to start making moves. They got to go quick. Oh, wow. They didn't think they were nasty, so now they have to deal with him. This is going to burn the time even further. 20 to go. Nasty. Can't win the second. Over towards the bomb, we now go, and it's a 2v2. Ghosty in the garage. Damage dealt. Purge has got to make something happen here. He has to get himself into the play. Ghosty looking for the toes. Gets it, no problem. That's the round. No more defusing that bomb as attached. Unable to help out. Great work again from the Thieves. Yeah, they're on point right now. That's sort of that, uh, you know, flow state as a team sort of moment where Nasty is dealing with multiple players on the flank. He just buys you so much time. Wins the first gunfight and then just plays the corner for an extra 10 seconds. That's distracting two players. And he buys his team enough time that Kremp just gets to take the world tour, go for the flank towards the middle of the map, play for the guarantee and trust Ghosty just to make sure that bomb doesn't get defused. But the angle's on point. Play call's perfect and... This is really thieves. They're at least just decisive right now in everything that they're doing. In Vegas right now, talk about decisive. They forgot to take the bomb. Geo's got to go back and find it again. Makes, messes with the timing somewhat. Is nasty on the top left-hand side of the minimap, keeping those players away from bridge. For now, you're looking at the thieves roaming through middle. The bomb's still looking towards the A side of the map. Ooh, Joe deceives. Singes his eyebrows there with that Semtex. Mid-map, they know the play is on. Thieves are lining up for the hit. And here we go. Kremp sends it. Attach takes care of business. Trades there from Neo. Good work. Oh, boy. It's a going down. Joe deceives the last man standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now with Attach in a 1v1. Joe deceives is moving, too. He's playing cracked out as well, but it's against Attach. Got to take things slow. So he picks a corner, and he's just going to be patient. And I think if, like, he spots Attach coming through double doors, he dips out. Anything else, he takes the gunfight, but... I think Attach is waiting for a scam. Joe deceives for the moment. Playing it too smart. He's playing it real smart. Back over towards top mid. Attach is going to be there. A little too late. He has to recover the bombing. Hopefully get the plant down. Joe deceives is going to go check A. Nobody home. But this could work out. Bomb's going back to B. Will Joe deceives get there in time? Here he comes. Quick check. And that is the round. The celebratory spin as he gets the defuse as the thieves peel off another. It's four to one.
And again, I just like the decisiveness. They completely get baited out by the stun information by Bomb where they just full send for the chow and they start getting picked apart. But because everybody is grouped up, the trades were in. This is effectively a 2v4. The coverage for Joe deceives to be able to get that trade there on purge and then attach just too distant from the fight because he got back down early on. That is, again, the collective. They're all at least on the same page. And Joe deceives. if you clutch a 1v1 against Dylan Attach in a situation like that, put it on the resume. Frame Absolutely. it on the wall. Do what you want. That's a fun moment. Right now, it might also be a Crimson player in rank to get that on the resume as well. <laughs> It's a 3 3 there from Joe Deceive. 7 and 2 overall in our five rounds of Search and Destroy here in the sick. Let's find out what happens. Can Joe keep the spree going? He's got full pockets and dead silence to play with. And he has the bomb as well. So Joe's got it all. I think Joe also spotted near on the cross towards Bridge. And yeah, based on the way Nasty's pre aiming it, they might just be trying to play off the Nero information. Hello. We're jumping back and forth, not easy play to deal with. And Nero's got attached there for the help. And Nasty was by himself. So again, backing down, you drew attention of two different players over on that street. Now they're making a move towards the middle of the map. So LA Thieves, again, coordinated effort. Everybody's on the same page. Yeah, good news. You got the middle of the map. You have the bomb site. The bad news is you've got Vegas Legion sprawling all around you. This is going to be a very, very difficult situation to win these fights in. Oh dear, Purge hits a big one. Two on the flank. Any more to be had. Nero is there for it. And now it's all down to Krem and Purge. Three on the round and the defuse. Vegas are back. And again, the reason I keep saying all on the same page and decisive is because there's some moments where I'm like, I don't know if that's a good play. Four stack in the middle of the map and opening up every single lane and allowing yourself to get flanked from every direction is a tough situation to deal with. They had no information and I mean, well, that's a bunch of flanks coming through. They're worried about the two players over towards bridge. Well, Purge just goes through uh, double doors and this is the freest two piece he is ever going to get. And that is absolutely going to be the stamp of the round. Nice bounce back moment there from Purge. Still down four to two in round count, but maybe an opportunity for Vegas to feel a little bit better, start making some plays. They got bullied out in map one, so confidence certainly they got to reaffirm it. Yeah, it's going to take more than a couple of rounds of search and destroy. I think after that whooping, we saw on six star over to Purge still. Keeping Spree going for a moment. Kremp though, right into the feed, finds his first. Nasty backing him up. Can Purge get the bomb? That is the next question they've got to deal with. Does get it, attaches that help out. You might be able to get a plant here. No one else to help him up top. Waiting for the reinforcements to show with a minute on the clock. Yeah, they're just playing for the information. Attach actually makes a really nice play to be aggressive through the street, find an extra kill, but that's even up the odds. Now you got Joe to see. He might have just jumped over to be behind enemy lines. Great reaction time. And he gets out with his life. You're grouped up together, but Joe deceives doesn't even need the trade. Welcome back to the roster, young man. And attach. Goodbye. Joe deceives again on point right now on Rio. He's been making fantastic plays, both maps. Outstanding plays there. That, I mean, the fact to hit the stairs, cut that entire attack in half, eliminate the bomb carrier in the form of Purge. This is the moment that you stay alive. You force those players to come upstairs. You've got the coverage. He didn't even need the help, though. He managed to catch Geo unaware. And this one as well. I mean, Joe deceives, doing it all. How many kills is he at now? Your boy's ten. Uh, yeah, double digits in seven rounds so far. So he's certainly trying to pump those numbers up. And again, in stage one, Joe Deceives did have some of the best objective stats in the game for respawns and especially bomb plants alike. But right now, at his main slayer, Joe Deceives still carrying the bomb, has it in tow. But LA Thieves, frankly, why would you mix up the game plan? Get that information, like choose your destination and go hunt down those first bloods. You absolutely have got Vegas in the palm of your hand now. The question is, what do you do with them? Will it be a crushing? Or will you sort of tease out the win here, slowly but surely? Over towards the A-bomb site, we're expelling our lethals and our tacticals. Exchange of gunfire there as Geo discharges his service weapon. Can he keep the members of the LA Thieves at bay? Open bomb site at B. Purge the lone man. And these are just faster. Like three players were over there defending A, and I know Attach started to wrap back, but just a little too late. So LA Thieves playing the map quite well, but maybe more too. Oh, when he hit the door. He does. It doesn't matter. Attaches up close and personal. Joe Deceives finds one. Traded out immediately. Numbers to Vegas. 30 on the clock. I'm defused just yet. But look at the chows. Yeah, Vegas. Going to be able to lock this one up. Ghosty might have the timing, but COD timing is absurd. And too many players, too many bodies. 
Dylan Attach making the play in that round, catching Kremp on that flank. If Attach loses that gunfight or is maybe two seconds too late, that would be LA Thieves calling game. But Attach right there, again, sort of that world tour. He starts out on one side of the map. Gio and Nero calling out, hey, a lot of nades, a lot of attacks coming in over towards this bomb site. Attach is there for the help, but after it goes quiet for a few seconds, wraps back as well. Attach's instincts on point. Still, though, Vegas, desperate. Need three more rounds in a row just to even up the odds in the series. I mean, you see the play that Ghosty's trying to make. I mean, right now, Ghosty's so stunned. He can't believe that round didn't go his way. Here we go, though. Back at it again. Still map point for the LA Thieves. No one's going to lose any points here in COD. That's not the way we do things. Vegas Legion starting to string together some success. Geo, the only man here by the A side of the map. The stun's going to land. He's been the island player for the Vegas Legion. And as long as he's passing information over, the boys are looking good. In towards the B-bomb site, we now go top mid, full of Legion players. Yeah, not confident yet to get that bomb down. Nero, well, making the move now. Trophy as well to protect you, so it'll be successful. It'll be a tried and true, full on 4v4 retake from Thieves. And it's no flanks coming through. They're grouping up together for the one hit. Yeah, waiting for a purge at the ready on the stairs. Ghost, he's got the flanks covered. Damage dealt. Joe Thieves gets it in and out. Traded immediately. 3v3. Nero bites off way more than he can chew. Oil down to Geo. The solo now against three members of the Thieves. Make it two. Can he make it one? No. Ghosty's there. 20 on the clock. That is going to be the map. And that is 2-0 here in the series. Yeah, Ghosty stunned with how well his teammates were performing on that one. That was a clinical effort on Rio, a dominant effort on Six Star. And I love the play call, right? Like, make the moves towards the steps. Someone just hold irons onto the escalators. And those SMG players in the middle of the map, they just feel obligated. Throw shoulder, slide around, get cracked out. But little too cracked and you just get caught LA Thieves those were two fantastic maps they just had these guys are playing with all the energy in the world Joe deceives off of the bench into the main roster with a 12 and 5 performance there on that Rio search and destroy a sensational turn of events here for the Los Angeles Thieves a massive win there Vegas Legion now staring down the barrel of a 3-0 unless they can find something special on our upcoming invasion control Vista and Six Star await us towards the tail end of the series which I'm sure we'd all love to see it's nice to see the new maps get in there go but thus far ooh, 250 40 Nine six three. We are in La La Land right now, and the thieves—they are certainly singing and dancing chants. Ah, not what I thought was going to happen here, brother. I think it's about time we take a very quick commercial break. On the other side of this one, map number three. We'll find out if Vegas can make the comeback, or will we see another blistering 3-0 here in the run-up towards Major Three? This is the CDL. We'll be right back. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Call of Duty League. We're almost ready to get into map number three here, but so far, Chance has been an absolute smoking. The LA Thieves look like an incredibly, incredibly capable team. They've managed to transform their entire game seemingly overnight. Yeah, and shout out to Turtle as well for this stat, like getting 50 point club. It's happened four times in CDL history. This was the first time it has happened since Cold War. It was like 987 days ago. So LA Thieves absolutely setting pace. Already blistering right now, looking fantastic with this new roster. Joe Deceives has been making plays left and right. And I know Dan Ghosty at his uh, usual self. Team killing as well. He'll find a way yeah. that round one in the uh, Rio West and D. Ghosty hates nothing more than his own teammate's life. A little bit of blue on blue. You don't want to see it, but it does happen. Ghosty, one of the players who sadly just gets a little bit more than others. Well, Vegas Legion, time to turn the ship around right now, lads. Your last chance here in the series to stay alive. You burnt through two. And this cat has only got one more to go. Invasion control as well. We find out what happens in this series. And here we go. The record not bad for the Vegas Legion charts, but is it going to be enough? The current form of the Thieves just too strong. Uh, this is going to be interesting as well, just because like the pace that the Thieves have been setting has been lightning fast the first two maps. Invasion Control, it is going to slow it down just by the nature of it. So yes, it will be interesting to see if they can keep it up and deal with the Tatch, who might be the guy leading the front to turn the game around. He was completely dominant against LAG. 25-9 is a bonkers performance. The captain of the squad is going to need it here, but from LA Thieves, this might be a uh, potential A hit, or at least toying with the idea. Ghosty may be just a nuisance. Round one, no trophies. Maybe just straight over to B. Yeah. Oof. Joe Deceives picks up where he left off. A nice first bud. Straight onto the B zone. No love towards the A side of the map, though. That's going to be all Vegas for now. Middle of the map, though. That is a big win from Ghosty, slowing down those players. And now... Like the name implies, a specter across invasion, causing issues wherever he goes. Can he get any more kills out of this life? No, good stuff from Purge. The capture of B though, still continuing. Strong foothold there from the Thieves. Yeah, Gus doesn't live for too long though, so he drags a bit of presence over, but Vegas still have the opportunity to set up and go for the retake if they wanted. Aquatonic, there goes Nasty Purge in the better corner and fries Kremp as well. So not enough time bought in Vegas. Opportunity to potentially set up a dominant round on defense. Purge wins another big gunfight as well. And this is like panic moment right now for Thieves. Got to string something together. You see Kremp maybe leaning towards the Zay zone. They got their work cut out for him. Absolutely sending it across map. ASAP Krem gets into the zone. Oh, what a damage dealt though. Nero should be able to fly in there as he does and clean up. Stop the hard work that the Thieves had to try to get with the big old defensive moves from Vegas. And once again, Chance, you're right. Purge on a four spree. Yeah, they did send everybody back over towards A. So they were playing it extra safe around the A zone. And well, that exchange allows B almost certainly going to be captured. So not looking for the dominant round on defense. They're trying to keep things standard. So they don't try to take that extra mile and well, maybe force out some team kills this time. Not Ghosty. Actually, Krempton's doing it, but he at least buys an extra kill to make up for that uh, unfortunate loss. LA Thieves, minute and 20 on the clock to try to go towards A. But keep in mind, Ghosty is already there. Already there indeed, getting the capture done, trying to now draw the defender's attention and they're making their way across. Trophy system saves the day for now. In you go, Geo. Waiting for the boys. Good read. Not enough of the good gunny though, as Ghosty manages to keep the capture going. He is pinched. He's in trouble. But if he stays here for long enough, he'll get that first segment. Uh, we, we, first segment's done, so yeah, already successful. I was going to say, Ghosty just hasn't... He had one person actually help him in that moment, but his little slide out from the far side when the gunfight towards mid, that is a big one from Ghosty. That is quite literally the type of play that on this map can win the game. Oh, the timing was so unbelievable. I was just about to com comment on Joe Deceive's patience there, but not enough. Less than a minute now to play. Three lives separating our two teams. Ghosty once again trying to help out on the approach towards the new point. Big went out of cramp individually. Oh, Ghosty's in there, but Nero, great shots, the two piece, as he manages to keep the zone safe. Two segments remaining on it and only 40 seconds to capture it. And LA Thieves slowing down the pace now, the slowest we've seen them really play. And they've at least forced Vegas to turtle up just a little bit. But on the information front, Joe Deceives might get the first blood. Attached calling out a player in cafe. Everybody else just walking down the B Street. And 20 seconds left. Thieves, they're finding the extra kills. You got to look for your moment. Attach, though. Yeah, he's going to break it down, play a little too slow, and make it easy for Attach. Nasty has made it to the zone. Can't win the extra gunfight, though. Vegas, they're going to be secure on the round. Yeah, they 
absolutely nails that one shut. Nero on a five spree as well, looking to get himself one more. Very unlikely that he will, but beautiful work there from Vegas Legion. Defensive round goes their way. One on the board, two to go. Well, still though, credit to Dan Ghosty again, getting that extra tick for his team over towards A. I would say technically a successful round there. You don't get the dub, but long term might have the advantage for the defensive round. So small victory, of course, on the flip side for Vegas, Nero being on a five spree. Whatever the opening break is, it should be some sort of design to funnel a kill towards Nero. He's going to be happy to take his time. New round up. Motor mouths on either side, imparting the last moments of wisdom. Big streaks on the other side of the Vegas Legion. LA Thieves, not as much success. Can they get some kills now on the defense? The trophies are in position. They're going to eat up all those lethals as they fly across that cross. Hero streaks set. Seven and two overall. That's going to be a cruise, and that's a big deal. And this might be his time to shine as well. Already the cruise missile's fantastic. Now keep the pressure up. Saw the first player, but was playing for that secondary man. Would have been a hell of a play. Joe to Seeds just fries him in the gunfight to shut that down. Either way, though, Vegas keeping the pressure up. Attached inside a cafe. Purge is just calming everything to attach. Looking down this street. He knows at least two players are going to be nearby. Dash is waiting for the scam, and Joe to Steve just winning the difficult gunfights in this round. He has been on point this series. Absolutely. Two minutes and 15 now after the capture of the B zone. A is all that remains now, or even Stevens, 26 lives either side. As Nero, the man of the moment, keeps his play in the back lines of the Thieves spawn alive and kicking. Can he keep going? No, nasty. Spies him out from cover. Beautiful shots there from Attach, a top spawn. Now over towards the middle we go. Try to buy some space. Nasty slant him down from that mid-tank spot. A right now chance, a very, very solid look out of the Thieves on defense. Can they keep the middle of the map safe? Oh, Ghosty is doing his best effort. Yeah, Ghosty's going to deliver. Picks up a, a very nice two kills, sort of relieves a good chunk of that pressure in Joe to sees, continues destruction. He's been using every single gun available to him in this series. That time, the old Renetti making that guest appearance. Gio's got the information, but maybe an opportunity to take a route or find some air kills. He has spotted out almost every single player, ready for the next gun fight, but Joe to sees again there to shut him down. Either way, that's three in the feed. Go button hit there from Vegas. Trying to run him down and get into this A zone. Oh, have they got enough kills though? There's still a lot of Thieves players blocking their way towards the zone. Nice shots out of Purge. Doesn't let Ghosty get away with it. But you still have got two members either side of the A point to contend with. One of them, Joe Deceives, has not lost too many 1v1s since we started the series off. Less than a minute to go. The Thieves are holding. Yeah, and Joe Deceives doesn't want Purge to be here anymore either. So it moves on in for the kill. Can't get it himself, but the trades are there. So LA Thieves clearing out their base, but well, maybe back to Steph one again. Gio wins an extra gunfight. Nero potentially on the flanks over towards Blue, but Vegas just struggling to keep everybody alive and really get a team coordinated play. Very difficult thing to set up and only 30 seconds to luck, work with, excuse me. And keep in mind, they are down a tick right now. They need to find some progress on A. Nasty backs up. Again, good spacing from the Thieves. They never go down altogether. Ooh, Joe receives in and out. Stays alive. Less than 20 to go. Purge trying to get himself in on towards the zone ASAP. A kill might help, but he has to get through Ghosty. The rest of the squad on the way forward as Purge manages to get another. Can he get towards the zone? Final 10 seconds. I don't think anyone is going to let it go. Kremp's there for it. That's the round. And we're going to be tied up one to one. Both teams holding their defenses down. Man, just nobody home. And this is still, in my opinion, fantastic news from LA Thieves. I know that Nero was able to get that cruise missile, but if you have the tick advantage, I think on this round, the attack, if they apply enough pressure, Nero might just be forced to call it in. So a couple things going right. Dan Ghosty, over 2,200 damage just in these two rounds. So the gun's certainly still hot for LA Thieves. Haven't really skipped a beat. No, not at all. They're doing everything right as far as, you know, the defensive round goes. O was a little bit trickier. Well, Thieves looking so good in the series so far. Let's see how they go for the hit on towards B and see how they sound with a listen in. Nice, I have full pinch still. Only tap blue. Nothing tap blue. One is nest for sure. Okay, I'm you stop nest, stop nest, okay? Want to shot? Uh, he's gone. Oh, no, he's one shot, one shot, one shot. He's up there. He's in one close, one last, one last. Giving a full pinch. One last, one last, one last, one last. 
Red, 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 low nest, low nest, low nest, low nest, red top nest and low blue. Get off the box. Low nest, one shot dead. Low nest, top nest, one shot dead. Top nest and top blue. Tree tank, okay, Kyle. Alright, now. On the tree tank, Kyle. Top nest, red, top nest, red, one shot dead. Top nest, tree tank, top nest, top nest. Really quick, tree tank. Low nest, low nest, low nest, low nest. Red, 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 nice, good shit. Alright, Geo, take a play. We're looking for one. It's attached. Come to your front. I'm just shoulder. Good take, yeah, good take. I got my tank. Yeah, he was tree tank, he was tree tank. Yeah, they're shooting. Double second, double second. Perfect. Alright, we're top Geo, we're top Geo, 1-3 down as well. There's a huge check, by the way, make sure we're playing this. Also Geo, you can be on the, you can be bridge. Or close numbers. He's shooting at me, he's just shot. Stay alive, Geo. Mid-tank and shooting, mid-tank and shooting. Three tank, I'm hitting him. Shot me. Three tank, lying down. Yeah, I saw him. No, 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 one more, one more on the street. Three tank, he's got, I'll see him. He's on the other one, on the other one, one shot. Absolutely on the other one, on the other one. Absolutely on the other one. Yeah, we need to go on the other one. Yeah, we need to start. He's cutting up the cross, one's still shooting on us. I see him. He's close, he's close, he's top out, top out. Top out, top out. Oh, he's on the B point. I'm gonna need it. It's near him. Nero, Nero, Nero. Nice, good shot. Nero's on the B point. Red pillars, I'm dead. Red pillars, he's selling the B thing. On the B tank, attach. Nero, and. You went in the left side. I'm soft, I'm soft, I'm soft. Nero, weak. B control point, B control point. I'm sorry, I'm one on the. Uh, on the B tank, I'm looking at the tank. I need your dark, I need your dark. Give me a second, kill the guy's tank guy. Yo, I'm the control point, Nero, so. Where's he tank? Yeah, I'm on the control point. Nero's still on the control point. We're working, we're working, we're working. I'm looking dark, I'm looking dark. He pinched up on the tank. Two dark, two dark, two dark. Top of it, top of it, two dark. Top of it, two dark, boys. I'll play, I'll play. No, one more. Check it out. 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 Check that, that is a tragedy there for Vegas. So close in both of their defensive rounds to set up for the choke slam sort of performance, but they can't get it done. And well, now you're almost back to square one. They're going to be down at least a tick going into the new round, but LAT is finding the kills as well. And 45 seconds to play with. They're just going to be looking for a little bit extra. Oh, and here we go. A couple of members of the Thieves here in a position to slow this down. Now, nah, good job out of Purge. That kill is huge. Now for the Thieves, all you're doing is waiting for that opportune moment. Waiting for those players from Vegas to make a bit of a mistake. Catch them out. Right now, Purge and Geo, they are running the show. Another for Purge. Three now in the feed. Done. Less than 20 seconds to really get themselves close to this point, and it's not going to happen. With Attach shooting like that, this should be Vegas' round. Yeah, nowhere to go. Someone's going to have to just, I don't know what, sprint through the middle of the map, pop the active camo, find the route through. They're funneling through B Street, but that is not the route to get to time in time. But either way from LAP is for how the round could have gone on the offensive end. It ends up not being too bad at all. Still at least get the B side capture. You force Nero to invest that cruise missile very early on. And I would say for Vegas, they're just so close to setting up like extra dominant rounds on defense. Like they had the moment, Geo does get behind enemy lines. He was making plays to get inside a palace. But then as soon as he dies to Joe Deceives, well, it makes LA Thieves lives just a little bit easier. And I think Vegas have had just a few opportunities to really push the extra mile. But either way, that is a long-term game right now in the short-term Vegas. All they're looking for is that like extra tick. Three ticks, just secure B, get the extra little bit of love on A, and then it comes down to kills where Vegas do have the advantage. Vegas have the advantage, and Vegas starting to heat things up. Confidence resuming. Let's go for a quick listen in and see how confident the boys may sound. Yeah. Yeah. They can't, they can't There's one, one more beat yeah, on. He's on P1 tank. On P1 tank now. Good tank. Come on, guys. I'm, all right, P1 tank and on it. They could hit your dark. Yeah. They could hit your dark. Yeah, guys. I'm looking dark now. Bang it up into spawn, Evan. I will, I will. Let's oh, front, front. Fuck you guys. Front, front, Joe. Where? Uh, very weak at bottom nest, bottom nest. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's on white van, white van now. He's white van, one shot, absolutely done. I got pinched now, he's front info, looking for you. He's gonna go tractor, he's gonna go tractor. Throw some nades at him, he's on trophy play. I'm on point, and Nasty? I got flanked, I got flanked. Nasty, 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 Nasty. Tractor, tractor, tractor. Dark pillar dead. Tractor dead. Stand back, take those two. Stand back, tank. One bullet, I have two. Running one, only one guy on you guys. One shot, stand back, tank. Yeah, I don't know where he went. He's on the front side of it, Geo. Stunning him. There, there, there you go. Top nest, top nest, Yeah, we gotta get B. Coming, DK. Yeah. Top nest jumping on you. Top broken, I take your keys and broken. I see your bottom broken, Chris. Top broken, dead, dead. Nice. I'm looking at your front of you. I'm showing you in front of you. Go see the other side. He's still bridge. I'm leaving. He's dark now. Jumping out. Jumping out. He's dead. Nice. Ever help. Listen, Joe and Dan. Could be dark. Yeah, we just shot that. That's not a thing. I'm going. Dan was in our spawn. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. Top nest. Hey, we're on front of you as well. Right here. Come on, Chess. He might be on the bridge. Yeah, I did. I did. I think he did. I think he was. Come on, top nest. He's on our sandbag tank. Bottom nest, dead. 
One's, I got some right. from bottom blue or, or DVD. One's in DVD. Right, nice. Good kill, bro. One's in DVD. Take your time, DVD and top blue, then. You mid tank on me. Mid tank nasty. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. You still there? You still mid tank? Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. He's dead. He's dead. Nice. Top blue. Dead. Nice. Good job, guys. Missing Joe and one. Joe open. Joe open. Back up. Open. One shot. Dead. One guy on point. One guy on point. Last guy. Last guy. Joe on point. He's got his point. Open. 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 He went our side point. Open, 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 right open, ghosty. open ghosty as well. Yeah, He's anyway. running at you. He's running at you, ghosty. I got one. I got both. Nice. Nice. Hey, I got a shriek. Uh, uh, nice. We might have to back use right, it here, right. I feel like, bro. We got to be on tank. I'm on shot. Yeah, I, I'm I on could shot. shriek first. I could shriek first. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go on the left here. Okay. Here. I'm going to shriek. I'm going to shriek. Yeah, get him for you. Get him for you. We're shrieking. I have my tank. We're on the point. Okay, one on point. One's on the point. Couches. One's on like DVD. One's blue. One's couches. Top blue. Top blue. The guy blue. The guy blue. Nice. The guy blue. You went rugs. You went rugs. The guy couches. Okay, we're gonna be rugs. Other guy was on the point. Yeah, he was on the point. I'm in rug right now. I'm fucking open. I'm on the white car. Nothing in open. I'm in open. One point to back curve. Curve two curve. There's two curve. They're high. One. I got one. Nice. One guy's on the point too. One guy's on the point. Be careful. Let's get point. Let's get point. I'm going on the point. I have a trophy. I have a trophy. Shoot the trophy. Oh fuck. I can cut them all, bro. Yeah, I'm peeling tank. I can have a blue spawn. There's two. I got one. One guy's rocked. One guy's in the spawn. One guy's couch. 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 One guy's dead. Rock. 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 Last guy. I have a flank. I have a flank. He's weak. He's weak. Yeah, I'm going to get him. My god, we nearly just hit by a barrage of F bombs, Chance. Yeah, we got out of it. Oh my god, that would have been horrific to listen to from their point of view. Dan, Daniel back at it again with dominance on the A zone. I will say for Vegas, though, this has been an incredible round. They turn it around, they at least win the tick battle. So close to winning the game. I know Ghosty, that sort of dagger in their back, but maybe still a moment of success overall there from Vegas. No response remaining either. That was an absolutely wild round. Great comms from Vegas as well. Got to tip the cap. The information, everything was there, except for whoever did not pick up the flight. So Dan goes to right now, the lifeline for the squad. Absolutely. Well, damn, Daniel, as you called it. I mean, the man has been absolutely sensational in the map so far. Final round. The chips are down for Vegas. This was Ghosty three piece to secure it. And oh my God, he snuck right on through. They lined up and he cleaned house. What a play. Wow. Final round. Here we go. Oh, Vegas that <laughs> they got to dig deep. Yeah, I missed out on the minimap too. I couldn't actually tell what Purge was looking at it. I think like Geo might have just had like two or three bullets left in the clip or reloading or I don't know. Moments like that, always incredibly awkward. But LATs want to maybe dodge the awkwardness, keep everything nice and standard right towards that B zone. They go. Go back to your old faithful. Play it safe. Do the simple part first. Nothing too flashy. Nice and slow here from Ghosty as well. He's going to see the barrel of attach maybe in a moment. Or all he sees buttocks. No, oh, he might be in trouble. Attach. No, oh my good God. They've done it again. Ghosty with another massive three. That's huge. That's the segment. And oh, gilly, gilly, God damn. It's going to get ugly quick. I mean, look, he's looking good, but it's only a double stack for the moment. So still have to make sure you execute. I think Vegas is very concerned about Ghosty's positioning, though. He's been very patient, timing out the flank. Man's got hands as well and gets out with his life, at least for an extra moment. His team, B zone, that is going to be secure. Over two minutes on the clock to work with to try to go towards this A zone. Oh, another gift from the COD Gods delivered by hand to the thieves can they capitalize on this massive amount of time they've got to work with now geo though says hell no he doesn't believe in that nasty was just a little bit of suppressing fire to keep him at bay let him know what's going on get on the map now or oh, attaches out as well it's getting real tough to deal with these members of vegas when they're moving like this nasty you can see he's left with no option but to be brought down here comes the supply lines from vegas all the way through the middle of the map joe better get into the fight quick and that is a problem vegas looking strong Ah, Vegas, yeah, the teamwork right now on point. And you have LA Thieves that they have just been constantly flooding through the B Street. So you've had Vegas Legion able to just stack up the pressure. But pressure is one thing. When the gunfights is another. That's two in the feed there for LA Thieves. And, well, now you've at least made it to the enemy lines. 
And Ghosty, he is caught in hell. He is going to get taken down. A crimp, the only one that is going to be behind. Maybe he has an opportunity to get some intel from Nasty to make the play, but there goes Nasty. And last domino standing in the back line is Cramp. And the arrows right now for Vegas are turning. Nero heads up in this moment. They know they're looking for one. They've counted well. They know he's there. And if he doesn't get a kill with his teammates in position to capitalize, it's going to be for nothing. A little bit of time still go here. Cramp wins it. His teammates don't, though. Geo once again thwarting the plan of the thieves. Kremp holding it together. It's his fingernails right now doing everything they can to stay dug in at the back line here. I mean, he's doing what he can. He's at least blocking these spawns. So he's creating the opportunity. And Ghosty again is going to be able to make it towards this A zone. Doesn't have help on the cross, though. Ghosty makes it the zone. Everybody dies immediately after. Him and Kremp have to go large, and they can't get it done. Kremp maybe just desperate for some help. He did. Forces a big two kills and, well, trying to stay alive for number three. But as he falls, you have 18 seconds. You got to run down a street. Good luck with this one. He got the help. It was a form of a team kill. Nasty's knocking on the door. Purge about to blast through laundry. There's attach. Big win through the middle. Trade it out. Ghosty can't get anything. It's five seconds to get on this one. We're going to see a map for Vegas. Hold it together. It is over. The Vegas Legion finally get themselves on the board there with the control win confidence slowly starting to return i mean i don't know that just took in an extra that's a new york minute right there or maybe new york minutes are fast that was a very long game of invasion control is what i'm trying to say they had to fight tooth and nail from it i will say vegas on defense pretty on point consistently the opportunities to like get a little bit extra but LA Thieves may be able to pierce through a few of those setups. But yeah, this is almost like the sort of stat padding moment right there in Invasion Control where you can just run the damage numbers up like crazy. Nero especially, maybe the, uh, the old Titan of the Lobby, 6,800 damage. Two separate cruise missiles earned, but really just a nice job by Vegas. I mean, we got to hear it in the listen in their teamwork and comms. Certainly flowing, so that was not the issue with map number one and map number two, able to execute there on Invasion. I'd be happy just to see an older map. The hit replays here. A lot of nice highlights. We saw some great kills and long plays, man. I mean, Invasion is one of those control maps that you really do have to be quite organized on. It, it takes it two to three down at a single time. And neither team was conceding that. They were both staggering those kills very, very well. They were staying alive defensively. It was good work out of them. And attach again, huge plays. Ghosty's three piece here to stay alive in that round. Force that fifth. Little moments of magic like that is what makes our pros so special. And as soon as you give them the opportunity to do so, they will get it. Great teamwork though either side and ultimately a very spicy game of control. We say goodbye to it though. And now we say hi to ho to another game of uh, what Vista Hardpoint. This is going to be a fun one indeed. Again, neither team can be that well prepared for it, Chance. Anyone's game at this point. It, yeah, it's like an adjustment period, too, because obviously these guys have been scrimming Vista, Vista for however many weeks now. So they have the like repetitions and experience, but it is a very common thread at the professional level of play that the game slows down. L.A. Thieves might not be uh, sort of biting on that narrative, though, because like maps one and two, they were absolutely setting pace. So maybe they be able to carry that sort of young team energy in the map four as well. And treat it more like the match that they have some experience with but i know vegas it is just a scary sight to see 250 to 49 i mean you just want a strong opening break you want the vibes flowing you want nero to keep that gun hot as well they gotta make sure they don't let la thieves take them to task again because they might be what facing a blitzkrieg yeah, and again, on a map like Vista, it's a sub-heavy map, so you're going to want players like Nero to be absolutely rolling. They want to see that confidence high, and you're going to see them picking up massive, massive amounts of work in the kill feed. That being said, it's exactly the sort of map you want to see for the LA Thieves where they're playing right now. If they are going to continue to keep a run going like this, yeah, it's throw caution to the wind. It's absolutely send it, and just make sure that everyone is on the same page. Make sure the comms are good, and make sure you're picking up those trades. Vegas Legion, though. A calm moment of contemplation now, Chance. We'll take a look at their stats as well going into this hard point. But I mean, look, this is this is the whole sort of what season so far. This is the hard points. It is going to be a tough one. And of course, what we're highlighting here is that the current maps that they have, the nine and eight record overall, the two maps that end up no longer, well, they were pretty fantastic on. So if you're losing maps that you were once pretty successful on overall, got to make sure you grind out the new ones. 
six star i think for vegas is just going to be a question mark because they look great on it either yesterday or the day before but 250 to 49 that is a tough pill to swallow so that is sort of a interesting moment for the new map of six star now the new map of vista getting in vista 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 here? Vista. vista i love the vista it sounds quite fancy when you say it like that mate i enjoy it I feel like my North Carolina is showing just a little bit. Uh, public <laughs> education. Sometimes it costs you. It really does. Vista. Coming up now. Vista? It's Joe Deceives. It's Vista. Of, you, Vista. I don't know. Vista. Vista, yeah. It's it's something you would, you know, you stand on top of Vista and you'd look out across it and it's, it's beautiful. And this, you see the location of this map atop of Vista. You can see a lovely bit of a bit of a, a descend into a valley like on that left hand side you know what i'm saying we'll, we'll talk about this later but in the meantime we got our joe deceives absolutely smacking his damn son did he hit the redeem button after being benched return to the main roster and now looking fantastic here we go though straight into the hard point map number four match point ellie thieves I gotta say, Jesus Christ Pose, great song. Fantastic song by Soundgarden. Or a T-Pose if you're a gamer. You can go either direction, but the direction right now for Vegas Legion, straight towards P1. Nice opening break, great nades as well. And, well, not quite the gunny there on Ghosty, LA Thieves. They do, in fact, strike right back, but the setup after the fact for, yeah, Geo waiting in the wings. Gonna be able to collect that time after getting that final kill. Okay, it's funny seeing this map from the, the Codcast of POV, and those of you who've been playing ranked recently know it is a very spicy affair. Some machine gun players thoroughly enjoying themselves, a couple of ARs, you know, having their time. But right now, it's just insanity. Non-stop plays flooding towards those hard points. Everyone there from the Thieves, top left-hand side of the minimap, is not a terrible spot to be in, but they've got a lot of work to cross over and get towards that bottom courtyard for the second hard point. These guys are just getting funneled into death, actually. I was going to say, those are like technically the spawns you want in a sense, but that did not look like a fun situation. You are literally fighting uphill or upstair battles just to make it towards new. And now attached, the vet at his finest, posted up in a corner playing for the crews. Knows what to pre-aim. Call of Duty timing, maybe not at its finest. Everybody getting the kills but him. But do you care about the kills if you're up 50 points already? Vegas, this is the six star flip effect. The flip effect indeed. I mean, the tables have turned and the turntables now, it is an absolute re 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 terrible time. Terrible, terrible time for the Thieves. Good God, can't buy a kill. Nero on the flank, can he get the third as well? That would have been disgusting. Purge puts the Beretta right into his opponent there as the kills keep going. The Thieves have fallen to pieces already. Oh my God, yeah, everybody is twisted as well. This is just an absurd pace being set by both of these teams right now. Vegas just truly a step ahead. Oh They're God. still going to have the left side spawns, but maybe they don't need him because Nero is 12 in two. His brand new Tuscan. It's the, it, this is it. It's the return to form the tyrant of Tuscan. He's now the Viscount of Vista. <laughs> it sounds really funny when you say that. Kills finally go the way of Kremlo. Oh, gets three. Good stuff, son. It's a four spree for the Thieves, but no hard point. Gets himself number five as the submachine guns of both teams are white hot right now. Can you get streaks, Krem? It would be fun. The other side has got one as well. That's only fair. I mean, as long as he gets the hill time, I think they're going to be happy right now. I'm learning new words. Don't know what a Viscount is, but while we're all learning right now, you just have thieves learning what it's like to be on the receiving end of a hard point beatdown. Final 15 seconds. Vegas is going to fight for him, and maybe good news, they should be able to get it. Maybe not. Well, Vegas Riku just trying to hunt down Joe Deceives. And after he falls, we turn our attention to that new time. Nasty. He has tucked himself in this back building. And his teammates winning some big gunfights as well. So Geo now in isolation on the backside. Does win a big gunfight. Trying to keep those spawns maintained. But this could be a good deal of time collected for the Thieves. They got to set up at the new time. New time. Yeah, Geo, that tree's not going to help too much. Wonderful angles found there by the Thieves. Nero manages to infiltrate the back room. Anyone home? Yeah, lots of Thieves plays. They clean house, they're back into the point straight away, purge through the front. Currently trying to hit this alone, trying to pull some of the attention of the Thieves players while his boys get going. Is he going to be able to get much out of this? No, Ghosty reads him like a book, puts him to bed. Time ticking away for the Thieves now as we have managed to swing to the other side of this mad map. 20 seconds left on the point. Yeah, and a lot of credit there to Nasty and Ghosty after the fact. Just getting that guy in the back building, it is all on him. Really just to stay alive and make sure you're getting that sort of like, you know, output to tell your teammates where to look. So 
Very well orchestrated effort. You've slowed down the damage Nero is doing as well from 12 and 2 to 15 and 7. So still shooting, but it is not the lightning pace that he originally had. Geo, though, picks up two towards the middle of the map, and that is going to make that push very slow for Thieves. They got a long way to go before they can get to the new time. Yeah, new time. That little bridge, whether you're atop it or below it, you're in that hard point. Nero, once again, pounding down on the Thieves members. His attach. Whoa, just gone. I don't know what to call that. That was a big one, but 30 odd seconds remaining on the point, and the Vegas Legion looking happy to soak most of it up. Nero continuing oh, to be a devastating, devastating player for Vegas here on Vista. Purge from time. Any more for it here as Ghosty tries to stop it, at the very least, the contest. You should be able to get him off. But right now, Purge proving to be quite the challenge, but that's going to be the hard points done. My good God, what a Vista this has been so far. We now go back to P1. Yeah, and Thieves just had to like fight tooth and nail to break that time just to get an extra 20 seconds. So pretty strong hold there by Vegas overall. And Nero, this is his third cruise missile he has got in the past two maps. And not only the comms in the feed, but the damage done from the missile as well. That is a clean floor down and you force the spawn outs as well. This is just victory time. This is where you get to soak it up and play for those extra kills. Great time being collected on P1. I mean, he's 20 and 10 right now. Attach, soak in, finding damage all over the place, waiting for the boys to show up. He was doing all of that alone. So good stuff out of Attach, buying that space. 30 seconds to go here on P1. We'll go back down towards the courtyard. Ghosty's already in position for that one. Geo, nice shots. Krem immediately pushes him out, takes care of business. I gotta say, honestly, the fact that you and Vegas getting four down and they got retaken that quickly, that is in fact a missed moment, but that missed moment is just the opportunity to, phase, to stay alive in the game. Joe Deceives is dealing with something might have literally just lagged out in that moment but dead either way Krent picking up a two piece as we rotate towards new but as you can see the setup they'll be here first have to fight pushed out either side and joe to sees controller still works clearly so whatever happened well it's a new time it's a new life a new controller and a new moment vegas can't get the time middle of the map these are just controlling they're feeling good. Just attached from top burger, flipping patties and flipping faces wide open there with his MCW. Nero dives into the point, dives into Ghosty. Kills now going the way of the thieves. They're starting to pick up that pace. They've oscillated from getting absolutely slaughtered to now being the slaughterers. Can Joe find any more from here? 20 seconds ago, or 30 seconds, excuse me, on this hard point. Looking towards top left-hand side again. Not too many of the boys in this lobby might be 21, but we will be serving up drinks at that little bar in a brief few moments after a Vegas break. Yeah, Attach is being a really good nuisance. He actually had the timing pretty well for Thieves to get a little bit too comfortable and jump a little bit too far. And even for the contest time, it looks like Thieves want to get those final 10 seconds, and they are going to get it. But the rotation over there, Vegas free and clear. You've got Attach posted yeah. up in the back, and he responds next to him. Attach doesn't last a long time. Joe Deceives gone quite hot, but Vegas still holding that back line. Thieves might just have to bully their way through the front. Oh, yeah. Joe Deceives still finding those kills. 160 to 142. Still a very close game from downstairs they're going to infiltrate towards the point not going to happen purge on the defense nice work go see from up top great work the thieves spring to life that's the break can they contest now two members of vegas up close and personal here comes the cqb purge on the reinforcement run from downstairs still the thieves are soaking it up nice work brilliant time and good shots from ghosty that could be a lead change in a moment as the thieves are back in it on vista yeah, talk about the moment to get the break as well. And well, maybe the most awkward rotation we have in any of the hard point maps. You just want to keep these spawns two hills in a row. We talked about the importance of the back building. Well, Kremp's there. He can use it if he wants to. Right now, setting up a crossfire with Joe Deceives. And for Vegas, this is just a tough moment. They want to use the cruise missile, but there's a few buildings nearby. That's a visitor if I've ever seen one. Cruise hits, no good. Forces the players on the inside. There's the contest. Purge. Oh, taken care of. Nice shots out of Krem. From upstairs, it's Chiro from the hip. The point shooting. Lead still firmly in the hands of the Thieves now. Nasty can't get in towards the fight. Can't get towards the hard point. The ring around a Rosie Napa Geo. Will it pay off? Oh, he's stunned up. I don't think it will. Oh, no. There is Nero from behind. Cuts out the reinforcements. Cut the legs out of the play from the Thieves. And they're done. That's the flip. And a big 30 seconds. 
Yeah, these two teams are just getting after it, going blow for blow on breaks, on holds, on trades. Still, though, fighting for the extra bit of time. Attach is by himself. He's got two players to deal with. There's number one, but number six in there, Kremp for the trades. And make no mistake, that's a good time to get with the game this close, so much so that Purge wants to fight for it. Purge is going to get it over towards New. You got trades on this side of the map as well. It is a 10-point game. Again, two teams getting after it for the moment. Thieves going to have the time first, but Vegas, I mean, they're quick. They're swarming in for the trade. Should be quick to at least try to fight for it. The kill feed gets lit up. It's trades back and forth. Who is the last Hermano standing? It's going to be Geo doing everything he can just to collect that time. Ay, Dios mio, Geo is still alive. That's going to be Kremp now on the approach. Purge from upstairs, keeping the boys safe. Hard point in the hands of Vegas. Lead change. Back at it again. We go. Nasty trying to hit the flank. Red dealt with. Geo again. Nero sitting there at 34 and 22. Geo doing what he can on the spree. Conjoda Steve's cut them down from behind. Here comes the pinch. There's Joe. Dealt with from up top as Nero. It is back and forth. My God, the observers. Paradox's hands are got to be burning after this. I mean, everybody's cracked out right now. The weight, like this speed that this game is being played at currently reminds me of Bokash, but maybe the slowest moment of the game. You have Nero taking the longest route of all time, trying to set up for the pinch and maybe for the spawns as P1 is going to pop. But but he take that route. A, he gets cut down. B, his teammates lose all the gunfights. And maybe good death there from Joe to Sieves just to read where the spawners are going to be coming from. But unfortunately, it's going to be a pinch and well, spawns, everything, chaos, so difficult to deal with. With LA Thieves need to bounce back again. Three down. Here comes another lead change. Thieves trying to bounce back. Big one out of Nero. Middle of the map is going to be getting real ugly in a moment. There we go. The final 30. You can win it here on P1. You have got to get in, Thieves. Joe to Thieves punches a hole through the middle of the map. Purge suppressing fire. Keeps him at bay. But he's still fighting nades from Nasty. Thieves are in. Thieves have the point. Geo down. All right, this is chaos, but maybe good news for Vegas. At least Thieves can't win it here, but the bad news, that rotation. I think Thieves might be able to get there first as well. Joe Seeves popped in the big two at all time. Joe Seeves going crazy at the old hill, picking up three. Ghosty finds that fourth man. The setup, the rotation is in. Thieves advantage to win this game. Here we go, We're trying to win the game. Or can Vegas force the game five? Ghosty in the three spree, soaking time. Stay down, this is it. Can Purge get him off the contest? It's in. Vegas with a late break, Nasty from Spawn, it is non-stop. Here come the trophies as Nasty trying to stay alive, 10 for the win, Vegas. You're funneling through the skinny alley and you are funneling into death. Nero might have just called game. He wants to see the game five. Final hit, can't get it done. In Vegas, through desperation, through effort, through exasperation, managed to get here. The reverse sweep is potentially on the cards. Oh my God, what a map. Yeah, I'm after this, it's a cold shower and a lie down. Vista's the new Bocage. Vista. Hey, hey listen. Something. I remember Bocage. Nero was one of those players that was breaking kill records on it. I want to see his stats because I think they might have been out of control. His damage numbers might have been absurd. And there you go, 6,700 damage there from Nero. He certainly led the lobby. He might not have broken a record, but 41 kills. Well, he's certainly knocking on the devil's door. I think we might have found Nero's new home. Man, Nero loving himself there. The Viscount of Vista, 4128, pushing on 7K damage there. Wow, what a banging hard point of Vista that was. 11 minutes and 41 seconds, it flew by. A matter of seconds to decide who walked away with a win there. But now we go to a game five. We go all the way back to six star where everything began. And oh my God, what a blowout that was. How different the series looks now. As the sort of helix, the DNA of this series there. You can really see the makeup. Was it mom or dad whose genes were in the finals there? It was a few seconds to decide it. My God, what a freaking series we've got here, brother. Yeah, and Miles, I'm glad you, glad you brought up family in this moment because obviously, word to Vin Diesel, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or by a mile. They're one for one on the hard point games right now. Enough for the game five. Maybe Dom Toretto. Do we call him Vin? Do we call him Dom? I don't care. We got the last 30 seconds. 
Good luck keeping up with this. Yeah, really. So the spawns are obviously very close for both teams, as you can see. So the reinforcement lines are easy to get in this one. Nasty being the guy who's furthest away from this one. But Geo again, Mr. Do It All. Mr. Pick up a two-piece when you absolutely have to. Mr. Watch the flank. Nero, though, this is it. He is not a scalpel. He is not a precision instrument. He is a hammer. He is a freaking atom bomb, man, because he turns those boys into dust. And that's also a moment of panic there, I think, for the side of LAP is obviously it's like 12 seconds you get to try to make this break, but they try to flood everybody in through the skinny alley. That's an easy three piece from Nero in that moment, even with the chaos and the barrage of tax and nades landing on top of them. So nobody takes a route. You get beat in a moment like that and all of the momentum LA Thieves had in the first two maps completely vanquished. We go back towards six star, brand new look, brand new strats, and an opportunity for either of these teams to show off the goods. We just get to find out who handles the new maps better, who did their homework best. Who did their homework? Who watched Mars' stream last night? Because I went absolutely huge on the six star SD. Folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to see what happens in this exciting game five between two of our teams who are both red hot right now. LA Thieves take on Parrot of Vegas Legion. Oh my. Go to a break. Find. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
gentlemen, it's time to get a game number five. We're almost ready. What a series this has been, huh? What a fun one, right? I mean, look, start to finish. No one thought the Thieves were going to come out and absolutely devastate them on that six-star hard point. No one thought that the search draw was going to be absolute blowout there on Rio. And now we go to game five and we look at both these teams' metrics, which is how you pronounce metrics. I don't see too much difference between them. And the way both squads are playing charts, we're going to be singing some sweet, sweet music here on Six Star. And whoever loses is going to be hitting the bar immediately because it will be devastating for either team. If you in Vegas, like, do all that work to make the comeback, because, like, they got blown out maps one and map two. They had to fight tooth and nail in maps three and map four just to get here. To lose after all that effort, devastating. And, of course, for the LA Thieves, the way they choke slam in maps one and two, if you get reverse swept, well... That is also going to be a uh, tough pill to swallow, but maybe the water will help. Two players taking a dip, working the outer lane, and maybe just trying to hunt this first blood. I think Nasty's reading the pressure, though. So Purge is going to pump the brakes, and Nero gets the bomb down. There's a couple cheeky plant spots you can go with on this map. You can see that bomb from many locations. Yeah, you can. And Nasty can nearly see attached from this location. Nice nade have Joe deceives. Gets it. Oh, yeah, Nasty knows what's up. Little bit further forward, mate. You, yeah, l just so close. He must have seen a red dot or a diamond. 25 of the clock, they've got to get things going. Good work there, and it all comes down to Purge. But they've got no idea where he is. But Nasty does. A little bit of time to get the defuse. Good stuff there from the Thieves, the opening round. A bit of a bang out. And I've just realized three bars on this uh, map chance. One in the middle, one by the pool, and of course, one at the top. Maybe that's how a hotel gets there. Six star. Normally, I think five might be the most, so they're going the extra mile with the extra alcohol. Either way, uh, shout out to the Observer as well. Very cracked out. I think the uh, the Vista got everybody nice and warmed up to sort of turn <laughs> off the Codcaster to show Nasty's point of view. Miles, I think you're correct. Haven't seen that spot from that perspective myself, but I'm assuming couldn't actually see Attach. Definitely saw that red dot floating above his head. So, yeah. LA Thieves taking advantage of the opportunity. And the rare B hit off the rip doesn't work out at all. So LA Thieves were like, that didn't go well for you guys. Let's try it ourselves. Anything you can do, we can do better. Nades up. Yo gets away with it. Big stun though. That was Tatch. Sent that one from the bar. Purge on the flank. One. Done. Nasty. Nice work. Nero immediately hits back. The flank again. Wide open. A lot of trouble here. As Geo gets his. Kremp now 1v. Done. Peace. Vegas on the board. Uh yeah, that's wonderful work, too. That is very quick flanks coming through. Purge, always happy to make that impact going on flanks. Doesn't waste any time. And then had the uh, the Viscount there for the backup as well. Nice. Any moment for Thieves where you're forced to sort of go for the hop up, never going to be a good time. And I just like it from Thieves. It's respective. Like, okay, B hits aren't as common. They tried it, failed, and Thieves were like, we'll give it a shot as well. Doesn't work out. I think it might be uh, A from this point on. Yeah, at least on the uh, at least on the brakes, you know, just the brakes. We'll see. I'm in hand. I'm I'm you, so oh, no, no, no. We got a little bit of love for it. The thieves going towards a three through the middle. Forget the Anaheim Hilton. That's the bar I want to go to after an event. Can you imagine the team change drama there? There's not a lot of places to hide. You'd see it all. Here we go. Bomb going down towards B once again. You fanned out on the retake here from the LA Thieves. The two one one. Let's have some fun. Yeah, attached, by the way, different palm tree he's working with. He has picked opposite ends of the pool and at least gets the trade. And now he's going to be taking a swim. Attached is going to be invisible, but the bad news is he is the last swimmer swimming. <laughs> and they have to know that he's going to be nearby. You can't hold your breath for that long. Able to get one, trying to pull that disappearing act. He's got to be dead now, right? Wait, he's out of the water, into the play. Ghosty there for it. I don't hate it from Attach. He's there to, you know, just keep things very difficult indeed. And that's the round. Thieves take the lead by one. And, uh, you know, for those who haven't had experienced this map for themselves just yet, or that water section in Codcaster, obviously players are glowing when they're swimming in the water. It can be genuinely very difficult to spot players out. There's times where they are nearly invisible. So Attach wanted to pull the disappearing act, nearly made one hell of a play. But I would say for Vegas, Again, stop going. It's just, you know, late rounds. Got to be early rounds. Seems tough. When we're learning. Yeah, there we go, thieves. Maybe, <laughs> sort <laughs> of. Two. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll find out. Two, two. No. Uh, oh, nope, I lied. Okay, ooh, all right. No, they double back. There we go. We're going back to B, boys. Graham's going to smoke mid. There we go. No smoking in the bar. He's technically outside. He won't be facing a fine, but he's going to send it right on through. Oh, 
Oh, he threads the needle. Nice time. He gets himself at least one. Now Vegas has got to turn around and hope for the best. And Krem knows there's one way to go through a smoke, and that is forward. Geo tries to make a play, ends up getting caught, and well, maybe Thieves found their stride, their way to get a successful B plant and round off to go for the plant after they have that massive man advantage. Much easier to keep these players contained now. Attached, they know he's up top. Purge, the only quiet man, but too many corners to check. Can't read that. Krem sealing the deal in the round. He was going to be the strong silent type for a moment. That's it. Send it. Woo -hoo -hoo. Joe receives an awkward engagement to finish the round, but a good one nonetheless. Thieves find themselves up at 3 1. And honestly, picking themselves up where they left off on the, uh, the old Rio. Hyper aggression. Everything is decisive. They have a game plan. They are sticking to it. Everybody after the bomb plank goes down, pick a corner, any corner. They know where to look. Their homework has been done. I'm not trying to jinx them, but maybe their coaching staff, JCAT, might shed a tear. I reckon they told Jake that the dog ate their homework and they were just playing ranked. Three to one. Virgil with that bomb. Looks like we actually are going towards A, but so are the thieves. It's going to be a head by the trophies are down. You've thrown everything except bad vibes their way. Now it's time. Get that shade over there as well, boys. Pump the brakes on. Oh, it looks like we might be hitting towards B. Vegas have seen enough and they're gone. Yeah, well, still plenty of time to work with in the round. And for the moment, Vegas are going to be quicker on that rotation. But two players sitting nearby. So Geo and Attach might still be making enough noise to keep the defensive pressure on this side of the map. Or maybe Vegas were just hoping for an extra pick. The bomb is actually working its way back towards A. And number five is staying here. So you have the Thieves. They have not fallen for this rotation bait at all. Oh, but are they going to win the gunfight? Set the question. Smokes go down. Nero right through. Attach gets the other side of Vegas. I've just put Thieves across their knee, and there is a gigantic red handprint across that ass. Wow, Vegas, they look fantastic making handprints over by that A site. Very impressive round. Played with the idea of going for the rotation, but they're just waiting to catch a player. As soon as they realize no quick flanks coming through, right back to square one, bully him out, and they just found the play and the route. Great coordination. Nero and Attach timing it together to go for those slide chows out. So at least one offensive for Vegas round on board. Yeah, good job. Let's see how quickly these rounds can close out. So many angles. Looking at that middle map, mini map, you're like, well, there's what, four ways, maybe five into every single room on the map. The guessing game begins as the beats over here by the bar continue to bounce. Can we get ourselves a first blood? Yeah, Kremp, nice job there with a the Semtech. Bounces it off Attach's face. The bomb doesn't drop, though. The beat may. A minute to go, and we're looking towards Bay. And you really just see how much the Thieves seem to prefer this B site, even after the first blood dealt. They're taking their time. They're worried about sort of those instant flanks that were coming through. Purge and Nero working together once again. They want to find the first blood and make sure they get the trades as well. They were setting up for it, but that gets completely sniffed out. Bomb down, 4v3. And the Thieves had information on two players. Through the smoke once again. Nero wins it. That's big. 35 at the clock. Nero. Man, he is something. 30 seconds to go. Purge pumps the brakes. Nero backs him up. Nasty. What a sweet nade that was. Purge is still hurt. I don't think they're going to be able to identify from the hit markers. He's on top of it. Purge. He's moving. He's got to get done quickly, though. He's just walked in between the pair of them. Unfortunate timing. And the thieves, once again, a blessed round to them. Nice work. Four to two. Yeah, and funny how it works out as well. That's just like the, the maids and tax being on point. You get the first blood with the Semtex. I think that was a lot of players using it down that middle lane that finds attached. And then Nasty might have been the only player to save a nade at all. Lands a peach. Gets the extra kill. Shuts down that clutch potential because Nero and Purge were in the middle of making the play. But not enough there. Another successful B plant coming out for the Thieves. And again, Taking their time to make that happen. 4-2 lead in Vegas. They didn't like the success they had over towards that A site. Going to be spreading the map and seeing what sort of information they can get. Oh, boy. Krem puts the tash down. At first blood is over. Not going to be a whole lot of rebuttal there from Vegas Legion. They're going to have to slow things down. But looking towards the A-bomb site now, it's going to be on Joe Deceives. Eyes on the cross. 
Charles back forth he goes will he see anything here they have to cross over oh he saw he saw one he didn't see the bomb carrier though and there's the plan this is going to be a very interesting round indeed trades though that's the duel right there if they were doing plays like that on rio they maintain it once again always looking for those extra kills and well now nero and geo forced to make the play they're double pushing out and i assume both gonna wrap this and if they're quick enough, might be able to catch a few players. LA Thieves right now hunting for Ghost. Nasty, though. Might have just broken it down. Has the information on the pair. There you go. Pistol. Can't go away with his life. Nero has got to do something wild. And let's face it, the kind of guy that can do it, the smoke, the nade. Checks the sight. Nero. I don't think he realizes they're on the bomb. He's still got an opportunity to die for it. Can he get the player off? No, he can't. Joda sees with the body block. Ghosty there puts himself into the sweetest little corner. That is it. It's match point. And the LA Thieves are looking to get it done now. Yeah, and Kremp and Joda Sieves as that like SMG duo. These guys have just making plays constantly in search and destroy. And Vegas have just been isolating themselves. Like we saw it so many times on Rio or whether it be Geo by the double doors or a player just by their lonesome. If they win the first gunfight, you're going to get traded out. If you don't win the first gunfight, well, now you're just down a man and attach again, getting hunted down by two players. There's only so much you can do. So the LA Thieves wrecking crew continued their destruction. 5-2 lead. And I mean, they've had plenty of success over towards B outside of one round. Why not go back? Yeah, go for it. I'm going to change hands very quickly. Nero's got a massive moment ahead of him. He's the man on the stairwell watching the cross. Nice work out of Geo. Joda Steve's going to be able to cross over towards this side of the bomb site entirely safely and undetected. Two members now of Vegas on the stairwell. Oh, he's been spotted out. Joe, big moment here, mate. What do you do? Uh, you wait. You wait for Nasty to try to make the play. He's going to be the island guy, maybe making noise on the other side of the map, trying to catch a player. Nero doing the dance, though. So Vegas have the intel. You see Attach and Nero repositioning. And well, that means if Nasty can't make a, an easy, cheeky play, forced to make it in a different direction. Ghosty might have found the moment, though. Geo gets caught because of the pressure on the flank. And well, we do have a 3v3. Oh, make it a wow. 3v2. Vegas are collapsing in this round. LA Thieves back together, similar to what we saw in Rio, grouping up together like a unit. These guys have been looking so clean in search. Yeah, now it comes down to the trade war. At least one member of Vegas has got to get two kills for this to even be vaguely viable. Attaching Nero. Series is on the line. How will you approach this? Joe Deceives playing the lobby. There's the smoke from Nero. Nades are in, sends it. Checks nothing, gets gunned. Attach can only find one. Series in the bag. The LA Thieves. They start the series with a bang on six star and they close it in exactly the same way. Dominance in one and five. The rest of them are pretty spicy, let's say it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that was a, a fantastic series. Spicy moments, I think, basically throughout the entire series. Either like the spiciness of an absolute beatdown or the two nail biter masks, but J Cap and Shane might just be crying tears of joy right now because that was one of the, even for the maps that they lost, one of the better performances, if not the best performance we've had from the Thieves all year long. Again, just the coordination and like decisiveness they were bringing to the table in S and D, completely clean. A dominant look like that on six star is gonna feel very good long term, and I mean just the capitalization on the new maps. LA Thieves making their uh, statement early, potentially in stage three. Only 10 points still towards the bottom of the league, but they did look good. Oh, they look great. That 250 to 49, especially. Wow. It feels like a lifetime ago we saw that first map, but what a brilliant series that was. A lot of fun, folks. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, for the Legion fans, maybe not as much, but of course, the LA Thieves fans, definitely nice to see some success on the board finally after what has been quite a turbulent season so far. That's it for me and Chance. We've got one more banging series to close out the day, and Puckett has just decided not to be there. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Listen, Puckett had to catch a flight, some important going on, but you got me and Allie, the duos Bang. here, and we're going to talk about this series because that was an absolute banger. What you've been calling for all season long was to have Joe DeCives back in the team as soon as he got put back down, challengers, comes with that confidence and that swagger, and he was going off in the respawn. Talk about confidence. Confidence, but that map won a 50 point club. I don't even know if we've seen that yet this year. And it's against not just like a bottom tier team, right? It's against the Vegas Legion, where mm -hmm. Hardpoint's been their bread and butter throughout the entirety of this season. So for LA Thieves, they could have ended this in a 305.
fashion. I'm honestly happy it went to a game five because again, Vegas Legion are kind of the gatekeepers of top four. It would have been a very weird situation for the rest of the league if they were to fall extremely short versus LA Thieves. They still get handed the loss, but at least they pushed it to a game number five. Yeah, and you know, for LA Thieves in this series, this is unknown territory. You know, we had three map mode combinations in here that they have not played yet. And then even about the Rio search and destroy, they were 0-0 on that as well. So completely new map pool and they come in here and they do damage on those new maps. Six star was absolutely massive for them. We saw huge plays from Joe to Steve's on this map. I mean, he was just playing extremely aggressive. And then in the search and destroy, you're a chance talking about it. I feel like today, especially on the new ones, teams are just pushing stuff out together. So aggressive, almost yeah. AWS gameplay. And that's going to work for LA Thieves in their SMEs. Absolutely, especially with players like Joe and Kremp on it. And even though Kremp had fallen short a little bit in the map number three, I was very impressed to see both him and Joe kind of bounce back during that Vista. They weren't able to make the complete comeback and win the map. But I think just for confidence sake to push that map number five, it was very important that they had a turnaround. Yeah, now it's time, Allie, to get into the scuff play of the game. We all know it's going to be something <laughs> yeah. from Joey D or that first map where it was a 50-point club. We only yeah. had four 50-point clubs in the history of the CDL, and now we're about to see one once That's again. That's crazy. Only four? That only makes sense as the scuff play of the game because, I mean, Joe came out swinging. We were talking about the fact that he needed to have this consistency of confidence because he goes down to challengers, and he's world-starring everybody. But we see him kind of second-guess himself in the league. Well, that is not what we saw during this map number one. He only goes to 22 and 11, but that's because the map was so short. The end game time, I wouldn't be shocked if it was over, not even over five minutes because of how quickly LED's got this done. Yeah, you know, when we were talking about the top six teams at the last major, we were like, okay, it's Vegas and LAT. They round out the top six. Yeah. And then you said headed into this one, these guys are like the gatekeepers when you talk about Vegas Legion. Is it safe to say Thieves are confirmed top six team at this point? Ooh, I'd say maybe. I don't want to jump on it too early just because there is a situation. Teams make a roster change. They have a little bit of a honeymoon phase where everything seems to go their way. And then there's a slow decline. So for LA Thieves, I think this is incredible moving forward to start their qualifiers like this. But I'm not sold on them just yet. Who would you put above them then? What I put above LA Thieves right spot. now? You are putting me on the spot. I, mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe Miami? Maybe? All right, fair enough. All right, but we got the Monster Energy Winner Spotlight with Joe Deceives. I want to talk to you, man, because, you know, you're in the league. You guys can't win a hard point. And then you get dropped back down to Challengers. You're absolutely frying. That confidence is back. Uh, what did you learn in Challengers that you want to apply to your gameplay now? Um, what I learned a lot was, like, kind of playing with more confidence and not like by the book in a sense like i feel like now i play a lot more like on the fly and just like adapt i have mm -hmm. better adaptability in a sense yeah for sure i'm sorry that you had to hear me say that maybe miami is over top of you guys yeah, right yeah. now but i am very yeah, it's only one game like to see you i know it is only one game and you know what with the way you guys performed the fact that you go up 2-0 and then you lost two in a row and still was able to win that game number five i think is a testament because this is a very young team joe and especially for you being one of the youngest players in the cel last year what has kind of your growth looked like over the past two years um i think i've kind of just gained a lot more confidence and like myself, I think, but that mostly happened like when I went down to Challengers this year. I think last year I didn't really learn too much because obviously our team wasn't the best, you know. But <laughs> this, you know, going down to Challengers, I had people like Mayhem on FC Black, you know, Brack, Exceed, all those guys helped me out a lot. You know, helped me become the better player, like the best player I can possibly be. For sure, and we got to see both of the new maps in the series as well. Which one do you prefer, Vista or Six Star? <sighs> I don't know. I like them both. Like, they're just both fun maps. I think the map set now is just way better than it was at the start. Uh, Joe DeSeeves, you know, you get dropped from the team, right? And now you're back. What do you want to say to the fans who maybe wanted you back the entire time? What can they expect going forward throughout the rest of this stage? Um, hopefully, we close these series out a lot cleaner. But, I mean, I think that showed, like, yeah. you know, we're here to play. You know, we're, we've been fighting. We've been working super hard in scrims, going over VOD, you know, getting better as a team. These guys make it so easy for me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, what a fantastic return you had, my friend. Go celebrate with the team. We'll talk Thank to you, you again soon. Appreciate that. Thank you. You have a good one. All right, that wraps up our second series of the day. We got one more for the weekend, and it is a banger. It's our grand finals rematch, Optic Texas versus Atlanta Face. We'll see you right after this.
I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Fight the captain, never one been afraid. Death and death and the same. I ain't wanna take light. Look into my eyes. I'm a killer inside. Coming for the prize. Do you really want these problems? I put you in that coffin. But I'm never tossing. You put this ain't to stop it. Hungry for the beef, leave you obsolete. See my lines deep. See me in the streets if you want the heat. I mean, yeah, it feels great. I mean, like I said before, too, I run that org. Uh, they haven't beat me in forever. And I, where's that scrap yet? It's already going home. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but I love my teammates. These guys are insane, and I cannot wait until Major 3. All right. Listen, Draza gets the community going, and I'm here for it, man. He was throwing shots after their win, and we all know when Optic and FaZe match up with each other, the community gets to going, and they let some crazy takes out. I mean, me personally, I'm not letting a guy talk about me like that on main stage and then letting him beat me following it up. So I'm hoping to see some fire out of Optic Texas today. Yeah, let's take a look at what the Green Wall had to say. I know that we, they were going crazy after their performance in Major 2, which was fantastic, but a tough finals. And Josh Bell says, feeling like Major 2 again today. It's Optic versus FaZe, and I'm going to be on the edge of my seat the entire match. Green Wall, stand tall today. I love that. I mean, yeah, respectfully, like, even though it was a 4-1 win for Atlanta FaZe, every single map was incredibly close. We're talking round 11. Round five, 20 point hard point. So it really is one of the closest matches we have on the season. Yeah, and then we got another tweet coming up. Well, before that, we'll talk about the grand finals match. Listen, Optic, they played great all tournament long. Yeah. Shotzi was absolutely dominating, but we have to talk about the final in which Shotzi and Dashi did not play like themselves. So today, that is what we're expecting. You see at the bottom, Optic finally get the W over phase. We got Nitrous kills talking about the match as well, saying that he thinks Optic's going to win this one to build their confidence. What do you think? It's tough because they're on the losing side of this this year, right? They're 0-5 versus Atlanta phase, and you want to say the one time they get the win should have been at Major 2 in the grand finals, and unfortunately, that doesn't come to fruition. So now they get another matchup immediately after heading into Major three and for Optic Texas like you're in, you're in the struggle bus right now right like historically you are beating Atlanta phase but now suddenly your two star players Dashi and Jossie are having a struggle only in this matchup like versus the rest of the league Optic is dominating yeah. they cannot beat Atlanta phase yeah I mean just some key things to point out here right like they're own five against them but also Optic is one in four in map ones one in four in control and that differential in terms of Selium and Dashi in yeah. control kitty is massive 1.3 to a 0.75 right I know you got a whole notepad of stats over there, which we'll get into here shortly, but let's get into some tweets for Atlanta FaZe, because they had to be so gassed up after that last win. Absolutely. I mean, Atlanta FaZe themselves says, I guess, five times wasn't enough for them. Now they're looking for the sixes. This is the final matchup on the day. And for Atlanta, they love this matchup, right? Like, you talk about Dashi and Shotzi, hate it. Well, Simp and Cell on the flip side love it. 
They have a 1.2 average when it comes up against Optic Texas. And not only that, even at hard point, like 7 and 2 versus Texas, control 4 and 1, like they are dominating the respawns and they're already a strong search and destroy team. So for Atlanta Phase, like they're not even breaking a sweat looking at this on their schedule. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you think about Atlanta Phase and they sort of like always been the villains. They've been so yeah. elite, right? But they've had their woes as well. But you bring in a guy like Draza, now you really are the villains, really right? Like you got them all on the same team. And so man had to say another L for the green wall crying emoji. The Atlanta Phase fans and the Draza fans can get wild. He hits them with the Wellium and the Goat. Yeah, I mean, Selium, he's been shooting bodies. He's had some edge to him lately. He has had some edge to him. He, I think it feels like this year he's just getting loose. Like he just doesn't care because Selium has been the most consistent player and one of the best players in the game for the past three, four years that he's been in the league. So for him to now have a player like Draza next to him, I feel like it just kind of fuels that fire of like, you know, we're going to exude this confidence and we're going to be the best team because yeah. we deserve to be. Yeah, and now the meta suits the SMG players even more to a yeah. team that was frying through their SMGs. And, uh, you know, we you talk about Selium and how yes. elite he has been. Well, we have something that we are going to start calling the Selium Index. It's percentage of series of 1.0 or better. Now, listen, KD isn't everything, but when you are 23 of 24 series above a one, that is absolutely insane. The level of consistency that this man has shown throughout the years, it's the, it's, he's one of the best ever. And what's interesting about the Selium Index is you're not going to see a player from Optic Texas on this board. Texas only win 30% of the time if Dashi is under a 1.0. And guess what? In the Atlanta phase matchup, he's rocking a .79 overall. So, again, it comes down to these players just for some reason and having that mental block versus Atlanta face. What is satisfactory here for Optic Texas? Do they have to come out and win this series? What do you want to see in this matchup? They have to win this series. I mean, you're 0 5 right now. You're looking at maybe being 0 and 6. You do not want a team that has your number for the rest of the season. I said it earlier that ideally it would have happened at Major Two, yeah. right? Like they would have gotten the win in the grand final. It would have been just an overhaul in who's best in the league, but it, it didn't. So yeah. it needs to happen now. Yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that, but also I want to see them play the new maps, right? I think Optic Texas versus Atlanta phase. It was a tough matchup in some maps. They were losing Skid Row and Invasions, and then we got rid of those. And you can see Cod League 2. What maps do you want to see Optic Texas and Atlanta phase play on Sunday in this rematch? Well, I can tell you right now, we got some new maps. We're going to have Six Star as maps one and five. And we've just seen that all day today, man. The aggressive style of play. It should suit players like Shotzi really well. It really should. And I guess on the flip side of that, like Atlanta phase is comfortable to play the new maps as well. We already saw them play Minnesota. They they had Vista and Six Star in the lineup. We didn't see Six Star, but we did see Vista, and it was a very strong performance by Abe. He looked like he was spotted in on Rio or Bo Cage. That man dropped 30 kills, so we already know what to expect from that side of the map. What I don't like is that Texas banned Vista Hardpoint in this series. That's a map that I think they should try. I think Optic Texas, regardless, you're going to be in the winner's bracket. Try as many maps as possible in your matchups against the top four as you can, right? And now we're going to be seeing a Rio as that game four in which Texas have been decent on, but Atlanta Phase are the best real team that we have in the game. I have to echo what you just said and the fact that Optic Texas should be testing this new map pool because they're also one of the teams that praise, you know, scrims don't always equal the way that yep. people are going to play in matches. So when you're going up against a team like this that has your number, you've got to see if you can find any opening. Yeah, they're testing a little bit. Like when you talk about High Rise SD, haven't been great there. They actually lost Atlanta Phase in that map. And then High Rise Control, one of their worst control maps. So we're getting some tests out there. Just would have loved to have seen Vista. Yeah. But now it's time. Time for the scuff pickums. Allie, yeah. I am in the lead. You are in the lead. So I will go first here. Thank you. Uh, we got some new maps. This is a tough one, man. I'm like 50 50 in here. I'm going to go with Atlanta Phase. I think they take it. They're 5 0 against them on the season. They're so confident. Draws is playing extremely well. I think it goes to wire, though. I think we can game five. I'm trailing by four, and I don't think I'm going to try and catch up to you on this one either. I have to go with Atlanta Phase. I mean, the stats 0 oh, 5. I mean, come on. You got to think Puckett probably would have gone Atlanta Phase. Oh, my God. No, he, he went Optic. Optic, Texas. He did that just to spite us. I'm he convinced. Who the are fans, the fans though, going with? Atlanta phase. Atlanta phase. That's fair. All right. Well, it's time. We're going to throw it to some of your favorite casters. Shift and study. Take it away. It's going to be a banger. Gonna be a banger, Jay. How we feeling? What's up, brother? I'm feeling fantastic. I'm ready to get into this matchup. We got some special teams with some special players that make some special plays. But in all seriousness, Optic versus FaZe. We've seen this matchup multiple times this season. It's all been in favor of FaZe. We're talking about 7-2 and two in HP, 5-2 and two in Search and Destroy, 4-1 and one in Control. They have had the number on Optic Texas all season long. But even in the maps that they have lost, everyone has been really, really close. The only thing that scares me about this map set is that there's a whole bunch of maps that they have yet to play for both sides. But even in the middle too, with the, both of those high-rises, Optic Texas haven't played high-rise in both SD and Control in about two months. So 
Gold. This is a test out series for Optic Texas. And obviously, if you're Atlanta Faze, you're trying to stay flawless and make it 6 0 on the season. And on top of that, it, there, you know, the issues get kind of compounded here in certain ways, you know, for Optic Texas. Yeah, it has been a little bit of a weird start for them in a lot of series where they really haven't, really, I would say, like, break the mold, but they don't come out as hot as you maybe would expect them to in some matchups that you wouldn't expect them to kind of overperform on. And on yeah. the flip side, Atlanta, whenever they get a new map, they are one of the best teams and always approaching brand new maps into the pool. That's happened this year. They've never lost to Rio. Happened in years previous. And you would have to think that with Six Star and Vista in the mix, they've put a lot of attention towards it. But maybe a chance for the Green Wall to surprise. Get a clutch map number one win here on one of our brand new maps. Yeah, you need to get a clutch map number one because I feel like every time I watch Optic Texas, if they walk away with a map one victory, it's about an 80% chance even better to walk away with this series. So unfortunately versus Atlanta Phase is sitting at one and four. You have to try to turn the tides here. As we yep. get early in towards the P1, it was Atlanta face that started off with all the nades, all the tacks over the top. But at least Optic Tex is still trying to contest it, but maintaining the spawns for that second hill. Looking decent, at least to this point. Essentially 50-50 battle over the top of the first hard point. This is when the motion starts to happen, though. It's a three for one exchange. Optic still got a couple of spawns down low, but it's going to be a long run to get back over here. And Abizi's already guarding this outer staircase area. Now right into the palm tree. Help already here by Simp. And you want to talk about not just the Cellium Index. Simp versus Optic is just another monster. Dude, he's averaging a 1.2 in all five matchups they have played so far. That is an insane number. If he's not one of the best, he's probably the best current player in the game. And in the opposing side for Optic Texas, has been Dashi and Shotzi, both averaging a 0.8 in this matchup. You need those guys to step up, and unfortunately, the break is not going to be here. So Atlanta Faze, they just watched LAT put the beat down on Vegas on this last map, and they're trying to do the same exact thing. Only 30 seconds remaining at this B2. You win these next set of fights, you can easily win that rotation over towards next, but Optic with the bodies able to find a couple kills keep the scrap time going in their favor and already have a player off the rotation critical early moment in this map being able to hold off this scrap time and keep atlanta's rotation towards three at least somewhat at bay but clean follow up from phase off their respawn now the motion across the halfway point of the map shotzi guarding mid pred staying deep over towards the sky bridge and that'll be kenny and dashi just at long range waiting to make contact front side pool bar yeah, now you just have to withstand where the pressure's coming in from from Atlanta. You have players approaching the back end, players wow. approaching the front as well. So they find the initial two fights, and they make that break look easy. Already able to flip the spawns. That's 10 seconds into the hill. They're able to lead to the break, but they haven't accounted for Pred. He's able to find a double through lobby, and Optic Texas right back in. Yeah, great recovery moment there from the SMGs for Optic. Still, without the spawns, will be hard-pressed, you'd think, to hold on from the front of this hill. But decent nades coming through. Trades are still also working out for Optic. Uh, Dashy, <laughs> oh, to sacrifice his life, could not get quite back up to get involved. And with that, Atlanta will have the numbers, have the spawns, and with that, break for the scrap. Yeah, final 20 is going to be theirs, but at least if you're Optic Texas, you're going over towards this P4 where it could potentially be a full 60. We know how difficult it is for Atlanta or any team to try to break right through the front end. So you have to try to hit around and work your way around behind. And that's what Zaraza and Simp are going to be doing. Slowly working their way back behind enemy lines. Preg going to be the sole man holding down this position. Key 1v1 here. Draza caught looking the wrong direction. Almost the turn from Pred. Not quite there, but the follow up from Shotzi no. is good. And okay, the SMGs for Optic. Really starting to light things up when it matters most. Kenny getting a little bit further forward, but caught from behind. Now Atlanta with numbers looking to break from the front. Yeah, you have to use your tax though, because you know all of Optic know exactly where the pressure is coming in. You got to eliminate these trophy systems. They're able to use the tax at least now to make this a little bit more scrappy, but Optic Tex is still spawning on the preferred side. They have those back spawns with only 25 seconds left. Atlanta are not forced. If you're going to attack this or hit that rotation, they have the bodies. They're just not trading effectively, nice. and Optic Tex is with the perfect response to get back into this game. Yeah, really clean exchange over the top of securities. And now back over towards the middle of the map we go. Kenny, long route out towards the pool, and the BZ does not see him. So first blood good on this rotation. The rest of Atlanta just trying to hold some sort of a front line here. Simp in particular right in front of the palm tree. And how does he get two? Not quite able to slip away, but damage has been dealt. And Atlanta's the first one to step foot inside the pool. And this is the hill I'm most excited to see between these two teams because these underwater fights are going to be insane. We know what Shotzi is able to do with his movement, but he's able to at least relieve some of that pressure from Atlanta face and make the break come in for the team. A team named over the top, all of Atlanta face wanting over towards P3 side. Optic Texas are going to be able to take the lead, but for how long? Because you already have a player in the BZ going on a pitch. 
Yeah, but Dashi's kind of watching to make sure no one can freely get into the hard point, but the pinch from Abizi comes through perfectly timed. Draza follows up to keep him safe, and that'll be likely the lead to Atlanta and also the scrap time as Optic is defaulting for rotation. I don't know what it is with these two new maps, but there's always a photo finish besides the LAT one. Yeah. Always back and forth between all these teams. Obviously, it's only been one week that these maps have been in, so you're still trying to learn everything that you possibly can, but off we go to the second half of this game. Optic going to be the team initially to start off with this P one time. You have Kenny watching the overextension to statue. He can't Jesus. win the one-on-one, -on -one, so here's another opportunity for Atlanta to open up a lane through the right side. I mean, what is it with Sim versus this green wall squad this year? He has been undeniable. Abizi, 10 and 12, looking to try to find a way to contest. Clean shot towards Kenny, but the response is better. Still, tie game. Cell is looking for contact. Able to find Kenny with the same text. Doesn't expect the second throw into Pred, who is one of the last Optic members remaining. And he's going to go over towards the DJ booth, spin up a couple of tracks, and does well to at least distract Atlanta for a while, but it's not enough to flip the hill, and Atlanta's in for like, in like the last 20. Yeah, the last 20 is potentially going to be theirs, but at least you still have a couple players trying to contest this. But Optic Texas more focused on just maintaining the spawns for the next hill. You can give up this final 15 to Atlanta if you decide to, but you're going to contest it all the way to the very end. You're making it scrappy through the middle of the map, but you are relieving that pressure at the next hill. While Optic Texas now have an opportunity to get fully set up. Have to hold this rotation if you're Optic. Just get something trending your direction, because to this point, it's mostly been recovering, finding ways to re-break. Can they put some convincing control here at the palm tree? Abizi tries to make a play around the back. Not going to work out. Is there space and time for Simp? No, not going to happen. It's only Draza with a couple of kills, but his route will move Optic spawns back to the front. Yeah, Optic at least now know where the pressure's coming in. So, so Dashi's just going to take it into his old hands. Able to find a double sitting at 20 and 12. Optic Texas are able to take the lead. And a chance with them looking at this back 30 pretty nicely. And with the gun starting to really heat up, perfect time to see how Optic are coming with an Optic gaming listening. More, more, more. Yo, one HP. There's two Make sure we learn brother. This is the right. On the right side. On the right side. I need it. 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 I need I'm holding mid, 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 I'm holding mid,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yo, he's in our water behind me. He's got our side water. Our side water. I'm coming on shot. 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 I'm coming on Shotzi's pretty much turned into Aquaman. The guy's got skills. <laughs> He's sitting at the bottom of the pool forever, and Atlanta just could not keep track of him. Also important to note, Dashi is frying 30 and 20. Yeah, Dashi's taking over, but Shotzi, like you said, is Aquaman. He's okay with drowning in that P5, but they were able to hold down that P5 flawlessly. Tony now need 20 points to close out game number one. But if you are Atlanta phase, this is where they start to hit a different level. In these closing moments, they always have that clutch gene, but you have to find a couple kills, and Optic Texas are finding everyone in the feed. Yeah, absolutely perfectly set up over the top of this bar. Just don't scam it. You should walk away with map 1-1. I think is probably what the comms should be, but the SMGs for Atlanta coming up right when they're needed most. Uh, Kenny not able to find the double, and hold on a second. We've got a rotation likely underway here as Optic is trying to play the long route through pool. And this time, it's synth the Aquaman on the bottom of the pool, but it doesn't make a difference. The kills are good. And now Optic have themselves set up for what will likely be spawns. It's just selling them in their way. And if they find this kill, they likely walk away with the map one win. Don't even oh. need it, apparently. Yeah, that's going to be the game, man. Optic Texas coming out and turning the page on game ones versus Atlanta phase. That's now two and four on the season. But on the back of Dashi, who just started to take over at that P3, he goes on a seven spree, earns himself a cruise missile, able to keep P4 a little bit scrappy. But then when you get over towards P5, it's the routes through the water side. Shotzi gonna get done with the Renetti and Optic Texas come out and make some special plays in game number one to secure map one. At a certain point, we're gonna need to start like superimposing like a hold your breath counter for yeah. P5, dude. I mean, legitimately, Shotzi was at the bottom of the pool, what felt like for 30 seconds. Unreal stuff. But yeah, I think a lot of that came down to their adjustments on P3 in particular. I mean, the quick break, the first rotation while we were there from Atlanta was definitely one of those moments that I think you look back on it, grabbed it to say, okay, that's just inexcusable. We have the perfect setup. How are we letting them just walk behind us like this? And then the second time we're there, it's absolutely polished. There's a moment of maybe confusion in the comms of like, hey, what are we looking? But as soon as they get it figured out, much better the second time around. And you'd love to see that if you are a Green Wall fan, because Optic Texas, they have struggled versus Atlanta when you talk about hard points, especially in those final moments. When it comes down to the clutch factor at the end of the game, it's usually when the opposite start to crumble and Atlanta phase just hit a whole different level. But they were able to equalize them the entirety of the map. And even in those final moments, Dashi stepped up, Shotzi with the water routes, even Kenny with a couple double kills around the map. Able to secure the map number one, and you're feeling good. New map, already 1-0 versus Atlanta phase. That's how you start. Yeah, well played for both teams, if we're being honest. And yeah, I mean, outside of a couple of messy moments here and there, because let's be honest, this play here from Shotzi is ridiculous. <laughs> but it's just like you, what we're starting to see trend wise on this map. I mean, it's a little bit of a stark comparison to our most recent series. We saw uh, LA Thieves just put the beat down on. But it's one of those things that it, the team that gets themselves rewarded with the rotation it's kind of like a sub base. You, there's no excuses. I mean, yep. it's very clear what your setup needs to look like and how you can capitalize on the efficiency that comes through. And that's why we're seeing these very back and forth trends in a very tight game from start to finish. And that's what makes a good hard point map. We're talking about responding after certain yeah, hills. Yeah. You might get full 60 on one hill, but if you've set up properly out for the rotation over towards the next, you can respond with the full 60 of your own. And that's what Optic Techs were able to do. Always stay ahead of the game. Even when you allow the land of face to get back into the game at P2, you dominate a P3, even though they got back into the P4, you make up for it at P5. It was just a mirror effect between both of the squads on which hill they wanted to dominate, and they always were able to have a response. Big time. So, great opening map for this. What we often classify as the classic Call of Duty history matchup, but like we've already seen in all the statistics, it has been very one-sided in this title. 5-0, 16-5 map count, favoring Atlanta phase, but 
a key first map. And now the question marks start to pop up. Yeah. Because double dose of high rise, Optic has not been great here, and they also haven't played it very much just on the season. And then also the real hard point, if we were to get there, it's one of Atlanta's bread and butter since it was entered into the map pool. So it's a tough stretch of maps coming up right here for Optic. And I think if you're the green wall, you just want to see improvements, especially on these two high rises back to back. Oh yeah, without question. I know it might be a couple of tough maps, especially versus a team like Atlanta Face who love themselves some high rise SD, who love themselves some high rise control. And as you said, they love themselves some Rio, but that's sometimes the best practice you can get when you're playing the best team on it. And in a match that's very important, it's not practice. You can go out there and win the match in practice, but you can win it in an actual match versus a team who's had your number all season long. That's where the confidence gets shot through the roof so even though optic texas is in 0 and 3 so far on high rise search and destroy they struggle at finding first blood they struggle at also even when they find the first blood converting into a round win so i think versus a team like atlanta face you can definitely work on both of those categories agreed so lots of polish that we're expecting from one side and just general show of force from the other as you look at the search and destroy from the side of atlanta who during the major looked incredible save just one map loss really when they played up against optic everything yeah. else was pretty much perfect against teams like new york teams like thieves in their opener it's just one of those it's like we often say search destroy wins championships and they have really polished it up through major two and now you're forced to win this high rise search and destroy where you have a couple more reps compared to optic texas haven't played this map in two months but that's a beautiful picture of the cat and a plant sitting right next to it as Atlanta are going to be the team early on the attacking side. No trophy systems to work with, but look at how aggressive Optic are. More specifically, Shotzi yeah. already in the spawn. And this should be a freebie for sure. Cell's going to be completely caught off guard by this. It's just a question of can Simp provide the trade in time. And oh, the trigger discipline is perfect. Simp tries to avoid it, but it's inevitable. Two for Shotzi. And with that, the round has just completely gone awry for Atlanta. Damn, that one's done and dusted. First 15 seconds into the round, he's already bottom pit working behind enemy lines, and he's able to use the trigger discipline to the full effect. See, he finds a double to start that one off, but okay, Optic Texas, I see you. That's some new strategies yep. already on display. And how much of that do you think is just a pure out counter? Because whenever we see Atlanta play this map, it's often in round one of their offense, a double hit down blue in towards that pit connector. But this time... It's just, I don't even care about taking that gunfight. I'm just going to run right through the outer lanes, get behind, and it works out perfectly. So maybe a little bit of counter shredding done there by Optic. Yeah, I don't really think it's counter, though. I think it's just more the confidence of Shotzi because we saw him on maps like Karachi first 15 seconds. He's getting behind enemy lines. When he finds an opening, he's going to take full advantage of it, and he finds one there to secure the round. Oh, and here we go again. Shotzi already forward over towards A. Stun checks him out. Doesn't make a difference. Avoids the majority of the gunfight versus a BZ. And that leads to a smoke, giving him a little bit of extra cover, selling him backside windows can really not do much here. And maybe you look to Draza, he may have to like pop up and find somebody backside blue to even get this defense going. And Shotzi continues to keep the throttle down, 4-0 start. Another 4v2 instantly on the back of Shotzi. Left up the Sip and Draza. Sip is able to take down one, but now it's Draza left in the 1v3. Bomb is yet to be planted, but positioning wow. now known. And Optic Texas, two really quick rounds to start off this high rise search and destroy. More on just the confident plays coming in on a Shotzi. You hit routes like that to start it off. There's no way in hell Atlanta phase is going to be able to get a read on it. 2 0, Optic Texas. And this is going to play a lot of mind games here with Atlanta. I mean, when you come out like this and get your subs not just forward, but around you, challenging your ARs that are in spawn. What do you put together as a response here for your Atlanta? It's almost one of those, like, you either have to have everyone commit to playing passive or everyone to commit to playing forward. You just don't want to stay in the gray area with optics running at you like this. Just got to read on Shotzi. You have to find a read on what he's doing because he's making play after okay. play. And unfortunately, the team fire from Selium takes down Sim. So already the man advantage for Optic Texas. They find themselves on a eight team stream. Make it nine. Before Draza does take down Kenny, but now it's a 2v3. Oh, well, maybe a little bit of overheating here, though, from Optic, getting caught just a touch and what was a 4v2. Now down to the 2v2, and Draza continues to collect. So now it's just on to Shotzi for the 1v2 situation. Good read onto Abizi, but it's mutual. And wow, the shots response from Abizi works out great. And maybe a missed round opportunity right there after the unfortunate team kill from Atlanta. It's definitely a missed round right there out of Optic. Because you get a free first blood on the back of Selium. And then you also put yourself in a 3v2 advantage over towards B Street. But you cannot locate where Abizi is. You cannot locate where Draza was. 
able to clutch up into 2v3 to finally put Atlanta face on the board. But with those trophy systems, you saw that they were able to slow down Shotzi off of that playmaking ability. So now on the defensive end, just kind of make sure we're watching our cuts because Shotzi, the way that he's playing right now, he looks like he's simply just not going to slow down. Yeah, facts. Lots of dates thrown by Optic over towards the left side of the map. Doesn't appear that much of it or any of it may have hit. And Shotzi will just get to work on the ladder immediately. Sip on the pipes. Looking to play the pop-up defense over towards B. Just comes down to, will there be enough cues for him to check this as Optic look pretty convinced that they want to play over towards B? How, how, how does he even make that happen? Thought he was dead to rights in the pre-aim of Selian, but he somehow, somehow is able to walk away with at least one kill. Keeps his team in the man advantage until Draza is able to take down Pred. So a 2v2 with 45 seconds left. Optic have full B street control. You might just want to go for this bomb plant. Can he push back? Is your bomb carrier Dashy also tagged? So information here from Atlanta's perspective on where these two optic attackers are. Does Dashy get a look down to the left on Draza running up and under him? Not quite enough to keep his teammates safe. So this would give him a 1v2, a BZ. Oh, he's read it so darn well with the oh. pistols. Better from Dashy. Oh, mercy. A steal away around from Optic. He's sick and tired of everybody talking about I struggle versus Atlanta phase. This guy is just an unbelievable talent. I actually recently just checked out Dashy's setting on YouTube. Just put out a video for all the settings when you talk about the killings. But we got to take a replay again at what shots he was able to do. 48 HP. Somehow, some way is able to find a kill. That's just a play that you don't expect anyone to make. No. But he somehow, some way, is able to get it done. But back to Dashy. If you guys haven't checked it out and you want to shoot somewhat like Dashy, that's why I was trying to change my gameplay a little bit. He just put out a whole video on the settings. So definitely go check that out. Working out well so far after the 30 bomb in map one. Now five and one start. Oh, this time of BZ is not going to be bamboozled by Shotzi. And well, surely Ant is dead to rights here. And he will be. Close gunfight, though, to be fair. But early first blood tallied for Atlanta. Now Optic have to hit the brakes on this defense and hope that someone can collect a kill or two to try to stall out this bomb play. Yeah, fool me once. You can't get fooled again. They read the play on Shotzi to find the first blood. Now Atlanta phase in the man advantage until Pred is at least able to find Draza and get out with his life. So 3v3 and 45 seconds left. Dash is trying to at least get some assistance on the B street, but Selim's able to take him down. A BZ with the second. Pred left in a 1v3. And he's stuck at the moment. Oh, decent rewrap back over the top of the ladder, though. Atlanta may have been convinced that he dropped down into the pit. Yes, yeah, Cell's still looking down on one side. Simp looking down on the other. And he snuck back in towards mid. Ah, uh, until he isn't. Cell able to track him on the cross back over towards green. And there's no way he exits from there. But boy, I'll tell you, he nearly finessed his way out of a very tricky spot. Oh, yeah. Pret thought that, that play was going to be a lot quicker. He was not expecting him to play it so slow around that B-bomb site. But that's one thing that Atlanta phase do on a map like High Rise. They barely plant the bomb. But when they plant the bomb, 100% on post-plant situations. They're more focused on just making sure that they have both players with their guns up, ready to go, so they can trade efficiently. As Sullyan was able to locate Pred, secure another round for Atlanta. But that was on the back of just simply shutting down Shotzi in that first blood. Yep, absolutely the case. Tight margins here in the search to this point. Offense once again, lots of nades over towards that B alley. This time, though, look at this. Atlanta heavy stack down low. Two players on one side, Simp on the other. But Shotzi's got a pretty good read of this, and Atlanta's aware of it. They back off, and they're going to need to reset their defense. Yeah, and now Shotzi's just going to take a lot of ground because he knows well that they done. have to exit from bottom pit somewhere. He's able to find the first blood, sets up Pred for the second. Now it's instantly a 4v2. You could potentially start working this bomb plant, but who needs a bomb plant when you're shooting like this? All yeah. four in the feed. Two from Pred, two from Shotzi. Optic, 4-2 now. That's just a brilliant micro moment to highlight. You get the info and you immediately read and react to it. Yep. You know, like you said, two players down low. I don't know if they get information that a third is down there, but it doesn't matter. How often do you see four players stacked defensively on B up top or down low? So really good response from Shotzi, and you call that perfectly. The reaction saying that if they're going to reset, they're going to come right back up these staircases. Easy feeding. Yeah, that's perfect plays right there at Optic Texas to use the information that they gained and instantly pounce on it. So now they are back on a defensive end. Simp has a slow start so far in the search and destroy. Looking for him to start to turn up for Atlanta phase, but Shotzi again just going to go back to what worked the first go around. But this time we're not going to go behind enemy lines. 
Yeah, small hesitation. He can use this as a quick pinch, and this is going to work out really nicely as Draws is completely caught off towards the elevators. No chance for a trade as of yet, and then Pred pops up through the jump window to find a second. Good response, though, from Atlanta. They're able to collect at least a couple just to make sure this thing gets back to a 2v2. Bomb is also in a very collectible spot, so everything gets reset, and Kenny gets caught topside heli. Now a numbers advantage to phase. Now it's Dashy left in the 1v2. He was at least able to spot Selian, but potentially going to be more focused on potentially shutting down this bomb plant. But Atlanta phase again in a situation where they are playing the kill. They are waiting to the final moment before they decide to work that objective. And this might work out perfectly for Dashy because that time is yeah. starting to tick. It just comes down to does he even check over the top over towards B? Because if they get this planted and they get away, it's a tough retake to go through. But there's the ankle. Nice shots from Dashy. 1v1 with Selium. First shots are good with the follow-up. Maybe a bit hindered by the railing. And Sel responds in a massive bounce back after being down to a 2v3 initially for FaZe. Oh, that's a big clutch round right there for Atlanta. Shotzi versus Dash. We always love the AR battles between those two young men. Some of the best shots that we have in Call of Duty, but it's Selly I'm able to get the better of them this time around to keep Atlanta FaZe into this search and destroy. Now down 4-3, and if you are Atlanta, we're definitely not going back to that pit setup. We got to yeah. have people over towards the B Street side. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, it's one of those things that the strange setups, like the unexpected plays, are definitely being more successfully carried out by Optic than for FaZe at the moment. But this is much more close to what they normally do on a default. Sid playing forward on towards B. Selium watching over him and a pretty aggressive angle just outside the B propane. And if easy's just checking for tags at mid, he's going to at least contact a couple of players, which is enough to alert the defense over towards the B site. One for one goes the exchange. Now it's into 3v3. Shotzi's able to find a BZ through low pit. Joss is able to take down Dashy instantly into a 2v2, but Sip knows I have to get out with my yeah. life. You invest that smoke grenade for the repositioning. Now with only 45 seconds left, it's a 2v2. Both teams on complete opposite sides of the map. Yeah, this is a really tough retake, though, at the moment for Atlanta trying to contest this B site with Simp getting out of there and draws it down low with an AR. Shots is going to take a little bit of extra time just to clear out the backside defensive windows. Kenny hasn't seen anything yet, but there are players on the offensive side of the map that could make themselves available to at least being seen. And how about this? Have Optic gotten a read that Atlanta have played to the offensive side? They sure seem to have. Shots, he's able to tag up Simpa Touch. The bomb's going to get planted at A. And the biggest thing is if Kenny can get Ooh. off of the site just in time. No, he cannot. He's able to get taken down before that bomb even gets planted. So, Jossie, you don't have to do anything. Let's just sit comfortable in this corner. Shots, he's not going to have enough time to work that bomb plant. And even with Optic Texas finding the first blood, Atlanta phase with the mid-round adjustments to simply had to take Kenny off of that A site to secure the round. Atlanta phase tie back up at four. Yeah. Good bounce back here from Atlanta, considering the first blood battle has largely been in favor of Optic. Yeah. Puts us back into a more level footing here. And now all of a sudden you start to wonder, is there any more trickery up Optic sleeves? And does Atlanta ever go back to that kind of heavy blue hit that we've often seen them do? This time, not the case. Simp the bomb carrier already back over towards propane. Draws a cell working together on this B lane, but Optic's right here to beat him. This is a very aggressive game of tag, which Kenny comes out as first blood winner. That's a big, big team shots from both squads to at least lead to the trade. As Simp was able to take some positioning over towards propane, and he's able to find a double. A BZ on the flank is able to locate Kenny. Now it's instantly a 1v1. Keep in mind, Simp came out of spawns in MCW here. First couple of shots are decent. Pred wants the battle at 2 HP. Bold to say the least. Now off the regen. Both players back to full HP. Onus on to Simp to what he wants to do. Does he want to play for the kill, play for the plant? Smoke just kind of draws the attention of Pred. And in this moment, Simp gets all the way back side A and is going to try to commit to the plant. Does Pred bother to check this? Doesn't seem to. Also not going to catch him on the exit, Jay. Things reset here, 1v1. Yeah, this is tough now because you have no info and the bomb's down at A, so where you have so many different angles you can check it from if you are simp. Or Pred's thinking right now. He has to try to be working behind enemy lines, but you get the info now. How does he decide to play? Oh. He's just going to stick to defuse. Does simp check this? Does he have the angle this time around? He gets the three quarters of the way, and then the shots come through to connect. Pred, it's the right read. It's the right call, but simp just a little bit too quick on the rewrap, able to find the toes.
You know it's only a matter of moments before Sip comes alive in search to destroy. He was sitting at one and five, now six and six. Finds himself on three or four in a row, but a big one-on-one -on -one to put his team now at game point in this high-rise search and destroy. Clutch up on the attacking side, and now to go back towards defense. And if you are Atlanta phase, you just got to stay strong. I would be in the back of my spawn, make sure we're holding down B Street, force Optic Texas to beat you by putting that bomb down. Yeah. I like the call. But what do they call to try to get the bomb down? I think it's the bigger question here. Pret Dashy flying over towards the blue side. Abizi looking to get aggressive. Steps forward. And I don't think Dashy's seen it. Nope, he hasn't. Pred gets caught looking the opposite direction. And first blood once again collected by Atlanta. And they're going to back off and just play this thing straight up 4v3. Yeah, this is perfect. You don't want to try to get too overzealous. Potentially get picked off. But Sip is able to take down Shotzi. Instantly a 4v2. Bomb still slowly working his way up through the B Street, but Dash and Kenny have their hands full with only 15 seconds to try to cut this one up. Yeah. It's just Atlanta's ability to find first blood is only part of the problem. Their ability to play down a man is ridiculous. Yep. Dashy, maybe the barrel of the gun being seen. Yep, sure seems that way. BZ finds the kill very quickly as soon as that information was processed. And it's just on to Kenny, who gets some decent shots into one, but no chance for the follow-up. And I mean... Give me a break, dude. I mean, we're going to see it in the first blood tally. It's going to be pretty even, but what? Two different 2v3, 2v4s that Atlanta are able to pull back. And a lot of that maybe just kind of gifted in a certain way because Optic are playing so stretched, so forwards that it kind of isolates them just by almost voluntary margins. Yeah, that's where you have to make the adjustments if you are Optic Texas. Early on, it was the aggression finding a lot of success. Shotzi with multiple different routes, finding first blood, and that led to a lot of Ws. But then when you get towards the middle half of the game, that's where Atlanta face start making those mid-round adjustments, making sure that they're changing their setups properly and making sure that their teamwork is now on full display as we get into the later half of the S&D. They were just simply out classic Atlanta phase from down 4-2 to win four straight to secure the S and D. It just, in my opinion, if Pred just checks that A bomb site and wins the one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. we're definitely going to around number five. But when you allow him to plan at A, get away with his life for free, and then try to stick the defuse, is not the best way to play it versus Atlanta phase, because then they're slowly but surely gaining momentum. They're able to win four rounds in a row to close out the search to destroy, now to tie the series up at one. But that's a map where Optic Texas were, text were testing. You never 0-3 on it. Now it makes it 0-4, but at least you gave Atlanta phase a fight there on that high rise. Here's the number, Jay, and buckle up. You're not ready for it. Okay. Obviously, the scoreboard's not working, but our boy Easy Mac was tallying it live. 8-2, to two, first oh. blood's favor, Optic Texas. So... You want to talk about, again, those numbers not mattering in the end. That has often been the case, and Atlanta continues to find ways to punish, even though they find themselves down a man early. So, 1-1 one, one the map count. High Rise still on the menu for our next course for control. And then, of course, Rio Hardpoint, map number four. A tough stretch of maps here based on the history between these two squads. But after map one win, Optic looking, finding ways to try to change the trends and find a way to extend this series. We'll be back after the break. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Welcome back. After the unknown map number one on Six Star goes the way of Optic, the more known quantities are starting to play out. The unfortunate part for the green wall, eight to two in first bloods, a couple of different 2v3s, 2v4s not going their way means that Atlanta will capitalize, sending us to a 1-1 one -one map count and another high rise control. I'm shit with that study. And uh, well, brother, the news doesn't get any better going for Optic fans here into map number three, not only because their record on control versus Atlanta is not the greatest in the world. Yeah. This map is also not been particularly strong for them at all. Oh yeah, Optic Texas basically didn't play it all throughout stage two. Last time they played this was all the way into February. They are more focused on playing Karachi, playing Invasion. This is basically their auto veto, a majority of the season. But now you know, we're going already in the middle half of the year. We have to try to play a couple maps that we're not really comfortable at. So we can throw a couple curveballs versus some of these top teams. And none other than High Rise Control going up against Atlanta Face, who are literally the best team at this map. To try to test your practice. But it has to be a focus on defense for Optic Texas. 11th overall in the league compared to Atlanta Face, who are number one. That's where they have to adjust. That is by far the biggest nomenclature we could possibly put up together. Two for one, the opening exchange. Atlanta already off to the races on B, a BZ. Oh boy. Not what you want as a BZ on your front line like this. It doesn't get any better. Uh, Pred's completely dead to rights. Shotzi does at least find some sort of a response. Kind of cauterizes the wound for now, but clock stays paused at 106. So the first tick of progress is looking pretty inevitable. This is where if you're Optic Texas, they know there's no trophy system to work with yet. The gunny is going to be hot though, so they don't need to use their attacks to invest the break in towards B. Just got to now find a trade onto a BZ, but Shotzi's not able to get it done. So the first segment is going to be complete, and a BZ just with the heads up play. So to get the segment done and get away with his life, is just yeah. enough for Atlanta face to still keep back patrol. Defense, though, starting to establish itself for Optic. Shotzi down low, seen at range. Clean oh. shots, though, from a BZ. Simp also following up on the Kenny up top. Here comes the hit for face, trying to get back on towards this B zone. You've got Dashy inside the point, and he's done well to kind of use that tower to his advantage, but still it gets flat out overwhelmed. Second tick of progress looking likely. Three man stack may also mean that this zone is just done and dusted. One more attempt, possibly, but a BZ makes sure no one can contest and an extra 60 gets tallied for phase. Man, they are putting the beat down right now. That was a very quick, efficient beat play. You had players consistently pushing behind enemy lines, just keeping the kill stagnant. And whenever they needed a two to three dead, they got it done to secure that B point. Now a minute and 25 on the game clock. All of Optic Texas more focused on maintaining the map control. And Kenny with that reach pinch up through B Street, at least allow his teammates to work out of their base. Yeah, really well done. Dashy also makes sure that no one can make moves over towards the blue side of the map. So good stuff here from Texas to reduce the life lead just down to, well, now level. Shotzi on three in a row as a plethora of weapons, I imagine, to play with, depending on what the situation calls for. And Dashy continues to just lock things down over towards the A side of the map. So this is all about what can Shotzi do in terms of trying to get together a bit of a spawn trap. And he's made his way at least down to bottom pit. A BZ at range oh. also dealt with it at Shotzi on five. And this is perfect place from Optic Texas. You can tell that the practice ads are working out to perfection. They usually struggle when you talk about the slaying column on the defensive end. But Shotzi finds himself on seven in a row. Is trying to be the playmaker again for this Optic squad. Already a cruise missile in the back pocket. Yikes. He doesn't plan on slowing down. All the kills and defeat for Optic. Atlanta face forced to hit the reset in the back of their spawn. And that just might be it. Optic Texas yeah. dominant on this defense. I mean, at one point, this was a 19 play 17 in favor of FaZe. <laughs> and now it's 12 to 5. And Shotzi is threatening for a double digit streak. An absolute takeover here on the round one defense. Draza just, oh, not quite. Doesn't make much of a difference. The cruise missile already earned an optic build, a convincing A defense, and a huge life margin lead. And that's how you get it done, man. You only allowed three segments to go to in favor to Atlanta phase, but Shotzi just absolutely dominates with his movement with that MCW in hand. He usually does it with the rival nine, but this guy is one of the best players in Call of Duty for a reason. Ends on a 10 streak before getting taken down, was potentially trying to break the record, but that's a great defensive round from Optic Texas. Already showing the adjustments on that side of the map. And now you have a cruise missile to work with. You just have to make up for three segments. Yeah, and again, I just want to re-hit the point that you made earlier about how Shotzi and Dashi against FaZe have, on average, overall KDs of around 0.8. In yep. control, it's worse than that. So to see Dashi at 6-3, and three, Shotzi just having a world star map to this point, I'm sure is very refreshing to the green wall. 
And that's not stopping here. B progress already being made and no kills at all for FaZe. This is looking mighty fine for Optic. Yeah, they can't get out of the base. It's very, very difficult, especially when your ARs are not having the best performance. Jaws is sitting at 2 and 12. He cannot figure it out yet. But Shanti's just picking up where he left off. Unfortunately, can't find that fight onto Celium. But that's already be done and dusted. Finally, Atlanta phase able to get a couple kills to work out of their base. And if you are Optic Texas, job already done. If you want to secure one more segment, you also have a cruise missile in the back pocket of shots. Yeah. The thing is, you don't want to get trapped in your spawn here because the same thing can happen to you very quickly in phase or in pretty prime position to potentially put that together. Celium up top by Heli. Oh, unfortunate propane explosion. Takes Pred out of the picture. So now FaZe have numbers and they continue to try to push forward. Nice gun shots from Abizia on the Kenny. Follow up from Sip. Not quite fully there, but Atlanta still win the kill feed. Now they've got a two life lead and some good map control. And this is what makes Atlanta FaZe the best defensive team on this map. You get put into that trap. It's about 20 to 30 seconds before you even have an opportunity to work your way on out. But they are just trading so damn well around Helipad, around B Street. Force and Optic Texas to use reinforcements on one side of the map more than they want to. And at least Kenny now with the route. He's going to find an opening through bottom pit. Fred finds the first blood, and this might be an opportunity yeah. for Optic Texas to, to get on that game, to get on that eight point. Oh, Sim comes back over through the previously captured B zone and deals with Kenny, but Shotzi's going to sneak around the back again. And Atlanta have no idea that he's making this play. Small moments of hesitation here from FaZe, but they are not going to have the luxury of staying back for too long because here comes Dan from Optic from the front. Clean kills all across the board. Beasy, last one standing, and he gets dealt with. So the clock will pause at 50 seconds. Shotzi getting what? Shots through walls, kills from what feels like through five walls, and Kenny's right there on the cross to make sure Atlanta can't get out of spawn. A convincing moment here for Optic. Oh, yeah, that's already the second segment going to be done. You better try to hit some nays, some stuns to try to take him off at this point. But Dashy with the beeves through the middle of the map is able to find a double. None other than Shotzi to find the third. Shotzi oh with my. the double of his own. Finds himself on five in a row in again. As that third segment is about to be complete. But even if it's not, 12 to 6 in lives remaining. We could play TDM. 40 seconds on the clock, though. Atlanta battling back. Small moment there where Shotzi... Maybe he could have stayed on the zone a little bit longer. Maybe finish it off himself, but instead played forward for the kill. And now all of a sudden, half of that third tick has been depleted. 10 v 4, 25 seconds on the clock. Draza still holding on to bottom blue. Does Atlanta still have this in them? Here comes the stack throw over towards the point. Shotzi's on for the first. Atlanta need to go. They need to find a way to get them off. Couple back and forth, but the kills are good for FaZe. Now it's just down to only one more member forward. Pred is the last player over towards bottom blue, and he's been seen by Cell. Atlanta continue to find the kills. Have they missed a moment here if you're Optic? Last chance to try to break your way in. And Atlanta continue to reap with the kill feed. Kenny has to jump off the top. He's not oh. able to. And FaZe is going to hold on to the round. Oh, man. If you're Optic Texas, you want that one back. You invest the cruise missile. You were out slaying 12 to 6. But when it came down to Atlanta, FaZe just clutching up in the fights once they got out of their base. They did not fall short. Draza and Selium with multiple two pieces around the map. Optic Texas just could not find an opening through bottom blue. And Atlanta FaZe able to secure the defensive round. They're down by two seconds, but at least you get the cruise missile to get invested. And Optic Texas are thinking, all right, we're going to be up 2-0, but Atlanta FaZe shut the door on that opportunity. Now we're all tied up at one. Just got to make up for these segments now if you're Atlanta. I think there are going to be some Optic fans that are going to be breaking down every millisecond of that decision from Shotzi to try to push forward where maybe he could have captured. Hard to say one way or the other. Hindsight's a hell of a drug, friends. Don't get caught. First couple of kills here for Optic's defense. Very clean. Very polished. First three will fall. And Atlanta's really not had good breakoffs in any no. of these rounds to this point. They've been getting shut out from Optic Texas. Over toward the B Street side, even towards Helipad as they find another three in the feed. Last player out is going to be Sim. But you can already see Optic Texas are more focused on just keeping these players in the back of their spawn. Abizi with a great spawn, at least through the underground steps, is able to take down Pred. But still a lot of map control being obtained by Optic Texas. Map control is starting to get to that precipice of possible spawn trap conditions. Atlanta trying to teamwork their way out, but just not finding any exits. I mean, Dashy, 15 and 9, almost able to collect number 16. Just couldn't quite get the regen off. 
spread through the middle of the map. Uh, gets shot just a couple of times through mid-map, and that's enough for Draza to help out, find a double, and now Atlanta stacked up, finding the first stick of progress, if not more. Yeah, first segment already going to be complete, but Shotzi knows it's at least a double stack on the point, and he just spotted the third player over towards the B Street. So when do we decide to attack? And unfortunately, Abizi was more prepared for that gunfight with that rival nine in hand. That's already going to be beat out of the way. But if you are Optic Texas, now you have an opportunity with a lot of map control to peak, keep them in the spawn. But for how long? Fred, ooh, a little caught here. Tried to chase down a kill with the Renetti. Gets punished. Follow-up elimination from Dashy Decent, but the trade still allows Atlanta a chance to use blue as an opportunity to set themselves up for an A attack. Trophy system down for Cell. Tagged up through mid-map, but still finds a way to get one kill. It's just not fully enough for the rest of phase to follow up on it. So we kind of neutralize the map to the touch. Both teams coming off of spawn, not fully getting trapped up. We have a 17v14 favoring Optic. And there's only a minute left on the game clock. So if you are Optic Texas, just gotta continue to hold down your iron trade efficiently. 2-2 two, two in the feed for both squads. But it's still Optic Texas in the lives remaining up by a couple. Pred finding that double at least relieves the pressure on the ball. This player is pushed out. And now Atlanta phase again forced to hit the reset. Optic just doing a great job of holding down all their lanes. Yeah, and now Shotzi has the freedom to get forward. And I mean, look at the movement. Nearly <laughs> slips away. It's enough for at least Kenny to confirm his trade, which is more than enough to say the least. 12v4. Tick progression is going to heavily favor Optic as they look to lock up the rest of this defense and there's really no chance Atlanta does much more damage than maybe a couple of kills here or there. So major advantage for Optic through three rounds. Lots of a call here for Atlanta defensively to really stand tall if they're going to try to even out these tick progression. Yeah, it needs to be a shutout because right now Optic Texas are only down by one segment, but... The adjustments that they have shown so far on this high-rise control has been beautiful. On the defensive side, they were 11th overall in the league. I know it's because they haven't played the map a lot, but they struggled every time that they spawned in on this map, and it was due to the sling ability. They just could not keep up on the defensive side. We're basically put in the trap on the opposing side, where you usually do not see. But the plays right now out of Shotzi, the plays right now out of Dashi, both average a point eight versus Atlanta phase. They are dominating so far in the response. Yep, absolutely agree. Preds even picked it up in that last round. Kind of a slow start from him, but on four in a row, brings him back to about level. Focus towards B Alley. Lots of shots connecting for Atlanta, enough to at least get the first. Shotsy off the regen, though. Pred also the long route will create some problems here for Atlanta and spawn. And the phase defense is gonna have to kind of figure out and make a decision of what do you want to deal with as Pred gets on to a cruise missile before being dropped and with a one life advantage. And a little bit of time ticked off the clock. Atlanta's trying to hopefully counter in their minds to get forward and take away the map. Yeah, they just want to take away map control. They want to try to put Optic Texas in the trap as fast as they possibly could because they got to try to play for a shutout round. Do not give up one segment to Optic or they will have that defensive side. Yeah. It's now all of Optic Texas rallying the troops over towards the B Street side, but... They cannot find an opening. Shotzi finally does take down Selium, but it's Atlanta phase ready for the trade fights as they find three in the feed. All you have to do is take care of Shotzi, and there's only 25 seconds left. You might have to invest the crews. Oh, look at Draws on the other side of the map. He's still finding kills and forcing Optic to kind of keep their focus at multiple points. Abizi taken down at range. Shotzi's position is known, but Cell really cannot shell with just eight HP. 10 seconds on the clock. It's gonna have to be Kenny to jump into the zone. Everyone else supporting him from a pretty much long range. And they're finding good support at this moment. First stick of progress being worked on. Cell able to track a couple of the read. shadows, but it doesn't make a difference. Now the stack is on and Optic should be able to get at least two ticks here. Yeah, the second segment is gonna guarantee themselves defense just in case it does go to a round number five, but it's still Optic Texas in, in the lead of the lives remaining. They're still not slowing down in the slaying department. That's another three dead in the feed. You can easily hit that transition over. But with Pred being the player coming off the respawn, that cruise missile is not going to get yeah. invested early on. So you have to try to maintain map control before you decide to invest that missile. It may not even be invested at all because now a second gets for Shotzi on another impressive streak. It gets to seven before he's felled. Pred once again taking the scaffold route. Selium going to try to check this. Simp at range. Almost dealt with before Sel can get there, but the help arrives just in the nick of time, and the lives are back to level, and an unfortunate team nade actually swings that over to face. 12 plays 11. Yeah, 12 plays 11, and now it's all in the hands of Shotzi. Unfortunately, he does fall, and all of Optic Texas forced to now hit the reset in the back of their spawn. 
And with only 20 seconds left, Optic Tex has already did a job. They already completed the segment. Now you have a cruise missile on the defensive end just to work with in case anything gets a little bit fishy. But you don't want to give Atlanta Phase a cruise missile here to potentially find a success on the attack. Yeah, it should be two in favor of Optic. Two cruises that they could possibly use here. But like you said, Draza now one off. Not going to have a chance to find kill number six, but coming out of spawn, that's been the problem for Atlanta to this point in this map. Finding a way to even get trades, let alone kills. So we'll see. That could be a key for phase to get an extra resource and try to mitigate what's already been built up and kind of stack the deck for this optic defense coming up. I think it all is going to fall into the hands of Draza can earn himself that cruise. Yep. Like you said, optic Texas have two to work with on the defensive side and just the way that they have been shooting on defense they have outslayed the hell of atlanta phase on that side of the map but this round number five i feel like every time we watch both of these teams specifically in control it always goes to around five and it's usually atlanta phase coming out on top but optic texas in the heavy advantage to try to put themselves up to it in the series Raza is just going to try to play up top and see if he can catch a bz's trade I mean, they're already on towards A. Dashy, oh, at range. Dealt with by Abizi. And now Draza can actually just get into a kind of a one-for-one -one position, but he gets red and dealt with. So the extra resource, not going to get tallied here for FaZe. And the first took of progress on top of that does not get completed. So focus for FaZe goes back towards B. Yeah, that's tough. Because Draza was definitely looking for that one kill, but wasn't expecting that many players from Monty whoa, Texas whoa. still <laughs> in their base. The first second is potentially going to come in over towards this B point, but Optic Texas are right now just solely focused on taking down Sip. There's no trophy system in towards the B point. Brent over the top is able to eliminate him from that positioning, and Shotzi is already in the spawn. 38 and 25. Now you have to get past this young man. Wow. Well done, Draza. Good clean shots coming through. Even life count. Only one tick tally at B. Kenny. Slipping forward, catches a BZ completely off guard, and the optic defense is in prime position for this next opportunity for a hold. Lots of work needs to be done here for Atlanta. May start with Cell. He's just lingering up mid map. Pred trying to do the same thing on the other side, but kills for Atlanta are pretty decent. Pred's the only one to collect, and the clock will stop at 38 with two members on for phase. Yeah, 20 to 20 in lives remaining. Two players on the point, like you said, but Shotzi is at least able to take down one. So now you know where is a BZ at. He does find a kill up to the B Street side, but that's going to be three dead in the fade for Optic Texas. This might be a moment where you have to try to invest one cruise missile to at least allow your teammates to get out of the spawn. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. Shots is going to call it as soon as he pops up. Third ticket progress was on the way. Everyone backs off the zone. Cell stays uh -oh. alive behind pro, uh, part of the propane tank. But if easy does drop down to 20 seconds on the clock, Draza and Cell, one of the last two left that could possibly make some motion happen. And actually, Simp is going to sneak on towards A to stop the clock there instead hoping that maybe Selium can isolate this 1v1 and then try to finish the progress over towards B, which he gets the isolation he wants, but the gunfight isn't clean. Has to reset. Pred on the chase finds the kill, but progress from Sip is still going completely unchecked. Eventually, they get the kill. Draza on the other zone, able to get just enough help for the extra six and he get tallied, and now FaZe have a four-life lead and a minute 15 to play with. This is where it gets scary because if you're Optic Texas, you got to try to invest this cruise now. And that's exactly what Pred is going to do, but do not read the play out of Draza working his way underground on the deep pitch. That second segment is going to be complete. You're able to take Atlanta phase off for a little long. bit, but the triple stack is here. Can they get here to touch in time? The contest is over. Sell. 1v3 situation denied. Now down to Draza versus Dashi. Oh, what a save. Not done yet, though. No more respawns for Optic. 4v8 situation. Third tick of progress, fully depleted. Optic cleanly get out of spawn and also clear BZ off the high ground and Atlanta are gonna take their time and try to reset. But Optic Texas so far maintaining a lot of the map control. They're also finding all the kills. It was a 4v8, is now a 3v5. We've seen them clutch up 3v11s. Can they try to clutch up this one? No more respawns now for Atlanta. Everyone's playing on an island if you're Optic. Can you catch this Atlanta offense a bit by surprise? Pred seems to say yes, and what a light up he's had in these last two rounds. Pistol nearly locks on in time, but the 3v2, 23 seconds on the clock. Shotzi sniffing pixels, sees both. 
just comes down to when does he want to pop up? It's him versus the world in this 1v3. First one, Tally cleanly, pistol out, wants a BZ at range, slips around, but they're on the zone. Both players are there. Shotzi doesn't have a lot of time, also doesn't have a lot of ammunition, needs to clear off the zone. He gets on for the contest and only finds the first. Atlanta find the final kill and take away the round five offense to steal away the control. Oh man, if you're Atlanta, if you're Atlanta phase, you're feeling great, but if you're Optic Texas, that's two maps in a row now where you were set up for the W. Yeah, we gotta lean back a little bit, scratch your head, put your face in it. I don't know, man. That's just demoralizing. They were out slaying on the defensive end. You get defensive round number five, you have two cruise missiles to work with, but Atlanta face again. Find that clutch factor in those final moments. Withstand both cruises, out slay the hell out of Optic Texas in that final round, and even when it went down to the wire, they were able to sniff out the players from Optic Texas, solo them out, and then turn it into a 2v1 for Shotzi. I thought he found the timing, at least through top heli, but he knew it was the double stack was there, so we had to play that one quickly. And Atlanta phase are somehow, some way able to clutch up again in the nail biter map against Optic Texas. They always have photo finishes, but it's always Atlanta phase coming out on top. Now up 2-1 in the series, and you couldn't feel any better if you are Atlanta. I mean, wow. And the thing about it was there's another break off for Atlanta in the opening offense that did not really find much success. Yeah. You know, it's essentially a one-dimensional play. A BZ runs with Draza. They want to get him to cruise, and it doesn't work out. And everything resets in favor of Optics defense. And then there's a moment in there where the round almost ends before it gets to the drama of the 1v3 at the B zone, where Optic have gotten full control back at B, but Sip just stays alive forever on A. No one goes to check him, and he gets what? A tick and a half worth of progress for free at A, and how much of a difference maker that could have been, let alone the ability for Atlanta to recover off of their spawn and re-hit B to get the extra 60. Oh man, just so many small micro moments in this one, but Wow, we got a heater, Jay, between these two squads. Oh, yeah, what? Shotzi puts up another 40 piece. Dashi was also slanked to hell alongside Fred. Optic did everything right. It just came down to those final moments. Atlanta phase, just a little bit more icy to close out the control. But that was another map where Optic Texas haven't played it for two months. And you went all the way yep, down to the yep. Y. You definitely should have potentially walked away with the W. But at least you played Atlanta phase really close on one of their best control maps. But you want to be the team walking away with the W. Now you find yourself down 2-1 going into a Rio HP where Atlanta phase are the best. It's just as yeah, simple not, as that. They are the best team at Rio HP. Yeah, not good. 4-0 uh, overall. On average, they win 250 to around 180. <laughs> so a near full hard point worth of time that gets in between Atlanta and whoever finds themselves squaring up on the other side of spawn. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, just the straight up demoralization that just happens right there where Optic looked like they're going to close out the defense at round five, not once, not twice, maybe three times, doesn't come through. So got to take a deep breath, got to reset, and maybe lean on to the fact that Shotzi's having himself a, a very uncharacteristic, great series versus Atlanta phase team. What can he provide? in terms of another spark for this Optic team here in map four. Oh yeah, they're playing great. Shotzi and Dashi both average a point eight versus Atlanta phase, but they are definitely over a 1.0 so far in this series. It's just coming down to these final moments. In the SD, you find eight first bloods. Fortunately, you fall short. In the control, you have two cruise missiles in round number five and you fall short, but you can take a look yeah. at the numbers. 1.37 for Dashi. He hasn't done that all season long versus Atlanta. 1.15 for Shotzi. They are just playing lights out right now. You just have to find those clutch moments at the end of these games to close out these maps. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for a lot of Optic fans, it is rejuvenating a certain way to see these two guys stepping up at the table, but at the same rate, and also again, other side of the sword is, uh, what else do we have to do to beat these guys? I mean, their two bottom performers against FaZe are popping off. We still can't find ways to close out these tight maps. So looking at the overall Rio season steps, again, it's pretty much perfect across the board for Atlanta. One yep. of the best rotating, one of the best at holding, and they still find a lot of success breaking, which to be fair, they don't have to do all that often. So 
lots to ask here if you're optic trying to respond and get this thing to a map five and that's the crazy thing about it is that atlanta phase in hardpoint specifically they're not usually the best team on rotations and hold percentage but on a map like rio when they are doing the fundamental part correctly that's what makes them even more unstoppable so if you are optic texas you have to run rotations you have to set up properly to try to force this game five well, after the initial opening from Optic was pretty calm and collected with the favorite spawns, Atlantis break very polished, very clean, and they will not just match the tally from Optic, they will surpass it with the opportunity to flip the map and find themselves in control for the favored sides towards P2. So great start here for FaZe. Optic need to get themselves on the rails here and just keep things moving straight forward. Yeah, they had to try to at least push through the old or overextend to try to flip these spawns. And so far, they're not finding any success up through the middle of the map. At least they're able to take down Draza before he earns that cruiser missile. But Atlanta phase with the gun, he was able to reinforce their way back in towards P1, take a nice little 10-point lead, and now have the rotation over towards P2. Thing is, Optic have already made their way pretty close over towards the jump wall and this ramp. Team shot from Cell take one of the pictures of phases defense out of it and okay neutral is not bad at all from the front here in the first 20 seconds for optic in fact they're gonna get kenny in with numbers and they also force simp to spawn out so critical moment here for optic early but atlanta find the kills off spawn and the last one they need a tally is the one where they know exactly where he is that's kenny in the corner and even though there was some good neutral time for optic atlanta will still come away with the majority of time here on two yeah, and that's just so difficult right there if you're optic because you find all the kills, so at least keep them off of the point when you don't have the preferred spawns. But when you take down Sip and he now spawns behind you, you get the read that players are coming from everywhere. And unfortunately, they cannot find any kills in the feed. So Atlanta Phase able to walk away with this final 30. They're also able to flip the spawns over towards P3. And now Optic Texas have a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, I'm selling him watching towards the old time. We'll make sure there's no long routes taken here in the bottom. Abizi will just throw shoulders over this corner. Make sure the windows stay safe, which means that Optic will either have to work through him or force their way down through the staircase. Definitely not an opportunity that you would think Atlanta will miss out on. And the kills are being collected and tallied very cleanly. Abizi even gets a read on the last and dashy, which he does at least keep his life a little while longer, but can't turn it into anything more than just the first kill. And Atlanta continue to soak up time here on three. Yeah, and Optic Texas, they just can't find a way on in. Like Atlanta Phase is just way too strong on their setups. Trading efficiently around this P3. You're holding down your street side over towards Bridge as well. But finally, Optic Texas with a couple of kills are able to relieve that pressure. Even though Atlanta Phase still swanning in towards the back end, at least you don't give up a full 60. You should allow your teammates now to get fully set up towards the next. Have to be able to hold this next push through, though, from Atlanta. We've got Pred on one side, Shotzi on the other, and as Pred drops, now it all rests largely with Shotzi towards boxes. Your both of your ARs will get over towards the railing, but there's just not enough eliminations coming through here for Optic to stall out this Roto from Atlanta Phase. And finally, a couple of trades are back and forth, but Draza, last one standing, can't make the pistol go his way. Simp trying to follow up off of it. Does he get both? Doesn't need to. It's a BZ behind, and Atlanta will open up the hard point. Uh, this is getting nasty, Alex. Atlanta yep. Phase, even when they're late off the rotation, they're fine and break early on into this HP. And now you're continuously putting Optic on the back foot. And now trying to bake again with only 30 seconds left. You can't hit the rotation now. You have to try to fight this time, and Sip is making you pay time and time again. 12 and 8 all ready to start this one off. The trade is going to be there for Draza, but Atlanta Phase with this final 20 are going to find themselves already up by 100. Optic Texas, a long road ahead to try to get back into this game. Yeah. And if you're Optic, you need to take a breath, get yourself set up, and start to get something positive to get your mojo back. Because at the moment, it is all phase all the time. Shotzi, well done through mid-map. Simp, the only one to collect a kill, and this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Now it's just down to the follow-up. Atlanta, very predictably, going to be spawning on the left side of the map. Optic should be aware of this, but they've kind of missed Cell. And he can just hold this spot win out the middle of the map plus extra and that's enough to deter a lot of this optic setup here comes phase first back off spawn optic trying to hold from inside the hill it's essentially a 2v4 and well simp will at least neutralize not a bad moment but optic still holding on strong yeah optic still doing a great job of just maintaining map control over towards bridge side not allowing atlanta phase even step in towards the hp Great shots from both the main ARs on both sides, but it's Dash able to come out on top in that engagement. Now, Optic Texas slowly but slowly starting to climb their way back into this game. They needed a response at the Bridge Hill, but you're still down by 60. A lot more that you have to cover. It has to be the rotation over towards P1, and right now they have a lot of mid map control, especially over towards Bridge. Draza gets the trophy system down. 
Support from Simp wasn't enough, but it may not matter. Draza now on 18 and eight, four in a row again. Abizi there to help with the team shots on to Pred. And Atlanta will hold the numbers right on top of the hard point with Draza finding kill number five. He's gonna get an isolated 1v1 potentially, bottom side P5. He's got to read that Kenny's nearby. This is for the cruise missile. A pivotal one, but Pred beats him to the punch. And at least some of the wound gets cauterized, but Texas still have work to do to clear out the hard point, which they do in a fell swoop. Yeah, Jaws is still showing why he dominates Optic. He said it in his interview after Major 2, but it's already sitting at 19 and 9. This has a number so far on these guys as they still find themselves up by 80. But Optic Tex is trying to at least walk away with this remaining 15. Instantly gets broken. And you already have a player in the BZ off the rotation to next. He doesn't see Shotzi though. So maybe a chance as Shotzi realizes he's in a very key position. Stun comes through. That's enough for him to isolate on the draws. A help from the front. Also there just in the nick of time. Simp red on the back line doesn't make a difference. And that's enough likely to at least block spawns. If not, maybe win them for Atlanta. Draza off the pinch, nearly takes down two of his own. Optic still hanging around though. A long route here from FaZe isn't even enough for them to guarantee spawn. So now Optic have the numbers over the hot dog card and that's enough for Kenny to win the gunfight and give Optic another lease on life. Yeah, and they need this 40 to get back into this game. They were able to flip the spawns as well. So Atlanta FaZe are at least gonna do a great job of investing those tacks over the top. Try to take them over this time as much as they possibly could. But you can already see the route coming in from Shotzi. Just taking the step ahead, re-wrapping, through boxes and potentially is going to spawn Atlanta phase out. No, they're still going to spawn it towards the back. So you still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, three of the four will spawn in. Kenny gets one after being stunned. Nothing more. So now it's just time to Pred to hold his life, which self beats him with the pistol. Unreal stuff. But the scrap time fully earned. And Kenny will actually get all the way around the back just to hold and play his life. Help on the way now for Texas as Kenny will catch Draza a bit off guard in the rotation. Clean shots towards Sip. Trade should surely be here in. It's a laborious one, but eventually does get tallied. Shotzi not done yet on one HP. Gets himself two and Optic win the rotation to three. They're starting to fight back, man. A P2 to P3 chain. Now only down by 40 points. Optic Texas have flipped this game on its head. Atlanta phase not forced to try to find a break on in. You have players approaching through boxes, players trying to attack up the middle and also through bridge. So they're trying to hit every single route, but Optic Texas have gotten a read on it to perfection. Where were they down? A hundred. Now it's only a 20 point difference. Shotzi now finds himself on five in a row. All the kill feed is going to be green. And now Optic Texas winning the rotation fights again, this time over towards P4. Two to three is good. Can three to four also be collected? Atlanta, not so fast, oh! they say. Clean shots coming out, plus the stun. Locks Shotzi in place. Dashi still a little bit of a scuffle with selling him over the last three seconds, which he wins. But Atlanta will get onto the hard point initially. Spawn out for Selium deep over towards the backside at P2. Here come Optic, knowing they've got an advantage and an opportunity to try to break this hard point open. But the kills just simply put are not there. Kenny has to keep his head in a swivel, just trying to predict which angle Sip's going to channel him on, and he picks wrong. Atlanta will win the rotation and a chance to regrow their lead. And this is where if you're a Shotzi, you are on a five spree. It came out to a one-on-one -on -one between him and Draza. You're going to potentially earn a cruise missile to find a break on towards P4. But now Atlanta face are not slowing down. They are trading efficiently over towards the white van, but it's Optic Texas currently in the lead in the kill department. They're able to find a break, but with only 20 seconds left, looks like we're going to have another photo finish of a hard point between these two teams. And Atlanta are still, they're going to have to commit to try to play off this old time here with these two members that are standing. Draza doing what he can, but he gets taken down, no worries. Sell on rotation. Able to win a key versus pistol, fight versus Dashi. Abizi, mid-map. Hasn't had a particularly great game to this point in the kill feed, but this could be a big one and okay. That's a little bit of extra clearance here for Atlanta. They're going to get past the 200 point mark. And they can win it here at the Bridge Hill, but you're not expecting them to walk away with a full 50 seconds on this still. So if you're all after Texas, you just have to find a way on in. That's your tax off the spawn, blow up those trophy systems and try to take somewhat control of the bridge, wow. but it's Kenny finding a triple. A BZ last player up simply has to play his life to give his team another opportunity to find a break. Optic on the chase, it's Pred. Right back through mid, collects the kill. It's a huge staggered respawn as well. Optic could surely get past the 200 point mark. Kenny just trying to hold on to this pillar for dear life. Dashy Pred helping over the top of this hard point. And a chance not just for Optic to take the lead, 
They could also win this rotation. BZ trying to meet them right uh -oh. on the top of the This has a little bit of an awkward mantle over the bench. And Sip also dealt with. Here we go. Optic's going to finalize the scrap and move right on in towards P1. And they're going to be fully set up as well. Every single player from Optic Texas is currently sitting around the middle of the map. The lead change is finally going to come in. Optic Texas had two demoralizing maps, but they are not worried about it. They're trying to force this game number five. And Pred with the snap is able to find himself on two in a row. But here Whoa. comes the pitch from Sim. Always somehow, someway finds the timing, finds three in a row. Atlanta phase get the break. They've got the numbers. Cell is watching to the outside just to make sure no one hits the OE, which Optic seem like they're trying to do. So tall moment here. Optic need to find a way to break on in. They deal with Celium very quickly. Sim looking to get forward. Denied over the top of the staircase. Now Optic with numbers. Team Nade comes out from a BZ. Should surely be a break plus more. Atlanta will still spawn on the right side of the map, which is preferred with three of their four members. But Shotzi, another massive opportunity for him to foil the setup of phase by himself. Tucked in a corner by Gate, which draws against the read on. Optic can't win here. Atlanta are set up for new. And that's a perfect rotation. Gaselium was able to catch a double off the back end of everyone from Optic Texas trying to hit the overextension. But it's 241 to 241. Optic have a couple plays through the back end. Atlanta phase get a read on it. They only need five to close out this series. Got a touch. Shotzi from one side, Pred from the other. There goes the clearance around the hard point. They need to. Oh! And they can't find the kill. Cell steps up through ramp finds the initial damage and the finish on the last member of Optic in the hopes of Optic Texas to send this to a map five end in a number of wild ways as Atlanta continue to run through the green wall full steam ahead. Every single time we watch these two teams play, it's never a blowout map. The final three maps was very, very close. 6-4 search and destroy. Round five in the control, but 241 to 250. Atlanta phase just clutching up again in the final moments of this game. I thought Optic Texas played it great. You did a phenomenal job at that bridge hill. You were able to finally get a lead change going in towards P1. But then off the rotation, Atlanta phase knew we just had to play it super slow. Selim was watching the super over extension over through the bridge side. He's able to find a double. And then even with Shotzi hitting that early rotation over towards P2, over towards the gate area. When two of his teammates fall, he knows he now has to try to go Superman. And unfortunately, he was not able to find anything. Atlanta Faze were able again to clutch up in the final moments. That almost got scary though, because they were up by 100. Optics started to fight back, but Atlanta Faze again with the clutch gene, able to close out the series in four and cleat that record versus Optic Texas. Flawless, now at 6 0. That's unreal. But I mean, again, I think from both sides' perspectives, obviously FaZe fans can walk away super happy because they continue to dominate the green wall. But on the other side, do you take away small monikers of success oh, yeah. here for Optic? You, you pull away your first ever go on six star hard point. You played the map well. Your high rise search and destroy, you went eight and two in first blood, just couldn't finish round. So there's clearly things you can look at in terms of how do we finalize these 4v2s. And then honestly, three different moments in the round five control on a map you don't often play that you could have, if not should have had, you still have to feel pretty good about your chances. I think if you're Optic reflecting on this series and moving forward, surely, right? Oh, yeah, without question. You're thinking we should have walked away with this series, but you played them on really tight on some of the tough maps, and at least you go now know going forward we can square up with them on maps like High Rise. Well, we'll send it back to the desk to consider the question of, is this even a rivalry anymore? Phase 6-0 and as you head back to Alley and Ant. Listen, that was an absolute banger. Well done by Study and Shift. I mean, every map came down to the wire. When these teams match up, it just comes down to the wire every time. It's one of the best series we've seen so far. Absolutely. Every single time it comes down to the wire, even that grand finals, you know, you talk round five control, you talk 20-point mm -hmm. hard points, round 11 s and I think if you're off to Texas, if you take anything away from this matchup, it is taking that W on the six-star hard point. You have been on the losing end of these respawns versus Atlanta Faze, who are up on you seven to two. So take the wins where you can a map you can add to the map pool that you now can feel comfortable as you move forward to maybe major three matching up against atlanta phase on land listen optic at least slang wise this was the best performance yeah. they've had against atlanta phase yet i mean 
Dashi came out clearly with a vengeance, wanting to prove a lot of the narratives wrong, had himself a hell of a performance throughout this series. Really, everybody on Optic Texas. And honestly, Ali, I feel like we were robbed of a beautiful game five. We I mean, we saw that search and destroy. Optic is up 4-2. They lose some terrible rounds, yeah. letting a BZ get all the way up through their shack into their base in the 4-4 round. That's just some of those things that Optic, while they did make some great adjustments, they're going to have to watch VOD and improve even more. And then you think about that control. Yeah. I really thought they were going to do it at the end there. Absolutely. I mean, it literally came down to a 1v1. Unfortunately, Shotzi gets put in an unfortunate situation in a 1v2, but they were doing the damn thing. They were 4v7 like seven at one point, and they got it all the way down to a 1v1, and they were on defense, right? So when you talk about Optic Texas, they're typically a team that clutches up in a lot of these series against the rest of the league. But versus Atlanta FaZe, you give them an inch to take a mile. I very, very rarely see Atlanta FaZe kind of choke any of these maps. And same thing with that map number four. I mean, you have Opti Texas kind of trailing the entirety of that map. They start to clutch up. Dashi mm -hmm. pops four at P1, but unfortunately, it's Atlanta phase, just not letting them get those ice, icy moments. Yeah, now let's get into the scuff play of the game. I'm thinking it's going to be something from that control. Atlanta phase just making huge plays. Yeah, it's a hold here. Just this team. When their back is against the wall, yeah. Allie, they win. They win every time. They're this this was stars. insane. This the Atlanta Faze had no reason to win this defense. You're talking about Optic Texas, not only outslaying them, but you can see right now, 4v7, there's two ticks already. Just a sliver of that A to go, and it's a down low. Getting over three kills, just watching Optic Texas players trying to make the push. Atlanta Faze just not letting anybody slip by. Yeah, Atlanta Faze holding on strong, and for Atlanta Faze, it just seems like they're continuously separating themselves from the rest of the league at this point, and that was some of the best Call of Duty we've seen Optic Texas play. It yeah. begs the question, should they have left Vista in? Because Texas banned Vista in this series. And they did come back in that Rio, but at one point, it was like a 100-point game. What are your thoughts on that? They just kind of beat themselves there. I feel like they have a lot of confidence when it comes to Rio, and they should, rightfully so, because Shotzi plays so free on that map, but when you go down over 100 points, like, there's only so much you can do against a team like Atlanta Faze. Yeah, well, now it's time Time for our Monster Energy Winner Spotlight. We got Draza. And I want to talk to you specifically because you've been talking a lot of trash to the rest of the league. What is it about you, man? Why do you have that chip on your shoulder? Uh, it's just prove everyone wrong. I've been doing it my whole career. And it's uh, it's nice to make people, you know, upset. So it's that's kind of just why I talk shit. And it's perfect because you end up on the team that is known as, quote, the villains of the league. I feel like it's adding you kind of extra level of confidence for sure. But with the new maps, I do want to ask you, Drasa, what is Atlanta FaZe's approach when new maps get put into the map pool? Yeah, obviously it's practice, practicing them and figuring out how to break and hold each hill. I honestly feel like I was just playing too fast at map one or we probably could have won that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, I, regardless, it was still a 50-point game, you know, first time spotting in on six star. But what is it with you guys versus Optic Texas this year? I don't know if you know, but historically, Atlanta has been on the losing side versus Optic Texas in this rivalry, but you guys are now 6-0 and versus the Green Wall. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just a CEO of that org. Uh, I haven't lost them in years, so I just think it's me. Like, I don't know. Uh, Draza, you guys look like you're in peak form. You know, people are drawing a lot of parallels to Cold War phase, and I'm sure you remember how dominant those guys were. What is there, is there a specific thing that you would like to focus on for your guys' improvement throughout this stage? Uh, yeah, just, you know, making sure we're holding when we should. I feel like we're playing really fast and we're clutching up. Shout out to my teammates, of course. We're just clutching, like, we clutch up a lot that series and just making it easier so we don't have to clutch. But when we get in those situations, we end up clutching anyway, so. Yeah, it seems like versus Optic Texas, it's like a 25 point hard point every single time. That's six in a row where it's been like 30 points or less is the margin that you guys have won. Yeah. Uh, in the final moments of these games, who's reeling everybody back in, calming things down and, and closing it out for you guys in the comps? Uh, I think it's kind of all of us. We just, uh, we're just making our plays when it gets really hectic and uh, normally we just make better plays than everyone else in the league. Uh, so that's it. Love it. Well, I'll let you go celebrate with the team. Easy does it. Take it easy, Draza. Yes, sir. Thank you. Man, he loves, he loves talking trash. He loves it, dude. He loves being the villain. I think maybe that's what Atlanta needed. You know, I feel like in past when they've kind of been named the villains, they didn't really, like, take it, like, and kind of use it as a label for themselves. They're just like, oh, okay, I guess. They needed a everybody. face. But now it's a face, right? Now yeah. it's like, heck yeah, we are the villains of the league. Well, there you have it. That's the last day here in week one of stage three. Some exciting games. I'm glad we closed it out with an absolute banger optic versus face. Yeah, and we had some more matches at the beginning of the day that were also some absolute bangers that I think went longer 
longer than most of us expected. We got two game fives first in the Seattle Surge, taking a surprising upset versus the Carolina Royal Ravens, who there was a lot of hype around because half of their players are now in a facility. They had a very strong showing at the land to try to keep them in the champs running. But Seattle Surge, they have a new player plugged into the roster in 04, and they come out with a respawn win. Seattle Surge is off making too. leaps and bounds during the stage. Yeah, we had a lot of changes in these last two weeks to the game, the meta, and even the players on these rosters. And I think 04 had an incredible performance. He breathed new life into the team. You could see it. It was infectious the way everybody was playing, the search and destroy, the creativity. We talked to Abuza about it. He was like, we're just playing together as a team, man. We're rolling together, making sure that we're bouncing off of each other, playing those trades. And it worked out wonderfully in those search and destroy. So shout out Seattle, you know, changing the tides. They're now in the top eight in terms of our standings for champs. I mean, and I don't, it's incredible because they had such a strong showing during the first sets of those stages to even put themselves in position to not fall out of that top eight. But for Carolina, hopefully, you know, they take that hard point loss with stride, especially because it was a new map. But following that, we got another game five that went another way that nobody was expecting. We were all wrong. It's the LA Thieves coming in with Joy Jodeci who's plugged back into the roster with a game five victory. They almost choked it though. They go up 2-0 in this <laughs> series, get pushed to that game number five, but it's a lockup with Joy Deceives. Yeah, Joe Deceives played so good throughout the so series. Good. I mean, kicking things off that 250 to 49. Uh, if you go back and watch that map at the end, the eruption, the energy in the player cams from the LA Thieves, that is what you've been yearning for if you're LA Thieves fan. You get this young talent inside of this roster. You need them to get energetic, man, get confident. And that exuded confidence, which they brought into that next map in Rio, Search and Destroy. Now, listen, a lot, they only had three reps on all these maps combined, and that was all through that invasion control from stage two until now. So this was just new territory for these guys in these maps. They start off 2-0 in the series. Now, Vegas are a fantastic team. They do rally back. Nero had back-to-back -back banger of maps. When we get to that game five, six-star search and destroy, it's all LA Thieves, LA. I don't know if I ever want to see uh, Las Vegas Legion load in the six-star hard point ever again. That might start having to be an auto veto because 250 to 50, like Ann said, that's only happened four or five times in CL history, and now they get added to the board. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening in the Pro League. And I think, I think it is that franchise as well that has a majority of those clubs, too. So All right, well, we'll forget about that. They can't escape it. They can't escape it. Let's see how today affected the standings because we had some shifts. You see Surge, they bump out. The Carolina Royal Ravens now sitting at top eight. LAG holding on. And uh, LA Thieves getting some points. Big yeah, shifts. LA Thieves need those points as well, especially because they're doing so well right now. They could, with their next matchup, even jump Carolina Royal Ravens since they got handed that loss today. So you're looking at teams like Miami, LAG, Minnesota Rocker that are getting a lot of losses early on. They could get bumped out by the end of the stage. Yeah, uh, let's uh, check out the KD leaderboard for this weekend. See players who turned up when they needed to. It was Kleenex. You know, I talk a lot about the Toronto Ultra and sort of their regression. Well, Kleenex was the actual best player in the world in stage one yeah. they win that as we know and now kleenex is back to being him so toby finding that confidence and then also dashy having something to say about the community you know what dashy played fairly well against Atlanta face today and you know we talk about him and shotzi don't really enjoy that matchup so to see them kind of being a little bit more comfortable in the slaying department today is a w you can take away if you're a green wolf fan yeah, we had a lot of 3-0s this week, but we had some bangers today, and we hope that continues next week. This is the schedule that you have. I'm looking up, and I'm seeing Optic versus Seattle, Optic versus Vegas. Obviously, for the Green Waller still in chat, those will be your matchups there. But we're going to get some New York versus Carolina. That one's always a pretty good one. And we're also going to get Toronto versus Atlanta phase on Sunday. That's going to be the last match of the day. W schedule makers, we're getting some bangers to close out these weekends. Couldn't have scripted it any better. Puck it, we'll miss you. We'll see you next week. It's been a fantastic, fantastic opening weekend here in Stage 3. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week on Friday for Headquarters. Way, way, way up. Way, 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 way up. Way, 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 way up. Way, 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 way. Going back and forth like it's east and west. But the whole team up, say that's north side. But my lonely if I shoot the tank. And I'm 10 seasons in, still on court side. Every day I'm going back to back to back to back to back, so ain't no neck to neck. No. Bitch pressing in the valley, girl, we're stronger, only open up the check the text. Really know what's super new, man, I'm in overtime, they hate, so they check the chest. I've been doubting all my eyes, are crossing all my teeth right now, I'm trying to curve the S. Oh.
Young set apart and I'm passionate. I've been in my lane, ain't no passing. I'm truly from the bottom. I've been fighting for the light. The light. When you in the dark, man, all you get is flashes. It's up. My whole team know that it's do or die. By the top, I see newer highs. I'ma make a move when I make a move. Ain't no thinking, I'll let you decide. On the gas with the vision, I've been out to get it here to do it. Different ripping through the tension, rallied in the streets. Now we in the building and it's going way, way, way. Way, 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 way. Way, 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 way. On the gas and I'm smashing it. I've been in my lane, I'm probably crashing it. Way, way, way. He's not hitting C1, C1, you're... Why, why, two lights, everyone, more lights, more lights, C1, one side, two, one side, 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 Yeah, got me. Yeah. I don't even worry about it. Get these guys. Yeah, yeah. So good. Go don't even worry about it. Yeah, Did you go next? next? Just go next. Just go next. Yeah, we're good. Oh, baby, we gotta laugh that one off, boys. Oh, yeah, we got that one off. I'm bad. <laughs> we gotta laugh that one off. Correct. <laughs> 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 <laughs>